so this is interesting. This is more for Carl, really. Um, it sounds unlikely. Is it from a doctor saying you're an idiot? Oh, uh, we've got plenty of those. I tend to delete them. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look um, at his face. No, it just says, uh, you know, don't like to complain, but I won the film competition about five or six weeks ago, oh. and I haven't received my prizes. Oh dear, that's all the car. That's all Carl has to do oh, on the show. Thinking. We provide the chat, the records, the light entertainment. I mean, the you know, glamour. Str strokes of comedy genius. Um, all Carl has to do is send out the prizes and say, there was a monkey that was a bank robber <laughs> at five to three. <laughs> yeah. What's your Carl? excuse, Carl? Um, do you remember her winning? I've got all, I've got all- Well, you're calling her a liar? Well, I am, because I don't remember ever seeing- Right, that, that he's calling her a liar. So, Joanne Ogden, you're claiming, is just making this up. She sent this in on a whim, trying to fool us and get some cheap tat. Wow. I don't believe that. I don't believe anyone would lie to try and get knowing me, knowing you on VHS. I really don't. Well, I'll, I'll look in the records because we keep all the details, so, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> well, one of you's in the wrong, and do you know what? Knowing you, Carl, I don't think it's Joanne. No. Has, has anyone else ever emailed in saying they haven't got the, uh, like a trap? No, they haven't. They haven't. Well, well, yeah, well, one, one mistake's one too far, because that's one person, so, you know, you, you, you might send out 30, but that one person, that's the first time they've won a competition, they, they, they want the, the history of wind, <laughs> narrated by Donald McIntyre, on VHS, yeah. and, you know. Stephen King's It, <laughs> on, on Betamax. Yeah, yeah. No, do mind that they, they, they sometimes they want the best of primal scream on a cassette. <laughs> so <laughs> you've know. got to make sure you're sending these primal. <laughs> yeah. Final uh, email from Andy. He says um, the webcam uh, is pointing at the ceiling. Is it because the air conditioning vent is more exciting than what happens on the show? Let's put that down I now. Think that's absolutely right. Now, hold on a minute. Now, just uh, if someone is that good. People love the webcam. I don't know what they're interested in because all they get is a picture of Carl's big head. It's not a big. It's just round. Oh. Got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carl, I'd like you to play the next tune. Um, I got sent a little cheeky, um, primer for the cures, join the dots, just b-sides and rarities, lots yeah. of stuff from them, from all over the ages. And it's amazing how good their b-sides are, here's one of them playing. Yeah. <laughs> Bones, Radiohead off the Benz album. Mm -hmm. I mean, might be my favourite album of all time. You said it before, yeah. I yeah. can't say I've ever really got into it. I remember when it came out, it was just so ubiquitous everywhere, I never really bothered listening I to it. I can still listen to it every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might be sad, I don't know, it but it's a fantastic album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, just practising for when we, uh, talk, about music. talk more about music than maybe monkeys and people born without knobs, <laughs> baby. Uh, Carl, any other thoughts? Uh. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you any more educating stuff yet. You're going to tease me with that, are you? Leave you with, uh, it nearly died. Yeah. And get a load of this court case, right? But I want you <laughs> thinking about. Yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, just getting the red juices ready. About that. Yeah, like an aperitif. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But um, I just educated you. Yeah. Right. And I watched the Office Christmas stuff on uh, last Sunday. Did you like to enjoy it? I think it was good. Good. I think it was good. Thank it was you very up much. One of my favourites. The yeah. second one. The second one was good. Yeah, okay. The second um, one was more, more the paybacks in the second one. The first one's more set up. Yeah. So, you know, I'd have thought people would like the second one more. Yeah. So that's nice. That's a nice yeah. critique. Thank you, Carl. Um, but there was something in it you did about cavemen. Cavemen? You said something about, um, it was a fact about cavemen and you sort of only half did it. You didn't give the full information like, what? like I do in that. You just, you, you just. Where was it? What bit was it? Um, it was, it was the bit when you were talking about getting a woman, I think, or you were talking about breasts or... Oh, oh, the one when I said people are, the reason women have cleavage is it reminds men of buttocks, because when we were cavemen we used to do from behind. Yeah. Yeah, at the date, blind date, yeah. Is that a joke or...? Well, I was hoping it was funny. We were... Oh, you mean, um, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I did, I think cleavage is meant, meant to represent, in a sort of Desmond Morris pop sort of anthropology type way, I think I, I've seen that before, that, um, cleavage represents, um, buttocks. And I imagine, you know, cavemen probably did do it from behind. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want to know, Carl, really. It was, it's in a sitcom, it, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> it looked like one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliantly directed to look like one, I'll give you that. Mm. <laughs> no, but what you're saying to blokes like... 
Yeah, cause I think cleavage uh, is represented like at buttocks because obviously buttocks were much more of a sexual organ, evolutionally speaking. Breasts were to actually bring up, uh, um, to suckle young, but, uh, and, and were a sign of sexual maturity so you're ready to mate, but whereas uh, Carl, I'm not an anthropologist, mate. I'm struggling here. What do you need no, to know? But, but, yeah, I imagine, I imagine, I imagine that the cleavage reminds you of an arse. Like, right, well, if, if it's all about arse, why don't gays like a little bit of tip? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so the question put to us today on XFM 104.9, please call me that does, is if it's all about arse, then <laughs> why don't gays like a little bit of tit? I was worried. If it's all about arse, why don't gays like tit? If it's all about arse, why don't gays like tit? Just call in with your. Thanks it's, uh, very much for tuning in. This is uh, in Children's TV. If it's all about arse, why don't gays like tit? It's, uh, it's still been an hour and a quarter before we got round to gays, so it's good to see the appearance. If it's all about arse, why don't gays like a bit of tit? <laughs> is the question. What a brilliant question. Well, if, if you're an anthropologist or a, 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 a psychologist, a doctor, a gay, <laughs> please call in. If it's all about arse, <laughs> this is the question. I'm not convinced by this whole, um, cleavage looks like an arse, that's No, not to Steve, I nor think, am I. I it's, 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 a a mock, it's a bit of mock, uh, I, I, I didn't think it would be under scrutiny. I, I think it's more likely that the reason men find cleavage attractive is because they know there's a lovely pair of bristles down there. Yes, yeah, so it's like, ooh, so here we are. If that's, if that's what's on show. <laughs> exactly, imagine what, what's down there. If below. that's in the front window, right, yeah, what's she got to go in the shop? <laughs> oh dear! Oh! <laughs> For Carl, Bill Mackay, on XFM 104.9, if it's all about arses, Steve, why don't gays like a bit of tit? I think the, there might be a lecture on that yeah. at uh, the Royal Institute tonight. Oh, sure. yeah, Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I think he's given it a Brilliant. Look. Tell you something else though, that's about cavemen and that. Yeah. Right? Uh, mm, not really, go on. Do you know, um, I love the idea of a little gay fella. He's, he's pulled a bird, he's just, he, all he's done is focused on the cleavage and he's gone, oh, that's a lovely arse. Yeah. Right. He's got a bat, what do 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 pulls the dress down, no! Where's the arse? <laughs> I've been gone, there's boobs! Boobs! I hate ah, them! They're my worst! No! <laughs> right, sorry Carl. Cavemen and that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Back to it. Doesn't drop a beat, does he? Do you know like when, when you get a bit scared? And, yeah. and the hairs on your back and that sort of go up. Well, I haven't got a particularly hairy back, but go on. No, but on your neck or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, head. Do you know? <laughs> not on your face, but true. <laughs> do you know where that comes from? Do you know why that happens? Why it happens? Yeah. To probably, to look more fierce. Yeah. Probably residue of like the erectile tissue with the, you know, um, would make you look apes and that would make you look slightly bigger, your outline bigger. Hmm. Is that it? Is that the answer? Yeah, just cavemen in front of dinosaurs and that, this one went, oh. <laughs> and then... Well it wasn't cavemen in front of dinosaurs, was it? Because cavemen weren't alive when dinosaurs were alive. There was a couple knocking about. Right, okay, fair enough. There was, there was a crossover point, surely. Uh, no. Not for just like 15 million. Um, was the, uh, yeah, probably the, uh, yeah, the Ice Age, there were still, there were still big reptiles. I think it's fairly common knowledge that the dinosaurs did not exist Well, who gave when... the dinosaurs the name? Well, no, 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 <laughs> well, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 he's, listen, he's using, he's using cavemen as any genus of homo. It, I, right. I know he's thinking of the Flintstones, <laughs> yeah. but I'm giving him a bit of, I'm giving him like, you know, know an instep into evolution here. But, um, I should just point out, you know cavemen didn't have cars which they motored by running along yeah. the street. And they didn't, they didn't mix cement in pelicans. You're, you're aware <laughs> of that. <laughs> Raw Nirvana. Amazing. We were just talking, we were getting excited about that. Yeah, you've got an incredible brilliant. voice he has. And Grohl, Dremin, it's, it's brilliant. You know you're right, the new one from Nirvana. Well, we're, it's time for Educating Ricky Part 2, isn't it? I'm yeah. excited, Carl. I'm gonna learn so much from this. <laughs> What's the choice again? What's right, you've, got, uh, you've got left. Still, uh, still keep phoning in your answers to, uh, um, Email. Email, sorry, yeah. Uh, the answers to rock busters. busters. Yeah. Right, okay, educating Ricky, part two. Um, right. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. Is, is what oh, I've got to go for that one. Yeah? Yeah. Or oh, the other one is the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> He still says it like it's the best thing he's ever come up with, which yeah, is weird. It could be. Right, go on in. I'm committed to this treatment. Right. Do you know the saying, 
No, Christ. Is it just sayings now? Uh, are they all sayings? This no, 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 they're not. Okay. Oh, the other one isn't. Uh, frog in your throat? <laughs> the saying, there's a frog in your throat? Yeah, I assume it. it's, uh, when you, uh, croak a little bit, you sound like a, uh, a frog. No, no. Right, might, might say, seem a bit weird, this one, right? But years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, so what, what is that clue committed to this treatment? It's about frogs committed. Kermit. <laughs> 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 Probably works better with a K and an yeah. ER written down. Well, also, if you'd pronounced it Kermitted, yeah. but uh, not committed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> committed to this treatment! <laughs> right, go on then. That's right, genius. Uh, so, yeah. Well, uh, what? You, get, you go to the doctors and you go with throat certain a bit. Right. And what they did ages ago. Ages ago? What year was this approximately? We are going back quite a bit with this oh, one. Oh, okay. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, uh... <laughs> he got in history. Imagine years ago. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, right, keep your, keep your mouth open, I need to look at your tonsils. And the jaw would ache a bit, because because they weren't as quick back then because they didn't have the technology and stuff and they'd sure. have to like stare at it and study it and stuff mm. and like they get an achy jaw right keeping their mouth open yeah like you get you know yeah and you, you know, a mars yeah. bar yeah. or whatever yeah. 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 so um they, they'd sat there and they used to always close the mouth and they, it used to annoy the doctor yeah. right sure. so what they did yeah. they used to get a toad right and pour it in the mouth rubbish <laughs> okay keep, rubbish. They keep talking Keep talking. And, um, that way, they couldn't close the mouth because either they'd squash it. Right. Or, apparently, you're not allowed to, uh, lick a toad's back. <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor would have them for breaking the law? No, 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 no. A boy's poisonous. <laughs> right? A toad's back. You should never lick a toad's back. Or, or, or put it in your mouth, really. Oh, just, 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 just stop no, no, for a second. Wait, wait, wait. What, what? Sorry, Can I just, just ask one question? Go on, yeah, just go ask on. one question. I've got a few, but no, go on. I, I, sure. M my initial thought is, it sounds like a brilliant bit of, of sort of medical uh, knowledge. That it's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. My only thought is, how does the doctor see past the toad? Yeah, at your tonsils. What's he actually looking at with the mouth open? Surely the toad is is Isn't in it the like way. Hopping around in the way. It, it didn't say. No. Uh, sorry, and uh, my my question, my first question is, was this on the internet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Carl, that is bollocks. <laughs> that is, I mean, uh, well, <laughs> all right then. Let's turn this round. Where does the saying, uh, you got a frog in your throat come uh, from? Probably because you sound a bit croaky. Probably that. <laughs> probably because you sound a little bit like a frog when you've got a sore throat. <laughs> Carl, did you not question it just for a moment when you read it? Just for a second, didn't you think, that seems an odd approach. Firstly, why a frog of yeah. all the different because species? Because it's poisonous, it's poisonous. A toad. No, so a toad, so it's a toad like. as well. Yeah, well, that he worked, I'm committed, worked. No, that, oh, no, 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 I was gonna change it to, uh, have you heard the news, Toad Day? <laughs> but I went with, I went with the flag. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! Right, so, right. so, so that's rubbish. So that's rubbish. Next, um, can I have, um, <laughs> let's play a tune, let's come up with the last one. Oh. oh, can I'm I just quiet? say, no, just play it, just play it. Yeah? Yo, Carl. <laughs> I think my uh, mate Dave, who sent me an incredible four-disc compilation, that was one of the tunes on there. It's uh, professional. It's amazing. It's incredible. The yeah. Oh, he's gone to too commendable. much effort. Uh, ben Queller. Uh, it's a track called "In Other Words" from his album "Sha Sha." Open wide. Uh, oh yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. Oh, you're young though. You've actually got a frog in your throat. Uh, I, I didn't get there. I put it in there. <laughs> that's the most ludicrous story I've ever heard, Carl. Why don't you think when you read these things? I, d I think there's always going to be a bit of truth in all of these. I mean, that fella called up, didn't he, and said, um, he said, I'm not sure about the, you know, putting a frog in your throat if you've got, ton you know, problems with your tonsils or whatever, but he said, years ago, um, if someone had toothache, yeah. they'd get hold of a frog and strap yeah. it to the face. Yeah, sure. So, maybe, down the line, you know, maybe they did. Put, yeah. Maybe they could uh, do it. Uh, little, um, I think Caligula made what is emperor, a uh, horse an emperor as well, but I mean, you know, it doesn't go on. Um, Dick Anderson's been back in touch. Excellent. Um, Excellent. I think so. He's obviously, we've turned him around. Well, he loves it now. He's been he? tuning in. He, he says, loves um, it now. He says, Ricky, thanks for a really forgettable two hours of radio. I think I'll spend the time next week counting my feet. That's from Richard Anderson. So uh, we've turned him round. No, do you know where the phrase "counting my feet" comes from? Well, in the olden days, right, and I'm talking ages ago, when you really loved something, yeah. you used to, as a as a sign of respect, like say a radio show, mm. you'd count your feet. Mm. And that's where that comes from, that's where Carl. Comes from. Well, what about the, uh, 
the frog thing with a, with, a po with a poisonous back is rubbish. That's true. No, the po tone toes have um, uh, the, the secretions in there. The, the, why? The, the, why? Why? But they don't put it in people's mouths. No. So, why? well, I'll tell you why. When a a a, a, a badger or a, a heron tastes the toad, it's horrible. Ugh. The toad might die, but it it's for the the good of the species, because then, think how many toads, like, looking like that heron could eat in its lifetime. So, the fact that one toad is sacrificed itself, all those other toads, in that heron's manner, but will be well, safe. why, why, I mean, you know, we, we've talked about animals a lot on the show, right? Yeah. And when God made a toad, sure, right, right? okay, well, so I'm, I'm gonna stop you there, I'm gonna stop you there, stop away. Don't, don't, just let him carry on. Right. Okay. Like, there's, there's annoying things out there, you know, jellyfish is a big problem with me. I don't understand why, <laughs> what they do in the sea and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, but we'll, we'll leave them. Go right, we'll, we won't, me, we'll, go on. We won't, we won't talk about jellyfish. No. With the toad, right, um, if it's to protect itself. Yeah. Right, now no, say- No, it's not to protect its species. No, 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 yeah, but that, surely, right, if, if the toad had a choice, if God said, right, what I'm gonna do for you here, um, you can have something like a lobster's got claws, big claws to have a fight. <laughs> or, I can give you something that if someone's having a go at you, you've gotta try and persuade them to lick you back. <laughs> As as a defence, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what use is right? Oh right. God! Well, I, t I tell you why. What is God? The up fact to? that there are still toads around is a testament to that defence working. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay? If the toad had died out, you'd have a point. But they're still around. It works. All right. And all right. don't start slagging God off. <laughs> He's got a lot on his plate. He, I mean, he, basically, I think he took on too much. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly in one week. Exactly, it was crazy. <laughs> Danger High Voltage, Electric 6, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Carl's getting all flustered because I put an elastic band around his head. And we've had a definition of- Well, uh, hang on a second, the because there's an update to that, Rick. Go on. Um, we did just have, uh, one, uh, definition here of, uh, a frog in the throat. Apparently this has come from some, uh, internet site, so who knows, uh, how convincing it is, but it says frog in the throat meaning suffering from temporary hoarseness, needing to clear the throat. Origin from the old English frogger, meaning hoarseness. That's from Chris. Now that sounds slightly suspect to me. Why? But, uh, frogger? I mean, it seems odd that it would derive from that when it so clearly appears to be, <laughs> you sound like a frog when you, when you have a sore throat. Yeah, but, but, but the word frog could mm. come from Frogger, because it sounds I like it's I didn't know it wasn't Frogger a game you could play on the, yeah, uh, yeah, on the spectrum. Spectrum. Oh, spectrum. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. listen, hang on, there's an update to that, because, uh, just- To the common thing. frog, of course, Rana Temporara, that's the Latin name. Well, you, your toad is Buffo Buffo. Right. You may be trying to show off, but I think you're about to embarrass yourself as Go well, on. because you've been slagging off young Carl. Yeah. It says here, another email, it doesn't tell us who it's from. Although it's hard to believe now, at one time, medieval physicians believed that the secretions of a frog could cure a cough if they were coated on the throat of the patient. Yep. That in itself yeah. sounds repulsive, but what makes the idea even worse is the application of the secretions. Instead of painting the treatment on, something which may also have seemed uh, rational, a live frog was placed into the mouth of the sufferer, where it remained until the physician decided that the treatment was complete. Right. Uh, apparently Shakespeare's son-in-law, that's a question mark, I don't know what that means. Anyway, it's no wonder that today a froggy or croaky attempt at speech is said to be a frog in your throat. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you can see that what's happened there is Carl's misread or been slightly misinformed about uh, a medieval practice. In a sense, you're both winners, just for taking part. <laughs> 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 What's your yeah. final one, Carl? <laughs> right, the final story is, um, the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, it's about this fella, uh, I think it's in England somewhere. Yeah. Don't know when it happened, but, uh... Literally ages ago, or...? Basically, well, it's when, I think it's when they were trying to crack down on, like, drunken people walking about in the street. Oh, yeah. And they found this fella. Saturday. He's Saturday, that one. <laughs> and, uh, found this fella, and, uh, all the local people were saying, oh, look at him wandering around, he's, he's drunk and what have you. That's not right. Get the police in. He got arrested and that, and they got him in the court. And uh, the judge was there, and he says, uh, "So you know, what's all this? What's going on? What are you doing wandering about when you've had a drink? You know the rules. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. You had a glazed expression on your face. Uh, blah blah blah. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, he only he only had a glass eye. So Did he have was, two glass eyes. No, he had one. But that okay. was, th th they, they were about to sort of lock him up. Was he a bit pissed up as well? Well, he was, he was pretty livid. <laughs> <laughs> but was he also drunk with a glass eye? No, no, that's oh, the right. weird thing. He wasn't right. even, he hadn't even had a drink. So they just thought, because he had a weird stare. Because, because his eyes were all glazed. Yeah. Well, uh, well, where'd you get this from? Why are you telling me this? <laughs> <laughs> 
Why are you telling me this? I don't, I don't, I mean, thank you, because it's, you know, killed a couple of minutes, but why is this educating me? What are you, what are you telling me because here? Because the, 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 there's a bit of a thing there, a bit of a fable, that don't always judge a book by its cover. Yeah? So, the guy, he hadn't even had a drink. He's probably just been shopping. Yeah. Uh, walking down the street and everyone's like getting involved, like what's he doing? He I shouldn't... don't, hang on, I don't understand. He's walking down the street, happens to have a glass eye. He was doing nothing else to suggest he was drunk. You don't pick people up just because they, their eye looks like oh, that. But oh, even oh. if it happened, why are you telling me? With no, with no particular detail. Oh. I know this, but then we're gonna get It's not enough information. I know, yeah. No, oh. th 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 there's a bit of a lesson there, educating Ricky, just, you know, just watch what you say. Uh, don't always jump to conclusions. I'm just... I, I, I don't, I think the, the only education I can take from that is that um, if I ever do become a policeman, I shouldn't just arrest people because they look a bit drunk. I should just <laughs> tap their eye with a pen and go, goes, <laughs> oh, okay, on you on go. You go. Oh. On you go, yeah. Guys, can I just look at that? I'm just gonna email Richard Anderson and tell him I agree. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, we're running out of time and um, Oh, how, where did the phrase got, frog in the throat come from? We've got, we've, we've got it here, he's been, he's been told, well, there's three. Can we play a come back with that? Have well, we got anything lined up? Uh, yeah, we've got the song with the story in it. Come on, okay. Carl, let's do something. Quick, play a record. Song with a story in it. We're never going to just, they're listening. We, this, we discuss this off air, come on. Play a record. Come on. Right. Play it. It's, it's King's, for, yeah. King's, King's. It's a song with a good story in it. you got to listen to the words. <laughs> Carl, what was that? That was a little song that's, with a story. Uh, that's another it? little feature that we do every Saturday. Uh, <laughs> so make sure you tune in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a song that's got a good story in it. There's a lot of music about these What's guys. What's that story that, about then? What's that, that story about? You don't know what they're going on about. Whereas that, classic from the Kinks called Lola. Yeah, what's it about? Um, I'd listened to it for the first time properly this morning. Yeah. And what I've worked out from it is, is a fellow who goes out for a normal Saturday night out, he's yeah. in Soho. Yeah. He's having a, he's having a Coca-Cola or whatever. And he, uh, he sees, he sees this woman and he can say, oh, she's all right. Yeah. Won't mind a bit of that. So he wanders over and he sort of gets to talking to her. He looks at her and she's got a great figure, nice face and all that. Lovely knob. And, uh, and she speaks and he yeah. goes, oh, God. Got a bit of a bloke's Frog voice. Yeah. <laughs> got a bit yeah. of a voice like a bloke. But he thought, but, you know, that's her only down point. Sure. Mm -hmm. So he's, he dances around with her and I think he sits on his knee, I think he said. Yeah. Anyway, it turns out it's a fella. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, a sobering yeah. lesson. Yeah. Um, um, what do you take from that? Look, always sort of, if you, if you think you might be talking to, uh, a bloke in dress, dress. Just look at it doesn't it? sort of Adam's apple. Right. <laughs> okay. I'll probably have a hairier ass than, <laughs> than a woman. Yeah, I think you've gone too far away then, though. <laughs> I think you've already- I think you're already, you're already getting too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> no, pun intended, definitely. There was a pun intended. Oh, was it? Alright, was it? Yes. Oh, Alright, alright, okay, we don't be disgusting then. <laughs> Of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because, I mean, your school experience was a bit If You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, She's four. Right. <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think they should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right. So, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so teaching them the the the, the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination, but just freaking them out a bit as well. Just going <laughs> like, <laughs> I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? To be a human? Or, or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that, you know, teaching them the love for learning. So, yeah. you know, get them up to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas... He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like, how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? That's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's say, not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't Get happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher a on Mars. Why not? Because yeah, how, why not? Why did it? How did it get there? But we're always sending like rubbish out there and that. It's like not dishwashers. What you think the the council take it away and they go? Where can we put it? Well, the uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who I don't know was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that. Um, 
he did it wrong because he did it on like Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating, no one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean, they're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day. So, it didn't really get there I don't think, but it crash landed. What right. are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars and it, it, it got... Probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't it? But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, it's, all, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So... Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to... But who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram... Yeah. ...out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right. Say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it. So one, to, one... one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more. What yeah. I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing They've got up, a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking out ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, all right then, here's a different question. Go on then. Would it be better um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst yeah. we're here? Because what, I, I put that in my diary the other day, that, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. There's speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. Cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not, not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying I is... I think there's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still handful, millions of people handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo yeah. Loads of people are living longer. And yeah. that's that's a problem. So, so you feel is, that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex into wandering say around, wandering London, around. just have them wandering around, just picking people off. That's what. Just just you know, just sort of random and that. Because I I don't know. I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that. But all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go. On. Oh, Neil, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And, and Nora's you know, been had her head bitten off by a. Whatever. I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest, which yeah. is we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or... <laughs> do you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking of ever been in a physical fight. Um, once that I can remember. It was over a, over a woman. <laughs> well, a girl. I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because, like, it's hassle, innit? Right? Relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh, I, I didn't uh, sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And, uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like, sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, <laughs> and, um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And, uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on, and I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it, and she started crying. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't be doing with this, right? Can't, I, you know, what's up with you? It's old, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be doing with this. Right? Right. So she's crying her eyes out, so it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying? Right. In the morning, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right? And uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know. And I'm saying, what are you on about? 
So you're, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> Sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. Ah. Get out of my face. <laughs> So I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved? And I'm like, <laughs> why, are you, yeah. two seven year old? Yeah. why are you getting involved? And, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We had yeah. a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Um, I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Oh, wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like someone from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. Just, uh, so you put, you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What were you wearing? Football boots? I just boots? stood on it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so... got a hole in it. But, so, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got head, so arm locks, a little and bit of wrestling and sho shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, mm. right? And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, "Oh God, there's a copper here talking," and it, like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. <laughs> Did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, 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 he, he said, "You'll never take me alive, copper." <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just I don't know what they're intending. What, what response they're hoping for, really. This is one from Rob. He just says, I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix? What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. What? Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty uh, redundant now. So, th this is kind of what we've talked about before, where... He always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this and, and the thing that he's talked about is nothing like it. What I mean is, we've, we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way. And well, we, well, we have done. interfered, yeah. yeah. we shouldn't have done, because... It's, it's the same way, like, uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, is the answer's no. Yeah. Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way... Because he's right, is it? Because he's right. No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of, like, an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe hundred years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. Oh, we're having a laugh, aren't we? Little car with his hey, sandwich and that. Up, oh, I'm a, oh, I'm still bruised where you punched me in the shoulder, showing that you could box. Yeah, to be fair though, Rick, you do think that you're now a yeah. professional boxer because you've been on the I'm telly boxing. Yeah. No, he does. Uh, I mean, he laughs about it, but he does walk around thinking, yeah, I could probably handle myself in a yeah. street brawl. In fact, I walk around handling myself. Yeah. A lot of the time, don't yeah. I, Carl? Um, and often mm. Carl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Because his little round head, I've got another mate that's got a little bald head, and I'd like to squeeze it. Mm. I'd just like to see how far. Do you know what I mean? Like an egg. It, you can squeeze it that way, sort of sideways, and that hurts. But then squeeze it forward to back, it doesn't hurt so much, does it? Do you know what worries me, though? I think if you ever actually did crack Carl's head, I think yolk would come out. <laughs> yeah. I did, he was drawing, and I gave him a little karate chop on the back of the head, and he jumped. He spasmed. Sorry, you it? gave him a karate chop on the back of the head? Yeah. To be fair, though, I think I'd spasm. <laughs> if a man crept up behind me and karate chopped me in the neck, oh, that's probably a natural Carl. reaction. Didn't I laugh, oh, eh, yeah. Carl? Right, good laugh. <laughs> oh, so we got lots of uh, little things to get through. I mean, look at his little face. You are right. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right, I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right, and, uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, 
I told him about this thing. I don't know if uh, uh, any of you out there um, know about this. Um, but there's the, an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where uh, there's your two hemispheres of the brain, okay? They're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right? Which is a, just a little flap of skin, like a little scart lead that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia. But what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut. Like, its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went, instead of, like, thinking this is an amazing experiment, he went, would it, would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining, and I remember you mentioned, because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me, you said, of course, one side of the brain deals with, uh, symbolism. And as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed it took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise I said it. I said Nolika chair at one point as well. Right, yeah. And I, I knew I was dicey with death there. Yeah. But yeah. um, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah. spelling, the spelling of it's what what is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't put, can't do it. Can't no, it's a point. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh... I don't know. But yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, might explain something. I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, you're, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told <laughs> I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told him about them. He was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us. See, evolutionally speaking, they've got their social um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? So is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary ladder? chimp Carl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Phone up if you want to play XF Family Fortunes. Now, a lot of people, of course, won't be familiar with this because we played this in the very early days of XFM. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain but the rules or do you just want people to phone it, in? It's like Family Fortunes. We need two of you. <laughs> uh, I asked you. Do you remember we discussed this before? You can't say that. Yeah. Um, and so get two on the line. You're, you're competing against each other. And so it's fingers on the buzzers. Um, will you stop chewing, picking your teeth? It, it's, it, I mean, even if the listeners can't hear, it really annoys me. It is a bit like having a chimp in the room. Do you know what I mean, Carl? Have you ever seen him he eat hot food? No. Uh, honestly, it is like a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing? What? <laughs> Just get. Oh, God. <laughs> or like the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm never annoying, Carl, so why are you? Do you know what I mean, Steve? You're so annoying. I tell you, have you been with him for trying to go, trying to have lunch with Ricky? Yeah. It's the hardest thing possible. Yeah. You wander around for hours. Com it's a, well, a combination, it used to be bad even before he was a celebrity because he has this, the, a tolerance level, I, it's extraordinary. I mean, he is uh, irritated <laughs> by a car honking its horn in the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't believe it, let's go in here, I, I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, he, he gets annoyed by police sirens, by rain, wind, <laughs> birds in the air, other people in the streets. They're the most annoying. Children particularly, whether they're in a school playground we happen to be walking past, <laughs> whether they're on TV. It's it, just noise that isn't mine. Well, I know, but this is the thing, you are the most irritating man I've ever met, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, you know that car, don't you? I mean, yeah. noises he makes, uh, um, uh, it's extraordinary. I mean, I've been, I've been, well, I've been editing some behind-the-scenes footage we shot of, uh, making the second series of The Office. It's extraordinary. I've had to cut sequences out involving Ricky because they'll just think he's a giver, just think he's an idiot, like some kind of puppet that the rest of us are controlling because he's shouting, he's whistling, he's honking, he's making noises, he's dancing around. It's extraordinary. And if you're out trying to find somewhere to eat with him, all these irritants, all these annoyances, and it's, oh, that music's too loud, I don't like that particular song, I'm not going in there, there's more than eight people in that cafe, I'm not going in there. It's just <laughs> extraordinary. I think we need a woman. I'm thinking of hiring a woman, like a PA, to just go out ahead of us, scout ahead of us, go in, you know, and she, she can just sexist. phone back and say, Oh, <laughs> sexist. Oh. <laughs> or a guy. Oh, that's Or a fella. Oh. 
Ooh, sexist. Or a fella. Just to go ahead. Oh, I'm thinking back. of hiring a woman. Subservient role. We couldn't hire him. Oh, no. Oh, sexist. Well, that or a chance to meet a woman. <laughs> Yeah. That I'm also yeah. paying. It's like, it's like paying for him. <laughs> it's like exactly. It's like more above board. Yeah. So, uh, if, if you want to play Family Fortunes, call up. What's the number? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Yeah, it's just like Family Fortunes. Two of you are competing for some great prizes. And, uh, I go, um, something you'd, you know how it goes, and then <laughs> I go buzz and, and, uh, <laughs> play around board. It's not as high tech. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, lovely Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Hello. Hey. One person clapping. I, I, I was the lovely, wasn't I? Yeah. Or was that a communal lovely? It was a communal oh. lovely for everyone. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. No, I'm happy with that. Though, yeah, we're, we're all lovely. G-Man, well, I, I like the G-Man. Do you remember we were in before? Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, G-Man. One, one of the good dudes. Yeah. I'm glad. It wasn't live, though, was it? Oh, so we had a lot of fun. probably cut it all out, yeah. didn't he? All the good stuff. All the, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of it was cut out. Of Is this interview. live now, Graham? We are absolutely live. So, all the stuff cut out was probably that we talking about we haven't you don't play Gary Glitter anymore there was various bits that were cut out and yeah. um, I definitely haven't kept was... the whole interview for my personal yeah. collection at home. No. I definitely haven't done why that why would that be a problem I don't know <laughs> you just, it's true it's just an observation yeah. so Ricky you've been on you've been on this show <laughs> I've got to move on you've been on this show a million times now welcome back again <laughs> oh, Steve it. is your second go yep. but but Carl it's lovely to meet you all right how's it going really good for the thank webcam you. this um right so just get how round that head is don't get behind the microphone <laughs> I've worked in radio and you should never play up to what's going on in the studio. Yeah. Really? Think about the listener at home. <laughs> right. When have we ever done that or okay. cared? And when has Radio 1 ever done that or okay. cared? <laughs> it's weird, Al. Now I'm back in a radio studio. That, that used to be my old job. I feel like I should be controlling a few things here. There's a few more people in here who don't need to be in here. <laughs> How would you sort out the, uh, the G-Man show then? What do you, what, what's disappointed you so far? Is there a bed playing under us at the moment? There is a bed, yeah. Get rid of that. You want to get rid of it? That, I think that annoys people, that. Okay. It's yeah. almost like saying what these people are saying now isn't worth hearing, so well, it's a little true. bit of music. That's definitely true. All right, yeah. put the music back what, on. So you, you want the music on or off? No, no, off, off. Mu okay. you know, let's be interesting. Let's try and be interesting. Mm. Okay. Right. What else Go on, then. Do? What else, what else did you change? Um, you haven't got a wacky name, I mean, it's just Greg James. Yeah, so no, I get that. G-Man. 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 You did that with me, you call me the K-Man, I hated it. Do you not yeah. like the camera? Well, yeah, but you didn't like us calling you an empty-headed, shaven, chimp moron, either. That hasn't so, stopped us. <laughs> no, you, you can't win with Carl. <laughs> anyway. Have you been to Radio 1 before, Carl? Um, I have, yeah. I was on, um, is he still there? Still working here? Who? Nihal. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, he's he, still he was good. Oh, he's good, Nihal, yeah. He was alright, I met him. Lovely yeah. fella. Good. Um, a lot of changes, though, all the time in radio. You never know what you're getting. Mm. That's true. Yeah. But you've been here for a while now. I thought from Three years. Freeman, I mean, he was around for about <laughs> 120 years. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. Maybe you'll be like Fluff one day. Hopefully. Pop pickers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're we talking about then? Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the lovely thing. you mean thing. you don't know? Well, no, I mean, talking about your, your new DVD. But yes, we've got the DVD out of the animated, um, show, taken from the, uh, podcast of the same name, The Ricky Gervais Show, but everyone knows who's listened to it, and there's been a lot of people, we've had about 230 million downloads, okay, this is on TV in America and England, the DVD's coming out around the world, right, and it should be called, and I know this, it should be called The Carl Pilkington Show, <laughs> because it is the musings of a little... Roundheaded people struggle. Strong. People struggle with my name. Do well, they? Really? Why? Just, the, just the Pilkington. They can't, they can't say it. I don't know what's wrong. It's so easy. It's spelled as it looks. Yeah. Uh, when you've just been on looks. on Dale yeah. Winton's show, he called me Nigel. Normally, it's a surname. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. He called me Nigel. <laughs> Seriously. What did, he call, what did he call him in return? No, well, I was a bit sort of. I was chuffed to be, you know, be meeting him because I've watched him a long time. He's yeah. a big fan. I like him to win it. I was telling him about him to win it. He wasn't that interested, though, was he? No. It was just like he treated me like some fan. He just went, yeah, yeah, thanks for that. You should have just called him Steve Wright. Well, yeah. I liked him, though. He's, he's a nice bloke, but he just annoyed me. Greg, are you familiar with Carl? Have you heard the podcast or any Absolutely. Animation? I was going to say, well, I used to listen to the show on that radio station years and years ago when but I was how at school. would you, if you're a listener, say there's someone listening at home, right, mm. they, they love you, they trust you, yeah. they respect you. You are the demographic. Right. These mm -hmm. kids go, well, he's, he's he like our leader. Up. Right. So, which <laughs> I'm sure is true. isn't it? So, yeah. Um, you know, you're not in school anymore, you're not being bullied, you're on the radio, you're yeah. all powerful. You've got yeah. long trousers, I noticed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, well done, so, yeah. So, um, uh, how would you explain Carl to people listening at home who are not familiar with him? Uh, I think a, just a, 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 a muse. Yeah, he is. A okay. wise sage. I can't get enough of him. I mean, myself and Stephen, we sort of probably come across as sort of like bullying media types, but it's purely to get out 
what I know is in Carl's head, mm. and he sees the world differently. He is a proper artist. You ask him anything you want about any subject, and it, it's remarkable. And um, I, 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 I did the podcast just to be in a room with him, asking him <laughs> questions and teaching him stuff. Like a, 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 we we feel like we're. I don't know, it's like an Eliza Doolittle. We're trying to make him... <laughs> or or we, we found something, sort of, and thawed it out. Yeah. And it was from a, 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 an era gone by. One of my favourite bits is actually on... This, I think it's the first episode of, of the series. Mm. Is the one... Is the, is, <laughs> Not impressed, is, Carl? First episode? You know, episodes one to four or five, very, very weak. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. that's, Honestly, that's unbelievable. He's trying to it? sell this DVD. We're trying know. to sell a DVD around the world, and he comes out with episodes <laughs> one to four, very weak. But there was a, there was a, an ideal that you had about you thought that old people should kind of die and then a child falls out of them yeah. when they d can you Let's explain the that theory because it is yeah. a British well, no, theory. Well, people are living Let too long. What was what was the? Do you crowd. think that people are living too long? So he this thinks was... people are living too long. He said because mm. people can't die anymore because when you're dying, someone suddenly sticks a new lung on no. you. No lung, <laughs> a been new been lung on loads you. Loads of different theories. Yeah, and they've all been mental. Okay, let me hear because I want to. My favourite one. Which I don't know if it's the same one that you're talking about, mm -hmm. but the aging backwards thing... That's it, yeah. ...is good. But then a fella nicked it, didn't he? He made a film out of it with Brad Pitt. So now everyone's going, boo, it's not your idea. Hang on, no, you weren't suggesting it as a film idea. You were suggesting we should do this in real life. Somehow no, we should make no. people grow backwards. His suggestion of a film idea, he actually got a meeting with a film company, so uh, uh, this is the first episode of Series 2, won't be out until next year, but he had a meeting with a real film company. They said, have you got any ideas for films? And he said yes, right? Yeah. And he told, the thing that he told them was the ramblings right. of a madman. Right. Right. Let's, let's hear the idea, let's hear the idea. I, I want to hear the idea again, right. because it's Imagine this, heard it. it's Remember, brilliant. I'm going to a meeting with a film company in Soho, Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, maybe they want me to play a part. Right? I haven't tried acting. I did Little Donkey, you know, in the Christmas play. But I was alright. I went down well on the stage. My Although acting you, job. Let him finish his Well, your dad was filming it, wasn't yeah. he? And he, 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 he got, away, Ricky! He got back, okay, and his dad has been filming it, right? And he listened back to his dad uh, on the camcorder, and his dad said, he looks like a right prat. <laughs> and he heard that when he got home. Yeah, but listen, anyway, so I go into this meeting. Yeah. And I go, right, uh, I'm Carl, you called me in. They went, yeah, 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 sit down. Loads of croissants and that, you know what it's like in Soho. Yeah. Went in there, he said, uh, right, listen, got any film ideas? Now, when you're in that situation, you've got to come up with something. It's like in The Apprentice. Hmm. None of them people in The Apprentice ever go, oh, I don't know, I haven't got any ideas here. You've got to come up with something. Hmm. And I find that if you just talk, stuff comes out. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. Because your brain's going, I've got to come up with something, so sure. just keep going, so... Bit, bits of food, <laughs> back. No, no, but just keep, anything. just say anything for a bit. Chewing gum, going, yeah, it should films. be chewing, but it just fell out because he was talking, <laughs> hadn't concentrated on keeping it in. It's false Things teeth. like that, yeah. <laughs> anyway, listen to this for a film idea, yeah. and then mm. we can have a song. Brilliant. You're right. in charge now, yeah? So producing. So what, what I'd say is, I said, I picked the actors for them, I said, Rebecca De Mornay yeah. and Clive Warren. <laughs> right, yeah. Right, so we pointed out that Clive Warren doesn't actually exist. Well, no, he, he means Clive Owen. F Clive Warren's a former Radio One DJ. Brilliant. Well, yeah. he doesn't. He has a, that's just, probably why it's in my head. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. why. Yeah. Rebecca well, De Mornay, who Steve pointed out, has not been on television or film for 15 years. <laughs> so you now pick? he's pitched someone who doesn't exist and a woman who hasn't been on telly or well, what film. What would you do? Years. Pick someone who's in everything. Okay. Let's get Will Smith. Boring. Right, okay. So we're seeing him. Where's yeah. Rebecca? Look at this film star in the world. So what? I'm yeah, sick of him. Warren, he He's was on Capital film. Radio for He's a while. He's in every film. Where's Rebecca? <laughs> yeah. Rebecca who? In the morning. I don't Who's that? Shut um, up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Dangerous know. Dave Pierce in a movie. <laughs> Let's have a song. This <laughs> <laughs> is Bass Hunter. <gasps> That is Bass Hunter and Saturday Brilliant. on Radio 1. Steve's favourite. Do you like that one, Steve? Oh, Men Alive. If I'm not down a dance club, <laughs> dancing to dance clubs? <laughs> to dance club. I don't know! When they, when they uh, put on the, the gramophone <laughs> and you, you, you cut the rug. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, Carl, so, this idea, okay, you got Clive Warren. Sure, Rebecca De Mornay. Yeah, yeah, you've got the big names, you've got the big hitters. There's okay. no one listening to Radio 1 who knows who Rebecca De Mornay is. No, <laughs> she was in the hand that rocks the cradle, but okay. Clive Warren does not exist. Ask Apparently, <laughs> by, by well. coincidence, he's a DJ on Capital or something, okay, but that's not what he meant. He, he thinks he means Clive, well, he means Clive Owen, he just doesn't know anything about the film industry, so carry on. Don't worry about that, because he's got a great idea. So yeah, what, what was the, the idea, idea, Carl, what was it? So, anyone who's just... Tuned in now. Yeah, a bit, a bit confused. I've just put. Yeah, Carl was called from a meeting by a British film uh, company and said, "Have you got any ideas?" Just think of their faces. Just think of the executives' faces when he pitched them this. Right. So there's the cast. 
Yeah. Slip that over to him on a bit of paper. They're writing down Clive, oh, Clive Warren. Well, we haven't heard of him. Must be new. Right. Wow, this guy's fantastic. Rebecca de Mornay. Well, maybe he's doing a John Travolta that, that Tarantino did. He's bringing it. It's amazing. Carl Pimple right. is a genius. Right, what's the idea, Carl? Right, the idea is. Go on. Rebecca, I mean, I can't remember all of it. I might get some of these mm. facts oh, wrong. Now. Well, no, 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 no more facts anyway, because you can't even remember who exists and who doesn't. We've got carry on. Basically, <laughs> Rebecca de Mornay is going out with Clive Warren. Oh, right? yeah. Clive. Clive Owen, as we now know it is. Mm. Clive Owen, he starts off all lovey-dovey. Yeah. They're in the house in the morning like mm. they do in American films. Cornflakes, yeah. milk going everywhere, cat jumping about. Right, okay. Sun's out. That's like every American happened. film we've ever seen. Cornflakes, milk goes everywhere, cat, cat, cat jumping about. about. What film was that? It happens a lot. Miss Doubtfire. Um, <laughs> Miss Doubtfire. She's not married <laughs> in this one. So this anyway, is the prequel. Listen. This is this <laughs> really... You can correct Miss Doubtfire. It's the college yeah, yeah, years. Yeah. This yeah. does me in this. Go on. So... There they are. Everyone's tuning in, going, this is a nice, pleasant film. Little love yeah, story. Yeah, the cat's going, man. There's milk everywhere. Yeah. Well, anyway. Why Clive Owen and his girlfriend is 20 years older than him. <laughs> yeah. Why isn't, the, why isn't the cat looking at the milk that's everywhere? <laughs> and on the walls and everything. The cornflakes. It's like the cornflakes. Go on, yeah. So, this is, oh, uh, this must be it. an American film. The cat's being thrown around with milk. Clive Warren, Clive <laughs> Owen, yeah. he, he leaves the house. Mm. Um, she's waving to him out the window, cleaning up the milk, going, oh, I can't wait to see you. Mouthing that, I love you, and all that yeah. out yeah. the window. Yeah. Bus comes. <laughs> dead. Right. <laughs> well, Owen. Clive Owen. Clive Owen's yeah. dead, right. right. She's devastated. Yeah. Of course. She thinks she's lost a lover. No, 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 anyway, no, yeah. she goes to the she's doctor. Got the cat to deal with. Yeah, the no point crying Goes to the doctor, yeah. says, oh, I'm sick of this, uh, I'm depressed, uh, I really miss him. The doctor, he goes, listen, got a bit of good news. Mm. We can now mm. put a bit of his brain in your head. Mm. Right. Well, as I pointed out, why in the name of Christ, would because, they ever have that done? Why because, would anyone have a bit of their dead boyfriend's brain put in their head? Well, you haven't been in the situation, so you can't say No, that. and I never will be, because no. I will say to that doctor, I'm having you struck off, you're a maniac. Listen, Call think the about police. it, think about it. Go on. I, I, I think Suzanne would want it, my girlfriend would want it. Definitely this. not. If I got hit by a bus, the, the human brain is in two bits. They found out recently. In fact, here's a bit of new information that wasn't on the podcast we were talking Isn't about. It's exclusive. Yeah. yeah. It is. If wow. you are studying medicine, turn off the radio now. Right. It, you, people will email in with this. Okay. It'll be on my side. We've got three brains. I've just dropped that one into you. Right. What so does anyway, that mean? What? We've what does that three mean? Brains. You mean me, you and Ricky? We've got to finish the film thing. idea, but listen. Go on. There's a film in your, there's a, there's a brain in your stomach. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, Honest to God. Only if you're a cannibal. Honest to God. Right, so anyway, so let's move on. Yeah. So anyway, so if I said to, so I'm, I'm mixed up here now, I don't know, am I telling you the film idea? Yes. yes. Yeah. Right then. So. You're Carl Pilkington. Rebecca de Mornay, she's missing her, her husband. The mm. doctor says we can now take a bit of his brain out and put it in doctor your brain. Doctor says I haven't seen you for 20 years, love. <laughs> yeah. What do I remember you from? Oh yeah, were you, were you, oh, oh, let me just IMDB you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no hits. No, you haven't come up. Love. Anyway, the idea is Go on. is that the brain she has a half of her brain taken out. Right, half of because anyone would do that. Yeah. So she's had some of her brain removed. They've not just bolted a bit of his brain on. No, moved. Right. Okay, right. so she's lost some of her brain. Okay, yeah. so she's now a vegetable. Voluntarily, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. They right. cut him <laughs> his half. Yeah. So when she's going about a day in the morning, she's knocking the milk over again and milk everywhere and the cornflakes. Well, of course she is now. She's got yeah. half her brain missing. She probably can't even walk. So, so Clive's still going. Oh, you silly sod, and all that. Yeah. And she's going, oh, I know. It's like the old times. But right. she's still living with him because he's, she's getting his memories and sight and stuff. Right. He's always seeing what she's seeing. They can chat. Yeah. And basically, it just goes to show how you can have, like, how love is like a love of two brains. Absolute. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was some of the, one of the most stupid ideas for a film I have ever heard in my life. No. Well, I mean, just, it's just, just an idea, so right? now it's Rebecca. So now Clive Warren's not even in it. It's just his voice over. So now it's Rebecca De Mornay um, going around knocking over milk because she's <laughs> uh, she's essentially a vegetable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. That, so uh, the thing is though, that um, those sort of chats are exactly why this. Uh, I mean, it's a load. I mean, the, the chats are a load of rubbish like that. Oh, yeah. so that's going to be on ITV drama in <laughs> three weeks time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it will be. And yeah. everyone will be saying, that's, that's good, who's come up with that? Carolyn Quentin never get and the Jimmy phrase. Nesbitt. Do you know what, in Greg? The I've love of up, two brains. I've come up with loads of stuff yeah. that mm. I see on the uh, Dragon's Den. No, you haven't. I've told you about. I came up with a clippable mat. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good idea. You went poo-pooed it. Yeah. I came up with a see-through toaster. Someone's done it. Right. And I came up with... Uh, Came up with something else. It's, do, you know, right. do you know, we asked him what the best invention he's ever seen was. He said, um, mops they put on cat's feet. Because he said, because cats never do anything around the house. That the best invention. No. Unbelievable. Well, what does your cat do? I don't know why you have that cat. 
does me head in. Does nothing around the house. Mopes it's about, does nothing. All I'm saying is stick some little mops on its feet, <laughs> and when it's rowing around doing no nothing, at least it's cleaning something. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that is why this is one of the most successful podcasts ever made. <laughs> um, you've got to go, I think. You're, you've got to go somewhere else, haven't you, in a second? Yeah. But thank you so much for coming in. Um, hey, if you're in Bournemouth, Brighton or Birmingham, I'm coming to see you next week with my live tour, Science. Steve, got anything to flog? Well, Fridge freezer. Carl, last word, why should they buy this DVD? Just because, uh, I don't know, really. Just a Brilliant. Nice See you thing. in Bournemouth. <laughs> bye, everybody. Tatty bye. Tatty bye. Questions for Carl. Just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Yeah. The uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme inside the actor's studio. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh. No, what do you I'm, mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know. Uh, do you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates? I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> if he owns a place, what's he doing there? He could put well, anyone on it. It's St. Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. OK, well, let's say it's St. No, Peter. No, 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 no. You go through the gate, Peter goes, Oh, you expected, um, he's got an appointment. We're going through to God. Go through a few doors. Go up top floor, right, past the executive washroom, into his big office. OK, that overlooks the universe. So what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like God to say to you at that point? Um, probably just, just say, oh, um, you've done well in that in your life. You never did anybody any harm, so welcome to the, to heaven. Any problems, give us a shout. Um... You know, here's a little layout of, of like, a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like... I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So, hang on, he's giving you a little map. So, he's giving you a little map of the a area. Map, it's and big. he'll sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit... A bit cagey. Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because, to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even want to! No, but oh, because the thing is, if you've done all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. I, I mean, I don't know if it is like Do this. Do you think Sometimes God would like this podcast? Um... Uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that is just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's going to be well busier than that. <laughs> what about teenagers? And um, do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't around. So but you understand what it was like in those days? Um, You've seen happy days. I don't know. People always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it's a better life in the 50s. And it's like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old now. Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happiest at in about... 1984. <laughs> right. Quite specific year. Why? Why was, just, was that? just I was free and happy. How old, I mean? how old were you? I don't know. Uh, I to, uh, He's just counting on his fingers now. 12. Right, OK. And it was just good. <laughs> so I, the happiest days of your life were between the age of 12 and 13? Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. Mm. Um, Little did you know, your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike. I like messing about my bike. You had your mates. I had a pet magpie. So you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? Probably. Were you a good lad, law-abiding? I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know, just potted about. I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it, because I was always out. I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like, on a bike or... Just riding in a circle, endlessly, through blizzards, rain, sleet, hail. 
I never seemed to be in. I was always... When, when everyone always goes, where were you when uh, Band Aid was happening? I was always out on my bike. And everything was like... like you and McGregor? A, a memory's always sort of like coming in for some orange and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married and my mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. I was always doing that. The only time I was in my house... <laughs> this is why you don't know anything, cos you never stopped. Yeah, but this is what being a kid's about. But what I mean, information free. you have, Carl, is as though you've gleaned it as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like, you know, every piece of information you have. Your hair, are your you? hair blowing the wind. <laughs> Carl, yes. your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk stupid, ma'am. It was, it was easy. So, yeah, 12 to 13 was good. But you see... And it was all downhill from then, was it? 13. It's your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was 13, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your 13th birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> <laughs> on his 13th birthday! <laughs> well, you were buying a cake. What, what did what you see in the supermarket? Just, that... It was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. And I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worry look on my face. <laughs> didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> My eyes moved around more than I did. <laughs> oh dear, couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I'll try and get a bit of movement in my face. Mm, it's know. a workout, yeah. a baby workout. Oh, babies, well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. <laughs> yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to, um, like, a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said when, I'm older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. She was... <laughs> I love that he could reason with her. I love him. He's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you're going to know. She goes, I, I think not, Mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now, because no-one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets. The streets were safer, because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, his front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just loads of people just walking around. There was never around. any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no, I was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony, Yeah. he did tiling with him. He drove past and he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now, the thing is, he wasn't panicked. People weren't going, oh, God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just... How old were you? He's down in the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's four years old, yeah. <laughs> he's just down. Well, he's only having a He's down in a pub with Tony, probably, playing darts. <laughs> Yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but to the that's, pub. that's what it Tony, was like. Tony, you bringing a baby to the pub? Uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we'll bring in ours. <laughs> All right, see you later, mate. Well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents that they didn't do that. They looked out <laughs> in the back car and you were gone. Some bloke's driving off in a van. And they're just going, oh, help. Oh. They've down the pub. <laughs> Doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> This is absurd. So what happened when you got down to the pub? I just was there for a bit, and then... Uh, the for, for a bit? Just had a game of pool? Then my dad came in. It was like, oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh, there you are! I love that! Uh, where's my baby? I'm, going to, I'm just going to have a quick pint now. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, mate. So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. Well, it's that time again. It's Carl's diary. Oh, what's he written today? I told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so he, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them 
to sort of use during a thing where they do mind reading and stuff. So right. you get a, a, recording, a recording of, the, of it. Uh, yep. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. And a dog was sort of looking worried and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was, were they looking, I'm not being funny, were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you think? No, they were just, just looking at me and I was sort of panicking a bit. And the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind. So I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind. Thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Running about on the beach. <laughs> he remembers what he was thinking. No, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh no, I'm getting it all tangled up. I've got a cross line here. Snow Patrol and Run on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Stephen Merchant and Carl Bilkins. Yeah. That's. Three for one. I don't know. All right. Exciting. Exciting. Um, well, news, happy, news, 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 news. Uh, breaking news <laughs> is that there's only two more weeks of us before we have to go away on a little extended break again. So um, can't give any more details yet. We don't know when we can come back because uh, we don't know what we're doing. We're going to um, America. We're doing the Golden Globes, and then we're going to watch the Office pilot being filmed. Yes. And then we got bits. Of, I'm doing a bit of a tour, so it'll be. Sort of the summer times, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it like they, they care. Oh, they don't give a damn. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think that because, um, you think, oh, you don't want to let down the people, you want to keep it consistent, you want to give, you know, but really, I know I like doing this more than anyone listening. Definitely. Do you know what definitely, I mean? Definitely, definitely. I yeah. love coming in, I love squeezing Carl's head. Yeah. I love playing some records. You know, I like sort of sitting in the room with you. I know you love it. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing on a Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, we got our Saturdays back, though. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, my alarm went off today and I was a bit tired because we, we had a couple of drinks last night, didn't we? Last night, yeah. Yeah, we had, you know, party. We are party animals. Um, but, um, oh, I've been looking for an office this week, mm. as you know. And it's so stressful. <sighs> Just walking around, just talking to t agents and, but, but, uh, right, okay. So, my method is this, right? I walk around the area that I want to be in, because I, I don't want to hear anything else. I don't want to, you know what I mean? So I walk around, it, uh, uh, to be fair, it is about a square 500 yards. Yeah. Right? It's sort Your of- Your house is in the centre. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I walk, yeah. And, uh, so I walk around and look at placards, I go, that's a nice office, and I phone them up. There's loads of different people I'm dealing with, right? And they went, oh, we got one in so and so street, I think it was Fifth Street or something like that. I went, oh yeah, I went along to, so I'll see you there in 20 minutes. I got there, you were there if you remember. Mm -hmm. I looked around and I said to Steve, it looks alright, there's no, 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 no pawn shops or anything like that, right? And Steve went, well, it is next to a brothel. And I looked and there on the next thing, like, you know, model, first floor, uh, Susie, oh three, I went, oh, and I phoned him and I said, do you know what? Um, don't bother coming here. He went, no, I said, no, no, I said, because it's next to a brothel. He went, yeah. I went, right, okay, just for future reference, I don't want an office literally next to a brothel, <laughs> right? When I go to work, I don't want to walk past prostitutes. Call me old-fashioned. Yeah, right? as you so, go into work, there's a prostitute. Yeah. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. Oh, has you got a cup of tea? Yeah, Starbucks, yeah. <laughs> uh, business good? Yeah, it's a bit slow at the moment. It picks up later this evening, does it really? <laughs> yeah. Good. And, uh, I said, I, I said to him, I've got so... So my, my news resolution is being like a little fascist when it comes to business. And, and I said, uh, uh, also future reference, um, um, no, no crack dens and no wild animals in the porch. <laughs> and, uh, I, I just can't believe it. There's always something wrong. We went to one, right? It got there, right? And, uh, a woman said, oh, I'm new here. She didn't, she didn't, have, she didn't know what keys she was using. And she went, it's the third floor. And uh, she went, there's no point. We won't both get in the lift. I went, right. Will you get a desk in the lift? <laughs> Right, she went, I've got a chair in the lift before. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. just find me an office, Rathbone Place, sort of Percy Street, Charlotte Street, Dean Street. Yeah. Yeah. First or second I'm floor. I'm worried we're gonna get emails from estate agents, phone calls from them. You know what those people are like. But I don't look at the emails. True. <laughs> Fair enough. So, play Fair record. Enough. Sexist. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 not in the charts anymore. I can't, I can't believe it. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, you were talking about renting an office. I'm a little bit intimidated because I'm just at the moment thinking about trying to buy a flat or something because sure. I'm just tired of pissing money down the drain. If I, I know. Yeah. And um, uh, but I'm just I'm really petrified. I've put it off and put it off because I just I'm really gullible. 
I'm just, when I'm in, confronted with anyone in a suit who sort of knows what they're talking about, they can sell me anything, I'm intimidated, it's like, you know, you're supposed to go in there, you're supposed to sort of act like you're the guy with the money, you're the, this is what I want, this is what I want, no, no, no. But I go in there and it's like I'm afraid they're gonna say, clear off, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sell you out, I'm not yeah. interested. Have you, ever, have you ever thought of like, really putting on sort of like some sort of cool air? Like, uh, <laughs> sort of like kicking the door and going, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like, just, you'd be found out in 30 seconds, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you? Exactly. You'd go in there, you'd stub your toe, and they go, what are you kicking like, I'm putting your toe, I'm putting your toe. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Brilliant. Just tapping yeah. the walls. Yeah, tapping the wall. What's the, uh, what's the rates on? What rates? I don't know. <laughs> well, this is, do you remember, I don't know if I told you before, I went, I wanted to buy a laptop computer. Yeah. And everyone said, uh, go up Tottenham Court Road. And I was reading, like, magazines and stuff, they were saying, haggle, make sure you haggle, make sure you got, you're planning to haggle, get the best deal you can. And I found a, a shop which was selling the computer I wanted, and I went in there, and I had this whole plan in my mind of what was gonna happen. He was gonna say, like, it's worth this, I'm gonna go, yeah. well, look, I can get it cheaper here, I wanna buy it from you, I'm gonna haggle, da -da. and off I went. So I went in the shop, and uh, I said, yeah, looking for this, uh, interest in this Toshiba. How much is it? He went, oh, it's 1500 quid. I went, sure, sure. Okay. I said, I'll give you 1300. <laughs> he went, it's 1500. And I said, sure, but I'm willing to give you 1300. He went, 1500. And I was, I was done already <laughs> because he hadn't even begun to haggle. <laughs> well, I was assuming he'd at least go 1400 and we could start, but nothing. So now yeah. I was screwed. My whole plan went out the window. Yeah. What did you do? Just leave? No, I said to him, I said, the thing is, I can get this computer cheaper down the road, but, you know, I like what you're providing here. I like your service. Uh, I've had good, 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 good stuff about you. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I said, I've heard good stuff about you. And he went, I said, uh, seriously, I can walk down the street. I can buy it there for cheap, for like 1400. And he went, well, I'll see you later then. And I was like, right. <laughs> so I, I walked out the place. I said, well, I'm gonna have to leave then. And I walked out the place, and, um, of course I wanted to get it from there, because it was still the cheapest, so I had to walk back in again. I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I've, um, I just had some second thoughts. Listen, I'll tell you what, I'll pay the 1500 can I get a free carry case? He went, the carry case is free anyway. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Carry case is free. Anyway. Nothing. No, but how much would you charge for that if it was on sale? <laughs> carry case a tenner. Well, let's just say it is a tenner. Give it to me for free. And he went, no, it's a tenner. And you went, well, you said it was free a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just pathetic. Yeah, that is lovely. For it's for having to walk out, making a big statement, and then come back in again. Oh. Oh and, um, dear. So I just, I'm really scared. I just, I feel like I need someone to come with me and do all the talking. You know, know what they're talking about. Because I don't, I'm not going to be able to tell if, they're, they're, if there's subsidence or if there's damp or... No, you don't do that. Don't I? Is that not my responsibility? No, you get a survey done. Sure. And exactly, they charge for that and then the... Yeah, you don't, you don't have to go around doing it yourself. Right. I so... could, could I make a statement if I did it myself? <laughs> yeah, this should be alright. Yeah. There's a hole in the wall, Steve. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what's a hole in the wall? <laughs> put some newspaper in that. Chaucer's day, that was the toilet. <laughs> That'd be fine. Carl, <laughs> you're a second time buyer, aren't you? But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought one in Manchester. Uh, <laughs> lost seven grand on that one. <laughs> Well, don't buy in Manchester. No, it's a good flat. It's just it wasn't. I, I didn't buy it to sort of make money. I thought I was going to be living there like all my life, and then a job came up here, and it was like, oh. You bought your first flat in Manchester. You assumed you would be living there for the rest of your life. Well, I wasn't in a rush. Get a record. You're an idiot. Hang on a minute. I, so, have you got a property portfolio? Have you got the two houses, Nick? No, oh, I've got rid of that one. Oh, you sold that one. Got this yeah, flat. Seven thousand pounds. Got this flat. I'll tell you something that is interesting. Hold on, though. What? Um, seven thousand pound lost. Yeah. It's it flat in Manchester, but it could only cost about eight grand anyway. <laughs> right, Steve, something you, they, they do now, right, they've got to do by law when you're buying, right? I was looking at one in London, right? Um, it's haunted. They've got to tell you now. Right. Don't talk shit. I'm Goodness telling you now. Record. I'm telling you now. Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as ghosts. That if that that is ridiculous if that appears on a, a legal document. That right. If there's ridiculous. anyone who sells flats and that does that for a living. Yeah. Right. Email in because yeah. I'm telling you now that that is a fact. She sort of dropped it in. She said, "I said, oh, you know, nice, nice feel here." And she said, "Yeah, well, that will be the uh, the ghost. Just dropped it in. That's all we've got to do." And then I was like, "What?" And I went, oh, yeah. That's what I've got to do, is it? So that's the legal thing. So you <laughs> drop it in. So in court, you go, did you drop it in? Yeah, I dropped it in. Play a record. You're an idiot. <laughs> This year's love, if you're in love. I hope it lasts. It's only January. <laughs> uh, what you got? What you got for us? I just Steve? thought we ought to maybe go through some of the emails. I mean, I don't want to query the caliber of some of the emails we get sent on this show, but um, here's a typical one, Rick. Go on. Um, there's no name. It's just from Glicko. That's his email address. That's uh, just a question to you, Rick. Did I see you walking around Marlebone High Street last Sunday? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, I, mean, I, I was in Marlborough High Street last Sunday, yeah. Yeah, but uh, did you see Glicko? I didn't see Glicks. Okay. I didn't see the Glickster. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Alright, this is one from M. 
Ricky, what do you think of Richard Bacon's show? I can't decide if he's better than you. Uh, nor can I. Any thoughts? Nor can I. I can't help her out on that one. Sure. That really, that's a really personal thing. She's got to dig deep. She's got to look at both of us. She's got to find out what she likes. Yeah. And then whether I provide more of that than <laughs> Baker's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Baker Foyle's brilliant. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to put myself up against him, so uh, I can't help you. Next, Steve, next. Well, there was, what, there was a lot of emails <coughs> last week uh, which were saying how much they enjoyed the Christmas specials. Thank you very much for that. That's very flattering of you. There was also a couple. <laughs> There was one that it was a guy, I'm sorry that I've, I think I might have deleted it, but oh, I should have sent a, a reply because there was a guy from Canada saying, if there are any chance you're around in March, whether you could pop in and have a surprise birthday dinner for his wife. Oh, God, why do you keep that? <laughs> I well, I can't, that. I can't, I can't, I can't, how can I, you idiot? <laughs> okay. So, um, I, I, you know, I don't, um, I really apologise for that. Yeah. Um, this is from Anne Marie. She says that she loves the podcast, she listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, it'll probably grow up all right. But there are some mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah, driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test, testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. Yeah, but, but, what that I mean is, but what I mean is, there's, there's certain things that... I, I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who, when it was born, right, we kind of thought, it's got no chance, this kid, because its man was, was a bit of a rumman. Um, you know, a woman, the, where, where's that? No, just, just like, you know, she like going out and having a fag and like having a drink and she's never at home. It's the one who had the, the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. <laughs> sure. It's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but, uh, she had a kid and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good looking kid. Yeah. Which was a surprise because like, you know, the man wasn't that good looking, the dad was a bit rough. But, mm. it, it came out. And she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, look at this I've had. And <laughs> she, was, she was chuffed with it, because it's probably like one of the newest things she's ever had, because everything else was always sort of second, second down or what have yeah. you. But suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went. <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> <laughs> it, looked, it looked rough already, right? And... All that, that just happened because that's, that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it used to, it had, like, a patchy head. Um, it's hair. It, it what? It had a patchy head? A patchy head. It's just sort of, uh, sort it wasn't, of it, it, it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean, a uh, patchy head? Just, just his hair was patchy. He used to chase, sort of, cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars, <laughs> sorry! <laughs> what, what do you mean? It just, that's what he did for his... Sorry, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is that, at the end of the day, what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what, what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay, right. Did well, you? that time when I was in, in <coughs> Wales and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that, yeah. and I just picked up a big rock, right, chucked it off the edge, and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed a fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by, like, inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or, like, off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons, yeah. isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And, like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. <laughs> that's a little mantra. Right? <laughs> right. You okay. live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> Great. There's the advice for you, Anne Marie. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven month old baby roam about. <laughs> Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend, of how long? Uh, ages. 
Yeah. Um, and they just, they, they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. It's philosophy, isn't it? It's, yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Because um, there's a, I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um, it's something about everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent. And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there. And that I like the Chinese. There's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. Why, well, why is, well, that's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but <laughs> I heard it was too many cooks. Well, it was all, it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is, um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean, it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let, you let 12 people in the room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised. Whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> Well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because <laughs> that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I, this is, it? I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what, what they're doing. They were good years ago, in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. Well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them, okay? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like the camel, you'd go lose the arm. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um. And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this. Getting in a jar is, is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says... Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. No, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones, but I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've, you've said... You've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? Oh, God, I love it. You can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution, making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe. Um, what what are they adding to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world. No, but, is I, thought, it? but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot. The, the, the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like. Do you it's, think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? There's I'm a just lot saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you you do, you get it down to like eight animals that represented all of them. So okay, who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, I mm. would have gone like, hang on a minute. With, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown <laughs> and have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. to be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe with Noah management. as well? You, well believe, you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to, to engage two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's, it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Um, right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. Oh, Jim! See that monkey! <laughs> there was this um, airline, and um, 
It's having a lot of problems and, and a what, lot of pilots too tall. Yeah, the cabin was so tiny. Only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because um, I don't know what it was about. It was over money or whatever. Yes. And the well, get get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but but well, but what else could you pay something in? Well, Rick, I mean, peanuts. Peanuts. So, Turkey, peanuts or fruit. Yeah. So anyway, the the boss of the airline, the, oh. he had like one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. <laughs> but the problem is with a lot of these planes, mm. you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he's like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't. There's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. Is as, it, as, a, he runs an airline? He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads. But the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that oh, he's struggling here. We but how can they... Well, just, just close it down. No, anyway, well, you can't do that, no, Rick. Of course you can't. It's costing them a fortune just, if he closes it down. Yeah, yeah, but what, one plane's not going to make a difference in an airline, is it? No, 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 it's no. all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. So, the son... He's mm. flying the planes and that. He's getting worried for his dad because of his business. It's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't though. worry about it. We've found someone who you can work with. He said he's staying over near the sort of quarantine area where oh. all the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right. Okay. They won't be looking in there. They won't no. bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, but there's no animal you. that could be a co-pilot. That's why. I'll see you. Uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Like, he'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah. Sure. So anyway... He gets in there, he meets them. At first, a little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with, but Why? he's thinking, as long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep with a one job. plane. Everyone's it's... happy. Then one day, mm. what happens is a little bit of a, a, bit of a problem. Oh, uh, dear. Well, what well, happened is uh, one woman who was on the, on the plane got a bit peckish. Right. right. And said, uh, said to the air hostess woman, said, I'm a little bit peckish. Have you got any sort of nibbles and that? She went, uh, no, I've got, got a sandwich. She said, I don't really want a sandwich. You want some, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like nuts. a bag of nuts or something. Well, nuts, are, yeah. are they not giving those out yet? So, no, they don't give it for some reason. She was like, look, we've, <laughs> we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich. Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, I don't want a sandwich. Yeah. I just want some nuts. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. A sandwich is quite a big meal. Or whatever. I just yeah. want some nibbles. Want some nuts. Well, that's not, not available. So Done. I can't, End of story. Can't so she said, well, you're saying there aren't any nuts. She yeah. said, but earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit. Right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilot's getting Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So, Let's go home. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. You can't have eaten we them can't. yet. I want you, you can't go. No, no. I know this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen. Yeah. I'm going to go over because no, I feel no, like I'm being lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, so no, and, no and the way. pilot can well, hear all this get in anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door. Yeah. Right? She gets a glance in. Yeah. The monkey's out there with headphones. Fucking <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> White Stripes, fell in love with a girl, XFM 104.9. Five past one, of a Saturday. That's what DJs say. Of a Saturday, yeah. Yeah, of yeah. Of a Saturday. <laughs> fast approaching. Yeah, time fast approaching ten past one. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean it's fast approaching? What's it speeding up, is it? <laughs> time speeding up as it gets towards ten past two. Shut <laughs> up. Ricky Gervais, obviously. With him, Steve Merchant. Yeah, and Carl Pilkinson. Let's not forget Carl P, Carl P the K-Man. He's, pe he's growing on people, people now. Love him. People love people him. People were thinking, oh, God, oh, he's, he's too much. Now they're going, they love him. Like, same as you. I mean, they oh, they still think you talk a little bit too much, but I mean, they love Carl. <laughs> and, you know, but, uh, I shouldn't say that because it, it, you know, it'll rock your confidence. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 No, no, I am a man of nerves. In Sorry, I'm sidetracked here because I'm looking on the internet here, on the website for XFM. Yeah. Because I was, well, partly bored, but also I was looking on the other day. Nothing I said, though, was it? No, no, no. no right. No. And, uh, there were some people, uh, commenting on the show. Yeah. And one person on there, I'm trying to find it, I don't want to misquote them, but yeah. basically, as far as I remember, they said that, uh, we knew even less about the music than the DJs that are on in the week. Right. That's... I think that is scientifically impossible. Yeah. So they've embarrassed themselves. Exactly. I think, I, I think it's impossible. You can't know less than the people that are on I, I don't the week. think so. It's, like, uh, it's just... I it's mean, like, like... It's I, not going to multiply zero. You yeah. just end up with zero. It yeah. doesn't make sense. I checked with Steve Taylor, the man with the knowledge. Mm. Um, he should know. But I later. pretty, I don't think that, that's really annoying. But it's so annoying because I tell you this, we are passionate about the music and we do know what we're talking about. Yeah. Just because we don't read the back of the CD box. No. Like, I'm playing the account. list we're given with the, the nine CDs that are on the playlist every month. There's a piece of paper here. The car's looking at me like he's thinking, oh no, we're having a go. You've given away the magic <laughs> of the <laughs> You get pieces of paper here and they've got little bits of details. So, for instance, White Stripes, this is the next single off White Blood Cells, February 2002. Now, it sounds like we know about the music. We yeah. We that off a piece of paper. Exactly. Whereas, 
when we say about music and we're wrong, at least we, it's because we didn't know. Exactly. See? Look at the All Stars. The All the All. So, can I just, I don't, don't want to criticise there, but if I was listening and I'd enjoyed that track and I yeah. wanted to know what it was, I wouldn't have understood what you just said. Really? Could you just say that again? Low Fidelity All Stars. Yeah, Low Fidelity, because you went, Low Fidelity All Stars. I was doing all D- I was doing me DJ. Talk, no, it's just I? you didn't know both I can't be should. bothered. No, sure. It's, uh, it takes you. Look at that. Listen to him crinchling his little crinchling. <laughs> Crinch, you're not crinchling. You're not crinchling your jaffa cakes, are you? He wasn't going out on air. No one knew. Yeah. I bet you're one of those people in cinemas that think you're being really quiet eating a bag of crisps, aren't you? Do you go to cinemas? Mm, I'm in for a bit, actually. What Tell do you do, Carl? <laughs> Carl! What's an entertaining evening for you? Yeah. What would you do to occupy your time? Uh, my... <laughs> your hobbies, for instance. <laughs> my... Might get a video out from prime time. Right. What, 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 would you enjoy that or would it just be a chore for you? No, no, I think <laughs> things like that... Would you really hate doing that? That's... that's when you really switch off and you forget all your problems and stuff. Well, you, you haven't got any you problems. You haven't got any problems, Carl. You, you haven't don't know that. I put on a face when I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a mask. <laughs> you wear Are you crying inside? This Carl? is you being the happiest you can be. You're like a clown, aren't you? Oh, Do you it's... think I'm like a hard, miserable man? Because there was somebody else. I don't think you're hard. The other day, <laughs> and like I said to him, I can't watch the Elephant Man because it's oh. upset. <laughs> You're the best! You don't know you're doing it, you're no, the best. Can you watch it? Um, it, well... Always, when it gets that bit where they're carrying him through the village and, and messing about with his head. <laughs> <laughs> Would you know, my, this is true, my dad watched that once. I've never watched it, my mother and my sister and that were all quite moved by it, almost oh. it. was thinking it was a wonderful example of man's inhumanity to man and yeah, all that thing. Yeah. And my dad just went, wouldn't he make an amazing novelty rucksack? <laughs> And it cheapened the film for me, and I've never had this sort of Steve was thinking, he's not that ugly. Ooh. <laughs> Blimey, here we go, we were laughing at Carl! Can we focus on one person at a time, Rick, please? <laughs> Let's destroy him first. Oh, God. Tell him what you said to me when that record was playing about the Jaffa Cakes. He, handed, he bought some Jaffa Cakes, which was lovely, he went across the road and he handed out the Jaffa Cakes, and then I went, oh, thanks very much. And then what did you say? I just remember learning at school. <laughs> um, I'm not, like, making fun of, of the illness, because it's not funny. But, um, the cure cancer. Jaffa cakes cure cancer. Not not like fully. Right. <laughs> they just go some way to help him. Yeah. Do you know, um it'll, it'll sort of help. If if you've got it, you can't say, right, get me a load of Jaffa cakes. Right. But I think it sort of puts a bit of a stop to it if you haven't got it. Do you know what I mean? It's like having vitamin tablets. Is this medically proven? Should we get Dr. Fox down here to confirm that? <laughs> I, can't, I can't I actually can't cope. You are just play a record. Play a record. Can I just if anyone has ever survived cancer thanks to Jack Cakes, please call him. No, but I didn't say he that. He said and then he went, it's the orange thing in it. And then he read he tried to read it. He said, I wonder if it's and he tried to read out this scientific name. I'm gonna say this. That's my favourite one I've ever done. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, uh, really, good. really good. Mm. Yeah, because I always had a problem with Gomez before because it always sounded like they were trying to sound like these world-weary Tom Waits style gravelly voice. And they were twenty. And they were like fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that that's great. That's really good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, it's well done, boys. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gives you a face. Gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Can I play an Elvis Costello track? You know, I'd love to bloody hear some Elvis Costello. Can we say that? Well, you know why? Because we met him and he's a lovely man. We did meet him. Yeah. And uh, I just wish him to show off. I remembered all the. Great Great songs he's ever done. I didn't like his spoken word much too, you know, too mm, much. Mm. And uh, some of his later projects I thought were a little bit. But his own songs from you know 1978 to about 1980, I thought were great. Well, why did we meet him? I can't <laughs> just remember why we met him, Rick. Oh, can't I, just I wasn't. Remember. Well, I wasn't doing that. No, I, I can't remember. We won an award. Was it because we won another bloody award? <laughs> Oh, give us awards, please. Oh, God. Oh, oh I've got enough dear. room in my house. Oh, dear. We've only got two. Yeah, we just And we haven't two. got one of those. The one was the BBC, so he's got a lot of room in his house. And I've got the other one, he let me have it, so he's got no award in his house at all. Can I, um. <laughs> you can borrow it. Can I. I don't know, if you, I don't know who you're talking to. Someone. I spoke to Richard Wilson from uh, One Foot in the Grave. I, I spoke to him. Yeah, but he's a lovely bloke. He's a nice guy, but he said to me, uh, he said, uh, could, you, could, could I uh, do a cameo in the office for £40,000? <laughs> and I went, could, like, Ricky do, like, an amusing pratfall or something? And then you just come in as a cleaner and go, I don't believe it. And he looks at me like, like, 
Why have you said that? Why have oh, you brought no. that? It was, I felt so guilty. Oh no! I, was, I, was so, I so wanted to apologise. But why is it? This, uh, we know it's wrong. To I do don't that. know why I said it. We, I don't we know. know why do, I said do, it. Do, we, do we think? No, it's different for me. Exactly. I'm we're a, in the business. I, I do a new twist on. Yeah. I don't believe it, and you go. You know, that's the best. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> it. it twist I I've heard. ever heard. I don't know what I was oh. thinking. Why did you? Oh, so, you didn't tell me that. I know. I felt ashamed. I felt really oh, ashamed. Oh no! I was a little bit drunk. I wasn't thinking straight. Oh, it was so no. embarrassing. I was talking to a friend of mine who said, uh, who was it? Come on, was it? He said that he was watching a new, it was, um, it was a sports cast, which it may have been, uh, um, Formula One racing or something like that. And he was always, and there was a commentator, and he's, you know, the commentators have got to keep talking all the time. Yeah. And he was going, there's, and there's, 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 yeah, there's the, uh, team there. Oh, it's good to see so and so's girlfriend in the audience. And uh, he said he saw, and it cut to Richard Wilson in the audience, and he went, and the bloke went, and there's one foot in the grave. <laughs> I knew he had to say them, but he couldn't oh. just name all the characters. Oh, that's fantastic! And there's one foot in the <laughs> Oh, dear. That'd be brilliant. And there's the office. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what you're you're putting us alongside one foot in the grave thing that's been going like ten years and one of those. What you're you're putting us alongside it beat us, Steve. Get over it. It <laughs> beat us in the comedy awards. No, I was just saying that you're an identifiable face if you're at a Formula One event. You okay. know, old. <laughs> Grumpy. One foot in the grave. Yeah, one foot in the grave, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, any thoughts before we move on? On anything we've said so far? Elvis Costello. Well, I'd like to play, um, Red Shoes. Are we ready yeah, for- Not yet, I'm just saying. What? Do you what? know who his dad is? Declus McManus. No, Declus Mc- I don't know his real Declan name. Declan McManus. He was a big band leader in the 50s or something, wasn't he? No, he was in the, uh, White's Lemonade ad. Yeah. Oh! Was he? Oh, oh no, okay. it's so much, there's so much to do with that. Good, so we're catering there to the, uh, audience listening who are 50 and above. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, and I'm the target audience. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Ah, oh, White's, ah, White's lemonade. You must remember that. Never heard that. Oh, those, those chimps that drink tea. Oh. Once, right, in school, um, we had a French dictionary, and you know, um, ice cold co co coke on the back of my throat. Singing hello summertime, it's the real thing. Remember that? No. Oh, you were there. Uh, we translated that into French. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of that story? Yeah. That's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. But I know it in French. Do it. But it doesn't make sense. We just literally did the word. Go on. Let the me word, word. I can't believe you it, remember it. It's tres fois, coke, sur le derrière, a mon gosh, chante, bonjour, estimel, jump, celebrate. That's the only French you know, isn't it? <laughs> it's not even French. We just did it word for word. It doesn't make any sense. Can you say another word of French? Le, can you quote Le Plume de Matin? Can you, can you, can you, can you quote friend. anything else? Is there anything else you can quote other than that? Is there anything else you learned at school that you can remember word for word? No? Nothing. Le chat est sur le mur. I don't just mean French, I mean anything. English, maybe some, a, a bit what of poetry mean? that you can remember? Of course I can, yeah. Go on, quote a bit of poetry for me. Um, like what? Don't whatever you remember. Like through on the window breaks, it is the East and Juliet is the sun, the rise for sun and kill the envious moon, it was really sick as well. Anyway. Well, what, what do you want? Doesn't really count. What? Shakespeare doesn't count? No, because that's the right- everyone knows that one. Oh, going what then? What should I know? The Wind Hover by Gerald Manley Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't do that one. I caught this morning's morning minion kingdom of daylight still thinking about Wonder Woman Falcon and his riding of the Hulk. Oh, no, no, no. We haven't done Carl yet. Wait a minute, K-Man. Anything you can remember from school that you learned that you had to maybe, uh, memorize? French. French. Not necessarily French, you could be <laughs> Anything, <laughs> anything you can remember. This can be anything you remember from school, <laughs> apart from the orange stuff stops cancer. Yeah. <laughs> It's not the cough that carries you off, it's the coffin <laughs> that carry you off in. <laughs> we no, number one Chinaman. We, uh, do you know what, we're gonna be honest here, we, we know so little about China. <laughs> it's true. We know so little about China, <laughs> yeah. it's embarrassing. But if you've got any interesting facts about China, then uh, email yeah. in ricky, ricky at xfm.co.uk. Also, I imagine, the email address to use if you're gonna take part in this week's Rockbusters. I did read an interesting fact, um, I'm researching, I'm doing a show called Politics and I was researching yeah. and there's a thing about, um, uh, what, sweatshops. Yeah, no, 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 sweatshops, um, uh, l like, uh, Nike, uh, there's these facts, right? And, um, uh, th these, these people get, like, you know, a few cents an hour and the CEO, I forget his name, um, to, to, for a, a Chinese woman to earn his 5.2 billion, She'd have to work um, eight hours a day, seven days a week for ten thousand years. <laughs> but Steve, they don't. They don't. They don't. They. They obviously don't want to. Exactly. I don't want to. They don't want to. Lazy. Lazy. Rick. <laughs>
Ian Jury and the Blockheads, hit me with your rhythm stick. Rick, are you likely to be going to, uh, Cumbria on your, um, stand-up tour? Uh, almost certainly not. Why? Well, it's just because you might want to visit the Cumberland Pencil Museum. <laughs> Um, that's the journey through the history of pencil making. I do like pencils. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just used one then. <laughs> oh, so, uh, uh, Do you have yeah. any idea how that was made? Uh, no, was it? Let me email them. <laughs> um, now, Chinese people. Oh, incidentally, it's the premiere of, uh, China. The premiere. Uh, premiere. Premier. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah. But, uh, last, when you were away, um, Carl, we worked out if, um, um, if there's one in ten people are sort of like gay in some way, uh, with a billion Chinese people, there's a hundred thousand little, uh, um, little gay lesbian Chinese fellas of some sort. What do you think of that? What do you mean? Well, if, I think so, so it's some sort of form of, uh, um, gayosity, whatever it's called, uh, is sort of like one in ten, right? One in ten people are gay, apparently. That's... Right. That does seem a bit high, though, doesn't it? I thought it was- I thought it was lower than that. What? You mean more than that? Yeah. I don't think so. I, and I think that's of any sort of nature, anything. Well, what time did they do the survey on the streets as well? <laughs> Cause you know they go out late, so if- if they're doing the survey sort of around lunchtime, forget it, they're not gonna get any. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're all asleep. But if they're out at, say, one in the morning... Wow. Well, it's gonna be higher, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know Carl's favourite song, The Killing of Georgie? Mm. A little fellow, a little gay fellow goes out and, uh, he gets, um, beaten up and that. Carl went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been going out at a decent time? True. But clearly in the lyric, it says, Georgie left the theatre before the final curtain fell. Yeah. Now, theatre's finished about half ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even to give him half hour, I reckon it was only about eleven o'clock. So, you're talking rubbish there. Are you sure that wasn't his curtains in his flat and his clothes in them before he goes out? No, he was at the theatre. But I'll tell you what, I just realised something. Maybe where most people were going home after theatre, he was just going out. Exactly. That theatre to him is like a matinee. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. He's off out clubbing, isn't he? <laughs> he's off down, he's gonna get some ammo, he's yeah. gonna get a couple of butt plugs, yeah. and he's gonna- he's not even gonna start dancing till yeah. midnight, is he? Have, have any of us ever met any gay people? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, our view of them <laughs> is- I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, email in if you've met a gay person. Yeah, yeah, Tell us yeah. where we, uh, where we're going wrong. Yeah. Have you ever met a gay person? I mean, the way we talk about these, it's like, yeah. have we ever met Chinese people? Uh... I've seen them. I've seen them out there, wandering the streets, but I don't think I've ever had a No, it, no, here's the irony. I definitely know and have met more little gay fellas than little Chinese fellas. Yeah. Have you ever had any little Chinese friends? There was a- no, there was a girl at school who was Chinese, but she was kind of inscrutable. I couldn't really- couldn't get close to her, she was sort of mysterious. Right. Rockbusters? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> right then, this is where I, uh, give you a little cryptic clue. And some initials, and it sort of makes up a band or an artist mm. and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. Sort of being the operative phrase, I Yeah. Uh, Let's see how we read this clue. Yeah. This is gonna sound like Oscar Wilde. <laughs> clue right. number one. Three different clues. Clue Oscar Wilde's Chinese, apparently. Was uh, it? Yeah, it was illegal then. Right. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Sorry? Right? Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Are we back on the gay thing or is this- This, this is, is the clue? Uh, that's the clue. Right. Clue for Rockbusters number one. Will you just leave the entrance to my garden alone, will you? Right, that doesn't count because I know what it is. And what was- sorry, what were the initials? What are the initials? GG. Correct. Yeah, right, but you've got to pronounce the artist correctly. I'll pronounce the artist. Because I know what it is. Don't ruin it. No, no, no when, when the answer comes, I'll pronounce the artist. Right, can we just focus, please, on the quiz? Go. What was the clue again? Give it again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Not messing with it, right? GG. G -G. Okay. Right? Next. Doesn't count. Next. Incorrect. Uh, don't phone, but you can send a message on my mobile if you want, right? That's yeah. T. It's another little, little easy one. And, uh, the last one. We were sharing out the mail sheet. Right, that doesn't count either. Can we, we just fuck I, I know what that is. I know what that is. I don't care, we'll come to that later. Yeah. And number three, <laughs> we were sharing out the mail sheet, and I think I got the best one. Right? DG. DG. Yeah. So quickly again, will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Yeah. It's not messing about with it. Yeah. Right? GG. Yeah. Don't phone, but you can send us a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That was T. <laughs> and the last one, 
was sharing out the male sheep, and I got the best ones, so that's good. Right? <laughs> DG. <laughs> All right, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Have we got any prizes? Uh, do you want to have a look? Well, don't worry about it. Just oh, this is Don't pathetic. worry about it. Have we got any prizes? Just, uh, look, the yeah, clues fine. are rubbish, the clues don't work, the show, it's, I mean, this is pathetic. Play a record. That's what it should be called, and the clues don't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the first one, uh, will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Right? That was the cryptic clue. The initials were GG. Yeah. That was Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth Gareth. I was, what, what Gareth. Gareth Gates. No, 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 right? no, but it's Gareth Gates, isn't it? So, why would you say to someone Gareth? Is that like a, what's that, a Manchester well, thing when you say Gareth? Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth Gareth Gates, Gates. the bloke, yeah. the bloke who came second in Popeye, but yeah, Gareth Gates. So that's the first what one. What was that about getting off the thing, though? Get, leave my, leave my entrance alone, though. I don't understand what it's got to do with leaving my entrance alone. The, the gate to the garden. Well, no, not Gates bit, but what's Gareth got to the do with it, you was, ignorant. Don't, don't phone, but you can send me a message on, yeah. uh, on my mobile if you want. Yeah. The initial was T. Yeah. Texas, right? Just. No, it's text. The word's text. Yeah, te so you'd have to say text, uh, me. Texas. Text, what do you mean? No, text me. What's that? The third one was, uh, we were sharing out the, uh, the male sheep and that, right? Yeah. Uh, I got, I got the best one. PG, right? We were sharing out the male sheep. Get to it! It one. doesn't work anyway. Get to PG. it. What is it? Delta good ram. <laughs> Delta <laughs> good ram. You were Delta good ram. Blur, out of time on XFM. Well, we're not out of time, we've still got an hour left, boys. <laughs> hey! Luckily. Brilliant. A lot of uh, emails, obviously, about the Chinese, people f as fascinated as we are. I don't want to discuss it, you know, interminably, Rick, because there's so much to say and we've said most of it in the past. Yeah. Get a couple of emails. In fact, I think, Carl, you told us this information. Remind me of it again. If all the Chinese people in the world were- We're in a line on that, because there's loads of them, you'd never get to the end of it. Right. No, it's not that. It is it's, not. No, if all the Chinese people formed a line and started walking out of China, you'd never get to the end of it. That's what I just said. No, it's because though, um, th yeah, but th that, that's, but they'd, that's... Be, they'd be having babies, um, you know what I mean? Still, it'd be adding to it all the time, wouldn't you? But would they be, would they be walking and shagging <laughs> and <laughs> having babies as they're walking out? Yeah, that's, that is, yeah. That's I'd love to see someone organise that. Maybe the record breakers team. I tell you what, I'd love to see Ross McWhirter or Norris, whoever's- who is it? Who's the one that's alive? I forget, Norris, I think. Norris, right. I'd love to see him uh, to coordinate that. Yeah. A 1.2 billion little Chinese fellas. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And where are they walking out of China? Which exit are they taking? They're taking the- Through uh, Tibet? Or? I think it's the- I, I think it's the- uh, Gate 9 Slip Road, the M43, <laughs> right. to St. Petersburg, right? right? And they go, and walking, <laughs> and shagging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because some presumably are dying as they're leaving. No, but they live to 120. That's true. So, so they cling. So, yeah, well, we know Carl's theory on that. Do you yeah. want to just tell new listeners your theory about uh, when, these, th when all these Chinese people get the records for oldest people in the world? Come on, what's your theory, Carl? Leave it. Carl, just, what? Just that they're probably lying. Why? Because. A lot of them don't age that well. Some of them do. A lot of them don't, and yeah. they always look older than they are. <laughs> I read the other day, right? Do you know the one who was the oldest woman in the world, mm -hmm. right? Chinese woman, right? Yeah. Um, the way she did it, it <laughs> was. <laughs> she didn't die. That was a, that was a secret. Yeah. What she did, she got up every day and didn't die. No, no, she uh, <laughs> she was like <laughs> awake and that, and then she'd have two days just sleeping. Right. So she wasn't really that old. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she'd only sort of lived half of her life in a way. Well, we so all live two off. thirds of our life, don't we? No, but we she she was like awake and that, and then she'd go, oh, I'm out of bed, and then that'd be it for two days. Um, remember we were talking a while back about the uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actors Studio. Oh, yeah. Where the host, James Lipton, always asks a ser the same questions to every guest. And it's just supposed to sort of, you know, get their creative, you know, juices flowing, their mind working. We we did ask Carl some of them, we, we never completed the questionnaire. Oh, let's carry on fire a few more at him. And that'll also uh, introduce some um, people to the way his mind works mm. a little bit. Okay. What sound or noise do you love, Carl? Um. There isn't really one that, that I love. Nice noises, yeah. like the ones you get, like I like going in the park, right? And you go, oh, that's nice, isn't it? And you get like <laughs> bird noises and stuff. But with those bird noises comes a bit of stress, right? Because I was in there the other day and uh, 
like like I say, little bird noises and that, and a little robin was there, and I thought that's odd, that's out early, right? Because it's like sort of summertime and that. Sure. And then I thought, oh, that's nice, and I was watching it, and then it got like a little worm, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Sorry, whoa, what do you mean? Because Why are you interfering? Why were you interfering in nature with a with a robin taking a worm? Just because it, it it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought. You see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, because it's chucking it down, it's miserable. They come to the top of the soil then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable. But it was a sunny day. Unless they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they, they hear the water or something falling on the ground and they go up to see what's happening. <laughs> what? No, no way, but why do they come up when they think it's raining? You're a worm, OK? It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you're just kind of... You're down there, you can't see anything, it's dark anyway. Yeah. So, the, the rain's coming down on the land, the worm goes, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the worm goes, what's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So what does he do? So it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining, and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's, that's what I'm saying about... What do you mean? What do you... What is... Sorry... What is this world where it goes, oh, it's just rain again? Oh, so that's, that's the 400th time I've been caught out this year. It's rain. I'll remember next time. I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically uh, uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns. That's, a, that's all it is, really. Yeah, and... and it's and not thinking. It's not choosing its favourite food. You don't know that, though. Is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. No, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the thinking. There's something in this room that's not. All right. What about <laughs> this one then? What about um, what about flowers? Do you think they've got a a mind, a, a feeling? Because here's here's something that again they they use phototropism. They go towards the sun. They 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 close and All right, open. Well, Can you stop grow. using long words, Rick? Like sun. Listen. <laughs> I was. Do you know I've been to my mum and dad's? Right. I was yeah. talking to my mum about stuff. All right. And she was saying how um, this flower uh, solved a crime. What happened was there was a murder yeah. right, in an office. So they said it's obvious that someone who works in the office did this murder because that person's only a sort of a typist. He has, you know, they've done nothing wrong. So they said that's narrowed it down, right? So this flower man came in and he said, I can sort this out for you. Mm. So they said, What do you mean? He said, Well, during the murder, the plant was knocked off the cabinet. Yeah. Right. right. Um, and he had some special wires that he can put on the, flower, yeah. on the flower, and it's sort of shaking and stuff. Because it, even though you can't see it, flowers pick up bad vibes and what have you. If you shake a plant, it doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. Right? So what happened was, uh, he said, right, what we'll do, we'll put the plant back on the shelf, yep. we'll water it, we'll calm it down, <laughs> Then get <laughs> a nice cup of tea. Then get every then, member of staff right, to come right. in the room yeah. and just go near the flower. Right. So don't tell them. So like a lineup for the flower. Kind yeah. of. Kind of like a lineup. Yeah, but sure. don't tell them what we're doing. Just send them yeah. in and say, stand by that cabinet where yeah. the murder will happen and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long day. They were getting through a lot of staff. It was a big office block. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were going, this isn't working. You know, the flower's not budging. Mm. Suddenly, they get into like the last part of the day when they were almost giving up. They call in a sketch artist. The pla the plant gives them a some some caretaker fella. Oh, um, caretaker. Yeah. Said go over there. Was it? You was know, it an old it? man that I mean? Because Scooby Doo didn't like him from the beginning. <laughs> no. They they send the caretaker over to the plant. He's going. You know, he's thinking I've got away with this. Of course. Yeah. Plant starts shaking. What have you? They did him. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute then. So was there any other evidence? <laughs> Uh, was that the only evidence they used in the trial? Well, no, it's one of them things, though. Imagine it, if you're that caretaker and you think, I've got away with this, then suddenly a plant grasses you up. You weren't expecting that. So suddenly you're <laughs> off guard. And you go, you go, OK, 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 can't get that chrysanthemum away from me, I did it. <laughs> you're talking absolute bollocks. That was one of the most nonsense pieces of shit I've ever heard but in anyway, my life. Listen, well, it happened, but... It didn't happen. Said it. But what I was saying is, about the worm, this robin that I saw that was eating the worm, it had hold of it, and I thought it said sunny day and that, give the worm a break sort of thing. So I went, oh, yeah, yeah, like that. And it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. And I just thought, oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it's a sunny day and everything. Normally birds are nice noises that I like. And yet there it is going about wrecking lives. <laughs> Lives. It was a no, worm. It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly in that. And I thought, I just thought, there's the worm. It, it came out. It was happy. It didn't know what was going on. 
and the it had an extra chance. The the robin dropped it, and then it got it again and hit it. And I just just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why? Don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. The word was going, oh God, Carl Pilkington. So that's that's who's been sent to save me. Is it God? You've sent Carl Pilkington. Oh, I'm dead. That's it. Okay, eat me. But all I'm saying is our bird noises are normally quite relaxing, but not for the worm. Unbelievable. That was one question. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a as a worm. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? Why would, I, why would we be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton. When he says, um, what noise do you hate? What, as me or a worm? No, well, but all I'm saying is because of my last question, that's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that, that go around that. So now you hate the sound of birds. <laughs> I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's so like it's like anything, isn't it? Every every noise can mean a disaster. Can it? Why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause? Why would that also signify disaster? If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing. No, if I, had a ba if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something, <laughs> yeah. and I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep, Yeah. and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> How is this there? I just think the baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky, going, <laughs> well, no, the... <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary, <laughs> thinking, oh, Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. Oh, God! A baby laughing! What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? This is you as you, not as you as a worm. <sighs> but have I had the training? Oh, for f Oh! No, well, I've said before, haven't I, about maybe having to go out an operation. <laughs> Why it leaps from where it leaps from no ambition, where if he could have a job, it would uh, his best job he's ever had is a paper round, and if he could have a job, he'd like go to the cobbler once a week and then walk a dog. To I'd like to have a go at thoracic surgery. No, I'm just saying. I bet it's uh, like we do this, and you know, some people like listening to it and what have you, and you go fair enough. But I never feel like I'm doing anything of any worth. No, you're absolutely right there. But if you're going into uh, uh, like an hospital, which are places that are pretty miserable anyway, as a, as an office space. Not only have you got to go in that building and work in it, but you've then got the pressure of changing a lung or whatever I've said before. Right? Changing a lung, yeah. But I'd like to have a go at it so I can say you've done it. I've done that. So uh, under what circumstances, in, in what world, do you think anyone's going to let you have a go at changing a lung and that? Um, Jim will fix it. No, I'm just saying the Comic way... Comic relief. But the way the world is, and the way that there's more and more people, more and more doctors are needed. I mean, it's already happening now that people are doing jobs that they're not really qualified for because they get, they get sort of, uh, what's the word? Sort of uppered too early. Uppered. <laughs> uppered! Uppered! I love the fact... It's basic language. It's like, it, I, I, it's unbelievable. Uppered. Do you know you what I mean? They, promoted. Yeah, promoted. Yeah. They, get, they get promoted. I prefer early. Uppered. Uppered's great. So, Why so, was I not Uppered? Unbelievable. So, do you know what I mean? I think because, because more and more people are knocking about, we need more and more doctors, yeah. you get a job in a doctor's, you're going to be promoted sooner now, I think. Yeah. Well, what I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd probably upper you, and then, um, what's the word? You go away them, you... I think it is, you go away them. You, you, you leave the door, you. You leave the door, you... Fire them. That's it, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'd, I'd upper you and go away the doctor, if anything. Uh, but I've been to, uh, You know how I don't like going to the doctors and stuff? Yeah. Right? Because um, you're always scared that they might investigate below the bridge. Yeah, but I checked on that before. I signed up to it, and then they said, right, before we can take you on as a patient, um, you've got to have a health check. Right, which I thought was odd, because it's almost like saying, if you're ill, you can't be having you come in here. Right? But I said, right, OK, fair enough, what, what is this health check? And they said, oh, you know, we'll just check your body out and make sure you're fit and healthy. And I thought, that isn't enough information. You know, I want to know if it's the old finger trick. <laughs> or, and, and I said, what, what do you mean, though? When you said health check, what do you do? And uh, she said, oh, it's just, I think she knew what I was getting at. And right. she said, oh, it's just the blood pressure... Uh, your eye, your eye, your weight. That's about it. So I went, went and had it and stuff. But you had to, before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor, they give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, 
<laughs> what do you want to give away? Right, like a donor. Mm. And what have you, and I thought, I, I was, I really thought about it for 40 minutes or so, I didn't just rush into it, I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff. But I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> oh, <dear>. <laughs> 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 How to ruin a song? Ricky Gervais. Do you want to explain what you were doing? Uh, I was just um, singing well, along to the backing just, vocal. You're not just singing along. Doing it like a mental. Well, just, just, just give us a pause. Well, I haven't got my headphones on. I've got to do it in time, haven't I now? Because wait, was it? Is it finished? It's, it's finished, finished now. It? And it was just going when Bowie, Bowie. when Bowie goes, goes satellite. I was going ah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. But you on, in room one one, you're going to put irritating people. <laughs> But it's so nice what I can do. Are you going to climb down that little thing and climb in yourself? <laughs> it's sort of, yeah, yeah, maybe. You know they have sort of a visual representation <laughs> of the thing that irritates them. They always have that, like Shakespeare, they would be a bust of Shakespeare's head. Just a bit yeah. of you. Yeah. Really? Oh dear. Ah. Uh, Barry in the background, satellite love song for the lovers. I, was, I should have, I should have liked something like on air. I love the idea of you when that came out. You know, sort of seventeen, got a girl back to your place. You know. <laughs> Just, just making out with her. <laughs> just that record's on in the background. You just go. Ow! <laughs> I do have to shoot off now. Right? Ow! Just hang me to it. I'm enjoying myself. Ow! <laughs> I'll finish myself off. Ow! <laughs> I'll finish. Oh dear! Oh, you can't do that. Oh, oh. we've cheapened that song. Oh. You, you've ruined that song forever for me. Though. No, I haven't. But it's sick. see the thing about Lou Reed is because Perfect Day, just yeah. a genius song. But we can never play it now, can we? Because of that BBC. Act. No, because I'll tell you what. What's her name coming in at the end? Um, M people. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, oh, I think she does it's with her voice. That song. There's oh. a couple of songs that have kind of like I always remember. Um, and who's that one that goes? Um, it's such a perfect day. Yeah, it's a bit of opera ponce. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's a song. Any other songs ruined because of their association with things? Um... That song, um, First Time, which was on the coke ad. First time, first love, duh. Yeah. Was, that, was, that, that was, on coke? was that, wasn't that Four Non Blondes? Yeah. That, that was, was Robin Givens, was Robin Givens, yeah. What was the, didn't Four Non Blondes do something like that? No, not I just time. keep seeing Four Non Blondes in the, in the playlist. I think I Four Non Blondes <laughs> just, they ruin their own career <laughs> by writing songs. Yeah. It's becoming a feature. Yeah, we should play Fallen on Blondes one week. Um, Rick, well, I was going to say something to you before Go we got sidetracked. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about, Carl? Oh, we were oh, talking no. about, um... We nearly lost it there a little bit, but I think we pulled it back. <laughs> it's okay, no, we had a fascinating fact that we were going to surprise Oh, yeah, with. if everyone in China, Carl... This is true, Carl. Right? Carl, wake up and listen. Listen, if everyone in China... <laughs> <laughs> it jumped. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be hard to coordinate. They did hands across America. They did up up yours, the laws, right? We can coordinate this. We can get the sun involved or something, right? Everyone, a billion, one point two billion or something, jumped up and down at the same time. Shut up. <laughs> well, you're not explaining this clearly. It would enough. cause a tidal wave that would destroy America. If every person in China jumped up at the same time, that would cause a tidal wave that would destroy America. Apparently, according to physics. <laughs> to I, don't, I don't believe it. It is no true, true. It's a fact. I'm not. We're not making this up. We, we both know this yeah. is a fact. We're not making it up. We've heard it, but yeah. obviously I don't know. I don't know what that's based on. Someone going, just had a terrible thought, <laughs> Mr. President. What is it? No, you know the atomic bomb and all that. Yeah, forget it. Forget it. If everyone in China jumped them down, they'd wipe us out. Right. You know what I mean? See, there should be some Chinese leader just threatening them with that. Yeah, just showing them a picture just of everyone pictures. just poised. <laughs> just, uh, just pictures of China people just crouching. On pogo sticks. <laughs> exactly. Just a, a billion or Chinese just, people. Just, just all stood on, on, on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> <laughs> that would be brilliant. Oh, See, dear. Carl, he's, he's dumbfounded. He's scared He's now. scared now, isn't he? But there's more chickens in the world than people. <laughs> Oh! Play record. Well, that's brilliant. What an amazing track. Incredible. For who? Don't, no one else is playing that on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, Rick. No. Are they? No, I wouldn't have thought so. That's, I mean that in a good way. I mean that like we're breaking new territory. Like it's playing the songs from the early it's the intro. got one the best... Oh no. I think Dr. Fox or Simon Bates said that about a track once. Really? But this has got to be the best intro <laughs> of a rock song ever. The fact that I was saying it about The Who and he was saying it about Money for Nothing yeah, is irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, Oh, no. Someone made me sit in their car once, uh, with their new car stereo system, uh, so that they could play me the beginning of Money for Nothing. Oh. Just sat there, I was like, yeah. Have we <laughs> got that? Crazy. You've probably got that in the library, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> is it right that Rod... Roger Daltrey in yeah, The Who. Yeah, 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 that's right. His kid is in EastEnders, the, the one who plays Robbie. 
Somebody, my mum told me, and I don't know if she's got it right or wrong. What, well, it does look like well, him. Well, Dean Gaffney. Gaffney. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't want to go off his dad's name and that, so... <laughs> he's changed So he it. used his brilliant talent. <laughs> <laughs> and his <laughs> ox face. <laughs> do, do you know if that's right, Mark? <laughs> I don't know. Because it but, looks like him, doesn't it? Well, I'm sure that's libelous if it's wrong. Oh, oh right, yeah, libelous. you'd be ashamed to have Roger Daltrey as your dad. Well, no, but Roger Daltrey might not want it getting round that he gave birth to Specky. Yeah, right, actually. That's what you mean. Specky? Spotty? Spotty, sorry, yeah. look at you. Yeah. All right, calm down. Well, I don't know, you've got a nice clear skin. At least I didn't call you see. Spotty Goggle-Eyed Freak Boy. You've got a nice skin, a nice complexion, smooth-faced Goggle-Eyed Freak Boy yeah, fish. thank you. Yeah. Let's be nice. Can't oh, what? Don't you like us arguing? Is it like mum and dad arguing? Do you get all- It's a bit like that. In the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> like there was nowhere to escape to. <laughs> oh no, rattling round. Did you make little... any friends when you were down on the caravan site? Yeah, a lot of people from Birmingham were there. What kind of uh, pals did you have? What were their names? Uh, the, the, I can't remember, it was years ago, but yeah. they all had rich parents. Right. Like, they had like their own car to drive around the campsite on and all that. Right. Yeah. So I their own fence. Them, so I'd have a with... And uh, uh, but they were mates and you saw them every year, did you? Or, or every three weeks when you went down there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you didn't keep in touch with any of them? Uh, no. I, I admit now, I went, I went to the same place in the caravan for about six years running. I went to a place called Riverside in Bognor, because mm. someone round the corner from us had a caravan, two birth caravan, me, my mum, and my nan. I think I'm really lucky to, <laughs> to, have, a, to have had it, really. Because a lot of mates who I had didn't have enough money to go on holiday and they'd just get a present for the summer holiday. I would like, I would just like, I, course, I, they've got I, an education, so I just want to Yeah, but Carl, the thing is with Carl is, right, I want to give him gifts. Yeah. I wanted to be have, a, have the loveliest Christmas ever. I wanted to go pony trekking. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to just- Scared of horses. <laughs> <laughs> so many things we don't know about, Carl. <laughs> fell off one out of fate, and uh, the woman didn't know what to do. She couldn't handle the horse. It was running off. I was hanging underneath, getting a kick in the head. Never really? Now, hang on. What age were you? <laughs> this could explain a lot. I was about six. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> oh, I think we got oh, to the bottom of it here. Oh, no. He got <laughs> kicked in the head by a horse, uh, lived in a caravan, and had to- Live in Wales half the time. Ah, oh. oh. then no wonder this is your favourite time of the week. Do you look forward to this all week? These two hours. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> it's what would nice. make you truly happy, Carl? Do you mind me just asking that? What would make you truly happy in life? I was thinking about it in the week, and I don't know. You don't know. There's I nothing that you particularly <laughs> want that you feel like once I've got that that. Well, you, the easy answer there is money, isn't it? But I don't no, know, it's not I true. Don't know if it's true. No, you know, you just need enough money. Do you feel spiritually uh, satisfied? Yeah. Yeah? Carl, have you embraced the good word of the Lord? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, well, well Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We're having a meeting tomorrow. It's in the church and we'd like you to come along. I went to a church. Rick, I've got to say this. I, <clears throat> I was with, I've got this, uh, this housemate who I don't know that well. And right. I've been living with him for about, uh, two, two months or something, right? Yeah. And he's in the kitchen, he's washing up. And I just turned to him, right, and he doesn't know me that well, because we, you know, we sort of talk to each other now, but we don't know. And I just turned to him, I went, Matt, have you got to know the good word of the Lord? And he went, and he looked at me with utter fear in his face. I just went, I just think we should sit down a bit and, you know, just talk about, you know, the word of the Gospels. And, just, and he just looked at me and he was absolutely petrified. And I just started laughing, cracking up. And it's the sigh of relief. He yeah. was absolutely petrified. It's a brilliant game to play if you're getting a lift on a long car journey yeah. with people you don't Maybe know. Maybe Just bring that out. Yeah. It's so terrifying. Yeah. I went once. If you're, I'm also another good one is when you pick up the hitch, I say like, I wonder what this car would look like on fire. <laughs> exactly. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Sometimes well, I like to drive the wrong way down the motorway. Yeah, yeah. Would you, uh, what does a knife feel like when it's going into your eye? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you see that story in the week with, um, with a farmer who got his arm stuck in a bit of machinery? And he was going on about, I mean, he came on with a false arm, so he knew something was wrong straight away. <laughs> But, um, you knew it wasn't going to end, happily. But, um, <laughs> but he was like, he, he said, I'm a farmer, I've been a farmer for years, and um, I've, I'm always telling people, don't stick your hands in machines. He said, but I got off my tractor and the machine had stopped, mm. and he went to shift some, I don't know, if it was a Coke can or something, that that was in the field. And yeah, the machine. but he came and he, Oh, this is not the famous one, that about 15 years, and, he, and he, he took his arm to yeah. the hospital, and he was making jokes, his no, arm no, was in ice. He didn't take his, no, no, no. No. What it was, it was, um, hmm. His hand went in and the machine started again. Yeah. And it started pulling it, pulling at his skin. Oh. Right? So like the skin was coming off his arm. Yeah. And it was going around the rollers. Yeah. And he was pulling back like that. So he's like, oh god. Yeah. And the skin's like being wrapped around and it's like pulling it. So yeah. he can see his bone and stuff. Oh no. And um, he was there for like ages going, oh god. And he had um, a, a pen knife in his pocket. So he got that out with the other hand, managed to open it. I mean that's 
Yeah, because yeah, they stick, don't they, after a while. I've got, I've got one of those, um, the Swiss they Army knives. Can. Well, that's what it was. I, 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 I can't do it with two hands sometimes, once they get all full of gunk. He managed to do that with one hand. And yeah. Cut away that skin. That's oh. not true, is it? Yeah. Has he learned to farm again, like the drummer of Def Leppard? Let's learn to drum again. Have they got, like, just like the handles, like... Can you farm now with just one arm? <laughs> it was good, cos he was making a joke out of it and that. Oh, that's think, good, though. I think that's good, good but, uh... Um, that doesn't mean you can, Steve, then. No, sure. He had to cut his own flesh off to escape a combine harvester. Yeah. He doesn't need you, you know... Making voice cracks. Do you know what I mean? Sure. sure. I, I just always remember getting a hot plate out of the oven when I was younger, and that absolutely killed Yeah. It stuck to my fingers, and I just thought, the pain that he must have been going through. Yeah. Must have been, what, you must, must have been worse than a hot plate? Oh. It must have been worse than maybe dropping a pie? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. That's nearly it. That is pretty much it. XFM 104.9. Fast approaching three o'clock. It is indeed. Uh, is that pretty much it, Carl? We, is this our last link? I'd wrap it up. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so would I, actually. Uh, it's song for the ladies' time. And this is a song you put me on to, Rick. It's a beautiful song. Uh, Special View, aka Telescopic Love from The Only Ones. Uh, the B-side of Another Girl on Another Planet. Their only hit, maybe? Uh, well, yeah, I think one of them. But, um, Some great stuff on the, uh, the best know, of the yeah. ones, which, it's just a band kind of- I never go to another planet. That might be up for the best intro in a rock and roll record of all time. I'll put up, won't get fooled again, and another go to another planet. Foxy, he's already putting up money for nothing. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, <laughs> maybe we'll run that competition next week. Yeah, although Walk of Life is particularly good. <laughs> <laughs> here well, comes Johnny singing all these goldies, <laughs> bop a lula baby, here I <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, nonsense. Walk of life. Okay, so this is a uh, special view from The Only Ones, a song for the ladies, and that's it. See you next Goodbye. <laughs> Death in Vegas. Scorpio Rising. Featuring the voice of, is it Noel Gallagher? Liam, isn't it? Is it Liam? Sounded a bit like him. Liam, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Right, isn't it? Excellent, yeah. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's get this show well and truly on the road. Um, we better start, what, ed educating Ricky next, Carl? What have you got for me? I can't wait for learning. I need learning. I need education. We should just teach explain, uh, obviously, for those that have just tuned in, Carl, uh, Try to teach Ricky three things each week. Based on the pun title. And yeah, each of them, uh, each of them, just to tantalise Ricky, is, yeah. um, abbreviated into some kind of headline. A cryptic a clue involved in a, involving a pun. So what have you got for us uh, this yeah, week? They, what's are, they are really cryptic this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, first story, little headline, is, um, don't worry about him, he candle it. <laughs> he candle it? Yeah. Sounds a bit like he can handle it, but it's yeah. not. Would you? Uh, second one. <laughs> I'm I'm get a lobe of this. This is classic. So yeah. we can forget. Get a lobe of this. <laughs> yeah. so, coming soon. And, and stocking eight kilo water. Man. <laughs> Go on. Second one. Yeah. I'm committed to this treatment. I'm mm. committed to this treatment. Yeah. All right. Tantalizing. Yeah. And the last one. Um, uh, the police are causing a bit of a stare. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the way he looks when he says it. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I wish we could see. Can't we get Carl on telly? Nope. There's got to be a way. There's we got can. To be a way. Uh, look, with all the cable channels, anyone can get on telly these days. Let's right, get. Let, so let's, let's phone up. Let's get you on Choice or something. Just what, a little. Just Carl. What? 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 What are you going for? Oh, he can handle it. I think. Don't worry about him. He can handle it. He can handle yeah. it. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's hear this one. All right. Are you familiar with the uh, the phrase "burning the candle at both ends"? Yeah. Do you know how it's come about? I know a man well, who does. I, I, I assumed that it was to get more light in the room. How would that work? Well, they'd put it sideways and light both wicks, so out of one candle they could get no. two. No, go on. No, what it is... I know is, what it means. Uh, it means you're, you're, stay, you're doing too much, you're staying up too much, right. you're not getting enough sleep and you're... Well, years ago... Yeah. Um, when they didn't have light bulbs and that... Oh yeah, what year is this? Literally, quite, literally ages ago, specifically. Yeah, quite a bit back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, didn't have light bulbs and that, so they used to have candles. When in did the, the light bulb come in? Because I, I can't remember the moment. I don't know. Okay, go on. So, um, yeah, so they've they've got a light bulb. You're not me. You, you wouldn't know. You're a doc, you're a doctor. You're not a historian. Go on. Uh, and people who worked a lot of hours. Yeah. How many? Literally lots. They get up early in the morning because they have to be up early. Yeah. And it's dark outside, so they light the candle. Sure. And they wear it out a bit. And then they'd be getting in late as well. Yeah. And like, they'd be like, oh, it's dark. I'll have to light the candle again. <laughs> and the burning candle at both ends of the day. So that's where the saying comes from, burning the candle at both ends. So. All right. That's, uh, little lesson. Yeah. yeah lesson good. one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can I have. No, no, right. you, you can't. You can't rush yet. into them, Rick. 
You've got to. I've got uh, to soak you've in got, that. You've got to soak that one in. Any questions for Carl off the back of that? What do you think? So, so, so people were. I mean, basically, where this comes from is people were <laughs> <laughs> literally burning the candle at the end of the day. Sure. <laughs> there you go. So we've still got. Go on. I'm committed to this treatment. And I can't wait. This is like this is like Christmas Rick, Eve for me. It's it. like Christmas. I've got to open another present now. No, I'm afraid we've got to save it. R Rick, listen. Um, we often get a lot of email correspondence during sure. the show, Rick, uh, which I don't I don't sort of pass on to you because I mean you're busy, you're planning the show and stuff. Sure, you've got sure, a lot of ideas. Sure. You've got music and stuff to worry yeah. about. So I check the emails and we get a lot of response. A lot of people that obviously uh, you know want to give us feedback. Uh, just a sample one um, from Richard Anderson. He's just uh, emailed us in here, Rick, because uh, he's been listening to the show. He says, "Ricky, your show is appalling. Um, are you actually?" Aware you're on the radio, or has someone just secretly stuck a microphone on you? That's from Richard Anderson. So <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's typical of the kind of feedback Rick we're getting <laughs> really? today. So, it's um, that good, is it? So that's that's the kind of yeah high positive praise that we're getting. So uh, I'm I'm I was keep I'm glad Anderson's listening because I wanted him. I yeah, was, no, I mean I, I, I was gunning for him as a fan. I was worried early, early, early on in our career. So uh, but, I, uh, think, uh, I think he's hooked now, though. But thanks, uh, Anders, for <laughs> getting in touch. Good work. He's sitting through it for Hellraiser, though, isn't he? Yeah, well, that's still to come. Oh, still to come. Still to come. What we playing? Uh, a little bit of old dirty b. I can't. I can't say the word. It's offensive. Old old dirty b. Is it old dirty bollocks? <laughs> no, 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 no. What is it? Old, old, dirty. old dirty. Old dirty big cock. <laughs> what is it? What is it? I can't tell you. Breaks up. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Funny word, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's really funny word. What other it? funny oh, words are there? Although Carl? XFM's a funny word. I just yeah. say the letters out because mm. the word doesn't make sense. Just uh, let me just check Richard Anderson's email again. Just remind myself of. Go on. Uh, Ricky, your show is appalling, Richard Anderson. Thanks. What I like about, uh, Dickie, <laughs> Dickie Anders <laughs> is that he's obviously so angry, he's so annoyed by the show <laughs> that he's bothered to email just to get the venom out. Because otherwise you'd just think he'd switch over. Well, he's you know, obviously so annoyed, he's he just switched on the computer. He knows how to hurt someone Locked as well. On. Exactly. He's really taking the time out to, I'm to show his disapproval. I'm giving up. <laughs> I'll tell um, you what though, it can't, it is pretty hard to listen to. What this? Yeah. I've listened back to the tape, that one when, you're when you're making that thing for the best of. Yeah. And I. I mean, I sounded like Albert Taplock. I sa I'm really sounded like some sort of punch drunk stroke victim. And I, I oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was going to say yeah. I don't remember myself like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I do apologise. It's it's not a great planned show. Slick word. Of articulate <laughs> no, sentence, no, no, is it? No, but no, I mean, no, then no. who is? But I think I mean, there's so many shows that are, you know, nowadays on radio. I think there's, there's a lot of stuff that's heavily formatted, you know, and there's with, you know, I don't know, presenters who are professional and have got some sort of degree of talent yeah. and the ability to sort of string a sentence bored together. You know, I'm thinking Chris Moyles. Yeah. Predominantly. Yeah. But I mean, I'm bored with those, those yeah, people, exactly. you know. I, I think we need a little bit of, a little bit of Carl hey, in our life. I'm just thinking, actually, I just suddenly struck me. If you want to get rid of your, um, your furniture. Got a buyer. You've already got a buyer. Go buy because if, if there's only st other stuff, what I we uh, we were clearing some stuff out of our place recently, and we just dumped some stuff outside on the street because we were going to take it and, and take it to the tip later. Just dump some stuff outside, and I have never seen so many people come out of the woodwork scavenging through our garbage. It was incredible. They were like zombies. Well, that's what I was. They saying. were like flies around. Uh, it but was when I said to Carl, when I said to Carl. Uh, That's what you should just do. Just dump it outside because it'll get taken. When he went, he said, he said, "Do you think I asked enough, Andrew?" I went, "Yes, definitely." He went, "Oh, what could I ask?" I said, "No, don't do that." I said, "Because you'll end up having to pay the council to take it away." He said, "I wouldn't." He said, "I'd rather just dump it and let a little homeless fella have it." And <laughs> then he went, "And most of the little homeless fella sitting at the desk." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you imagine, right? There, I walked past. He sat outside Hearts, right, the little twenty-four hour shop. Yeah. He sat outside there and he goes. Have you got any change? No, I can do better than that. Yeah, here's a chair and table. Here's, here's a, a futon. Yeah. A futon, no less. Not your boring bed, but a trendy. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, I. The amazing the number of people that would stop to look at our junk. What? There was a car driving by with a family and kids, perfectly respectable, just driving past, you know, on the way to somewhere, stopped. Got out, got the kids out of the car. Come on, kids, let's just look through this chunk. But I like the you idea. You said that we were going to Walton Towers, yeah. Dad. No, no, sorry, no time. We're not going this to the zoo. Let's look through this rubbish. We're not going looking through people's rubbish. Put again, these are gloves we? on. Look through this shit. Ow, that's a yeah, needle. That's a needle. <laughs> it was. I mean, who does that? It was like a Saturday afternoon. Kids were just going to go and look through some rubbish. And one guy, this is the most incredible one. One guy, I caught him going through the bins as I came as I came in. I said, "All right, what are you doing?" He was one of those homeless guys who likes to remain dignified. Why did you say, "What are you doing"? 
No, because it was my house. I had to go part. I had to squeeze past him. He wasn't in your kitchen. He was in our front garden. Oh, was he? Yeah, going through. He torn the bags open. He was going through it. I said to him, "What are you up to?" He went, "Oh yeah, just looking at the stuff. Don't, don't worry. I just I'll, I'll clean it all up afterwards. Just looking for a few odds and ends." Blah, 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 blah. I said, "Oh well, you can take what you want. You know, it's all going away." Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah. So we went off. Right? I didn't think anything of it. I was walking past the shops the following day. It was a little sort of uh, kind of Seven Eleven. Right? I was walking past. I thought, "Oh, that's interesting. A Gil Scott Heron album for sale." And I looked. I thought, wait a minute, this is all our rubbish. And the guy had set up like a little car boot sale outside the 7 Eleven on the pavement. He'd taken our junk, he'd marked on prices. There's like an old RAC book from 1976 that had been lying in the house, a Yellow Pages. You know, and he'd marked up the How prices. How much was Yellow Pages? So I'm glad you were. What year was 50p, that? 50p, I snapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a bargain. <laughs> and um, it was incredible. He had the cheek of just selling our junk. Outside en Enterprise car. You, you, you do that. What do you used to do? You used uh, to sell flowers. I sold flowers. I yeah. sold, uh, sold fizzy drinks at school. Did you? Yeah. What that you made? It was sold a stream, yeah. Yeah. Made, made some, uh... Well, of course, when you were doing your Pilkies making music, your disco, yeah. you used to go into mum's bedroom and could find a pair of tights and a cigar. Yeah, they, yeah, they'd be prizes. Uh, yeah. Did your dad used to smoke cigars in tights, or, or your mum? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them? He's just... Go on. Right, look, let's, let's, uh... Yeah, we're educating Ricky. No, no, no. That's all teasing, that. Uh, Rockbusters. Well, I think we should play a tune and come back with Rockbusters. Oh, the show's falling down and we were going so well and that we, it's just the energy, isn't it? The first hour we got through. I'm just and in good spirits. Is this, this still good, is it, this I'm show? I'm enjoying it, yeah. Yeah? Good it's time. still good, is it? I'll just, let me just check, cause, uh, just check what Richard Anderson thinks of it. <laughs> good evening, man. Again. No, he thinks it's appalling. He, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, the Dixter thinks it's appalling, so, uh, we should what play we, a tune. Cause he can play some music. What's this? Dev Aqualung. Oh. Aqualung. Aqualung. Rockbusters next. This is from Anne-Marie. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven-months-old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes... It'll probably grow up all right. But there are it's some fine. mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah. Driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. Yeah, but but what that I mean is... <laughs> but what I mean is there's, there's certain things that... I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who... When it was born, right, we kind of thought it's got no chance, this kid, because because its man was was a bit of a rumman, um, you know. Rumman, where, where's that? No, just just like you know, she like going out and having a fag and like having a drink, and she's never at home. It's the one who had the the horse in the house, sure, right? which I don't want to go over. <laughs> sure, it's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house, <laughs> but uh, she had a kid, and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good-looking kid. <laughs> Which was a surprise because, like, you know, the man wasn't that good looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out and she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, Look at this, I've had. And <laughs> she, was, she was chuffed with it because it's probably like one of the newest things she's ever had because everything <laughs> else was always sort of second hand or what have you. But suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went. <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> <laughs> it, looked, it looked rough already, right? And all that, that just happened because that's, that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it used to, it had like a patchy head. Um, it's a, it, it what? It had a patchy head? A patchy head, it's just sort of... Uh, sort of wasn't just a, it, it wasn't a North American Indian, what do you mean, a uh, patchy head? Just, just his hair was patchy, he used to chase sort of... Cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars. It, sorry, it, it, but it, what do you mean? It just that's what he did for his. The, sorry, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, <clears throat> what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it. And you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once. Right? <laughs> okay, right. Did no, you? that time when I was in in <laughs> Wales and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that. Yeah. And I just picked up a big rock, right. 
chucked it off the edge, and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed the fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by, like, inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or, like, off a cliff or anything. And it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons, yeah. isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, Hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off there. I just picked it up and chucked it. And, like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. <laughs> that's a little mantra. Right? All right. Okay. You live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that. <laughs> but let it go about. <laughs> Right. There's the advice for you, Anne Marie. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven month old baby roam about. Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend, of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just they, they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone Who for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. It's philosophy, isn't it? It's, yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Because um, there's a... I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um, it's something about everything no matter what it is, has got one talent. And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there. And that. I like the Chinese. There's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. <laughs> Why, well, why is, well, that's, I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but I heard it was too many cooks. Well, it was all, it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is, um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean, it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let, you let 12 people in a room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do, and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee, because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised, whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, why would you request the ump bit? <laughs> Because that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? <laughs> this I, is, it. I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we've, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. <laughs> well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm going to throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them, okay? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like, the camel, you'd go lose the arm. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um... And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this. It getting in a jar is is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says. Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. No, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones. But I don't know why it want to do that in the first place. Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've you've said you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? Oh, God, you can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution, making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe. Um, what what are they adding to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world. No, but, is I, thought, it? but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot. The, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like. 
you think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Well, there's I'm a just lot saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah, so you want, you want, you 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 you'd get it down to like eight animals that represented all of them. So um, okay, who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, I mm. would have gone like, hang on a minute. With, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown <laughs> and have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. to be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe with Noah as well? You, well believe, you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to, to catch two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, do you? Well, it's, it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Um, all right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. Oh, Jim! See that monkey! <laughs> there was this um, airline, and um, it's having a lot of problems, and, and a what, lot of pilots the... too tall. Yeah, the cabin was so tiny. Only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because um, I don't know what it was about. It was over money or whatever. Yes. But, and the we'll get get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but well, but what else could you pay something in? Well, Rick, we peanuts. But so, okay, peanuts or fruit, yeah. So anyway, the, the boss of the airline, the, oh. he had, like, one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. <laughs> but the problem is, with a lot of these planes, mm. you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he's like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't. There's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. I, is it, I, is I, a, he runs an airline? He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads. But the problem is, a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that we're struggling here. We but how can they yeah. just, just close it down? No, anyway, well, you can't do that, no, Rick. Of course you can't. It's costing them a fortune if he closes it down. Yeah, but what, one plane's not going to make a difference in an airline, is it? No, 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 it's oh. all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. So, the son, he's mm. flying the planes and that. He's getting worried for his dad because of his business. It's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't worry it. about it. We've found someone who you can work with. He said he's staying over at near the sort of quarantine area where oh, all yeah. the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right, okay. They won't be looking in there. They won't no. bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, but there's no you. animal that could be a co-pilot, that's why. I'll see you. Uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. He'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah. Sure. So anyway, he gets in there. He meets him. At first, a little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with. But why? he's thinking... As long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep a job. Not with one plane. Everyone's happy. Then one day mm. what happens is a little bit of a, little bit of a problem. Oh, uh, dear. Well, what oh. happened is uh, one woman who was on the, on the plane got a bit peckish. Right. right. Yeah. And said, uh, said to the air hostess woman, said, I'm a little bit peckish. Have you got any sort of nibbles and that? She went, uh, no, I've got, got a sandwich. She said, I don't really want a sandwich. You want some, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like nuts. a bag of nuts or something. Well, nuts, are, yeah. are they not giving those out yet? So, no, they don't give it for some reason. She was like, look, we've, we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich. Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, I don't want a sandwich. Yeah. I just want some nuts. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? A sandwich is quite a big meal. Like, I just yeah. want some nibbles. Some some nuts. Nuts. Well, it's done. That's not available. So done. Can't, End can't, the story. Can't so she said, well, you're saying there aren't any nuts. She yeah. said, but earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit. Right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilots get Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So, Let's go home. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. He can't have eaten them yet. I want you, some. You cannot I'm going go over. No, no. I know, this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying, you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen. Yeah. I'm going to go over because no, I feel no, like I'm being lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, so no, and, no and the way. pilot can well, hear all this in anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door, Yeah. Right? she gets a glance in, <coughs> the monkey's out there with headphones. Fucking bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's called A Man Inside My Mag, which was the B-side to Close to Me. There's nothing amusing about that, Rex. I don't know why you're allowed. Well, it's called A Man Inside My Mag. Yeah, I know. And that's fine. Yeah, it's like, you know, this, uh, like, you know, the little man inside your head. Yeah. You know, right, if a man mouth. wants to be inside anyone's mouth, that's good, you know, good actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, There's nothing wrong with that. But I agree. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, do you agree with that? What man in your head? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. It's good. It doesn't it's even great. understand schoolboy carry on innuendo. I, I know the fact that the play on words is too far then. What does he mean on sight of the erection? <laughs> what? Um, what do you mean dumplings? Huh? You're a fan of The Simpsons. You yeah. know that character in The Simpsons, the, um, gap tooth yokel? Yeah. If I look at Carl when Cletus. he's a black, Cletus. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Recently, it's, that, it's the kind of cliche <laughs> comic book thing of having a mouth wide open <laughs> to suggest formlessness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's amazing. Or an accommodating come on. Yes. 
Absolutely. Carl. Oh. That little man inside your head is what, you know, that people use it as your conscience, don't they? Alright. Have you ever heard that before? Uh, no. No? No. No? Okay. I was, uh, I was <laughs> watching Moonraker. Uh, it was on, I think it was last week. Yeah. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the James Bond films. I have never, I don't think I've ever watched a Bond film from beginning to end. Yeah. I've never watched one on DVD, and I've never gone to the cinema to watch one, and I, I'm not usually in on Easter Saturday. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, 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 well, honestly. The thing about James Bond, when I was younger, I, I thought he was amazing. I just thought he was the ultimate cool, sophisticated hero. Do you know what I mean? My dream as a kid, like when I say kid, I mean a teenager, was to come home, which invariably he did. He'd come back to his hotel suite, he'd open the door, there'd be a trail of clothes. And he'd follow, yeah. and he'd go into the bedroom and there'd be a beautiful woman in the bed, you know. You'd have said, clean up, what are you doing? You're messy. <laughs> I'm gonna um, have to get my mum to clean all this <laughs> up now. Mom? She's got a bad <laughs> brother, new lady in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, and as I say, I used to think he was really cool and sophisticated. And it's only of late that I've sort of watched, you've revisited these films. And it's, I'll tell you what, it's his jokes. Oh. He is the oh, most infuriating man yeah, ever. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know why people in the films consider him so. I mean, I, I think the reason that women in the films are always being seduced by him is because, if you notice, they're normally they normally got English as a second language. Right. So they don't understand. They don't so when he's making those jokes, so they, they don't know when he goes. Uh, uh, just keeping the British end up. Yeah, I'm just attempting re-entry. Yeah. If that was a British woman, she'd be going, what? Yeah, what are you talking don't about? say you that. That sounds disaster. awful and it's a terrible it's time. It's so rude, that. what am I? Yeah, what am I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they just laugh. They just laugh pettishly and then, you yeah. know, unzip their dress normally. Yeah. <laughs> but some of the guys, there was one where he's, uh, He's just being chased by a guy in a moped or something as the guy plummets off a cliff and smashes through a van which is full of feathers and he plummets to his death and Bond just says, all those feathers and he still couldn't fly. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's not a joke? It's just words. Uh, there's one where he, in Moonraker, he punches this guy, he's having a fight, he punches him through a plate glass window and he lands on a piano and Bond goes, play it again, Sam. <laughs> The one, uh, I remember there's the one in one uh, of the early films where he, he kill he, he throws a guy in the bath and electrocutes him by throwing in a um oh, uh, a thing and then he goes sh absolutely sh shocking. shocking. But yeah. I was thinking you've just killed a man. I know you're well, a he's... psychopath. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. It's, just, it's just so excruciating. <laughs> if someone was doing those kind of jokes in the office, yeah, you yeah. would hate them. Do you know what I mean you yeah. wouldn't want to talk to him? They'd be a bore. I know. Yeah, everything, everything's, everything's a little one liner. liner. I know, and everything's a pun. Yeah, but I tell you what, that he's a bloody good secret agent. <laughs> True. So, you know, they're, they're not hired for their, um, you know, wit and, uh, you know, stand-up ability. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, it swings and roundabouts. Yeah. I yeah. doubt Johnny Vegas could, uh, save the world. That's true enough, yeah. So, uh, think on. Different people, different needs. <laughs> Kings of Leon. California waiting on XFM 104.9. Do you know what, Steve? We get emails and, uh, you know, we got our posters up around this show and, uh, people enjoy it. But I don't think we get the credit we deserve for picking the music. It's true. Because we're totally unplaylisted and I don't know if people know about this, that m mine and Steve's sort of first passion before comedy is probably music. We're really, really, we love playing each other sort of records and that. And maybe when we come back, we should do a show where there is no pressure to, you know, like Carl doesn't press the buttons for it, pre-record it, where we just we swap each other's sort of ideas for music. It'd be like, uh, the Ricky Gervais compilation tape. Well, sort know, of right? like, we're not, we're not talking John Peel where we try and find obscure Belgian jungle mm. and do demos. You know, everything from, you know, Kings of Leon, Lou Reed, you know, maybe a bit of 80s stuff that people yeah, have forgotten yeah, yeah. about. Beautiful so, songs, beautiful songs. So what do you think? I'd love to do that, Rick. I mean, I genuinely, I, there's nothing more exciting to me than introducing to someone a song which they then that they love, love and they love and they buy the album, da, 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 da. But that's something to think about, maybe, for later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you say, the, the pressure to kind of come up with some, you know, um, high-caliber chat yeah. between each record, it is, it takes the toll. But, um, you know? yeah, and then that, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's a passion of ours and we'd love to, but, 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 but now, it's Rockbusters. Can I just say something now, before we do Rockbusters, a lot of people sort of, they come up to me and they say, Steve, we like the show, when are you going to get rid of Rockbusters? It's, it brings it down. I, I'm not joking. That. I'm not joking. <laughs> there is loads of people. Like, come, come, let, let come off speak. it. Come what? off it. Come what? off it. What? I know people who say, you're never going to stop that, are you? Yeah. So, one of us is lying again. <laughs> Well, not really. You know, I, I, I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who've listened to the show. You're talking about Suzanne, <laughs> your uh, girlfriend. Oh, uh, Martin, he, he'll be at home now with a pad. 
getting ready <laughs> to play. But I should just Max like Freeman <laughs> did say, did encourage Carl on a couple of occasions. He even tried to get him through with the answer, egg, when we were doing that naming animal round. Yes. So- But I should just say that people, they, people think that somehow Ricky and I are endorsing Rockbusters, that somehow by allowing it on the show, somehow we think it's good or we appreciate it. And I need to point out that it's more like when a child comes back from school and they've done a painting. Yeah. It's crap. Yeah. But of course you've got to stick it on the fridge. The bigger than the house. <laughs> you've got to stick yeah. it on the fridge because otherwise it's, the kids can exactly. get upset. In this next episode, you've got to remember the cat is bigger than the house. <laughs> exactly. Okay. It doesn't look like anything. The humans don't have bodies, their legs come straight from their heads. Yeah. Mummy and daddy. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Carl Pilkington's Rockbusters. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, cryptic clues, no, initials, cryptic. and you work not it out, and you email in and that. Yeah. First one. Yeah. Uh, don't be stealing my tools, take your sisters. <laughs> Alright, and the initials N-K. Don't so, be stealing my tools, take my sisters. Yeah, so that's like the cryptic clue, and the initials of the artist or band is N-K, mm -hmm. right? Second one. Buy it if you want, not bother. Think about it. Come back. <laughs> right, come back with you. <laughs> start again, Carl! I learned last half way through! Right, start our second one again! Right, well, you can back. <laughs> it's different, it's different! Well, the first one was, uh, buy it for one now. Now this one was, uh, yeah, well, write it now, buy it. Right, right, do it. Do it. If it's a cryptic clue, all the letters count. Do it. Buy it if you want, I'm not that bothered. You know, think about it, come back, check some other places out first before you, you know. <laughs> So we've got no we've got no time for other clues. Right. right. So that's S C. Right, right that, do that clue again. Buy it if you want. I'm not I'm not, I'm not fussed, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Think about fast. it. Fast! Fast is making the feelings! Fast wasn't there before! Do the clue again! Do the clue again! <laughs> Initials SC for that one. Do the clue again! I don't wanna do it again. Do you haven't finished it yet? I have, that's it. No, do the clue again. <laughs> I can't do, it again. do the clue again. Well, I'll bite if you want. I'm not fussed, right? Chop around. <laughs> come back. It's up to you. I'm not, I'm not pushing you into anything. It's right? up to you. What was that? S S C S C oh, for that one, dear. right? And the final one. Uh, <laughs> that's good. I can play ten pin bowling again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, what's the clue? Well, that's that's O. Oh, oh. 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 All right, so uh, uh, okay. Now I assume that I'm not going to bother to look. But I assume there's a, there's a jiffy bag of tap yeah. which people can win. Yeah. All right, well, great, good luck. Uh, um, Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM Dot Co Dot UK is the email address. Thorns. Buy it if you want. I'm not pushing. Come back. Have a look around. I'm, I'm, I'm open Wednesdays, by the way. Shut up, Thorns. Go on, Carl. Um, should we have the Rockbusters answer? Yeah, 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 I'd love to. Uh, number one was, don't be stealing my tools. Take your sisters. The initials were N K. That was Nick Ursaw. Right? Nick Ursel? Nick Ursel. 80s. I don't know, I've never heard of that band. Nick Kershaw. Nick Kershaw? Oh, no, oh yeah, Nick Kershaw, yeah. Nick, oh, sorry, what, what, Nick I don't Kershaw, understand it. Nick, how is Nick Kershaw? Second one. No, 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 don't move on! Nick Ursel! What's Nick Ursel? <laughs> Jesus. All right. It doesn't count, it's not on, a clue. Then let's just leave it behind us, all right? Second one was, uh, buy it if you want. You know, I'm not bothered, you can think about it, come back, have a, have a look around, think it over. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not fussed. The initials were SC, that was soft cell, right? That works. Yeah. Well done. That works. Right. And that's good. I can, uh, I can play some pin bowling again. That's O. That's outcast. All right? What does that mean? Outcast? You know, you, you, you broke your arm, no? Uh, got the oh, cast off. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ludicrous. I mean, that's ridiculous. You broke your arm, you were in a cast, you got rid of the cast, you're outcast. Did yes, anyone yes. get that? Yeah. I, I mean, I am stunned. I think, to be fair, that was because how many bands begin with O? Yeah. I think that's why people got it. Exactly. But they were guesses, yeah. I could probably make Oasis work if I tried hard enough. We've done that. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. So, uh, outcast. That's ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? But it's ridiculous. Than that. What was worse than that? Leap to bowling. Was that worse than that? <laughs> no, Imagine I, I, that. I remember when I did my wrist in, then it fixed. I went temping bowling. Why did you do your wrist? <laughs> so you so your it's what you did. Brilliant. So next week's quiz is what am I thinking? You're an idiot, Carl. I like that. That's great, isn't it? Not Apple long. Good time's gonna come. Well, Carl, we've got loads of ideas. We've got emails coming left, right and centre. I think you've caused quite a stir. I think you've turned this show around. 
to be honest. I'm being honestly. Yeah, no, you've done really well. You're actually acting a bit like a producer, isn't he? Mm. And mm. Uh, you're coming through in your own right. Yeah. Um, we've had a great suggestion. We've we? had a great email here. Let me, listen, check, listen uh, let me just check. Listen this, to this. this is from uh, Jeff Dunn. He's a big fan of the show, and he's just had a genius idea. He's saying, "You're moving house, Carl. Why don't Ricky and I come round? We can do a live outside broadcast from your flat. It's we genius. can observe from your kitchen those weirdos that live opposite. Yeah. We can just maybe just wander around, just see the kind of place that you've got. You know, see maybe check out your record collection, your clothes, what you got in the bathroom. It'd be amazing. Your futon. It'd be like Louis Theroux. Wouldn't it? We'd be Louis through. Come on, Carl, this is a dynamite idea. Nah. Why? I, I don't want you coming around making a mess on that. We'll, we'll make, make a mess. A mess. We'll, we'll, make a mess. we'll take our shoes off. When, when have I ever made a mess in the studio? Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But do you know what I mean? We're not going to make a mess. What, what, we're not going to have anything with us. But what's in it for anyone? Well, it's just a fascinating insight into yeah, you. Yeah, but, right, when I see that little Chinese kid across the road who's dancing <laughs> about in his underpants, yeah. that's in the evening, yeah. right? He's not going to be doing that on a Saturday, <laughs> so you'll be disappointed there. Sure. <laughs> that, old, that old woman. But you could sh at least show us the oh, room no, in which he really, dances. Yeah, when you say little Chinese kid, he's a 35-year-old man, isn't he? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you don't, 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 no, I don't, I don't, and the, the w woman downstairs has got a baby and if we make loads of noise and it's, that gets We're stressed out. We're not gonna out. make noise, are we? Just gonna have a conversation in your flat. Have a cup of tea. Yeah, but if we do an OB, we need to get like a car outside with a big aerial on it and well, the parking's dark around our way. What do you mean you have to do a, what do you mean? To do a outside broadcast. Can't they put in an ISDN line just for the day? No, no, because I'll make a mess of the wall and I'm, I've, I won't give me deposit back. So <laughs> <He's> we'll <laughs> leave that. <laughs> Thanks right. for the idea. You know he's <laughs> going around painting all the little holes well, to get his deposit back <laughs> in, the, in the wall. <laughs> he wants to get his deposit back. He's probably cost me about 400 quid redecorating. <laughs> 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 Let's remind people, Carl, of the, uh, the prizes for Rockbusters this week. It's right. dynamite stuff. We've got the David Attenborough DVD Nature Collection. We've We've got a number of CDs, the best of David Bowie. We've got a Madness CD. Not quite sure whether that song's uh, from the musical or or their original tunes. Uh, country Legends, two CDs there of uh, great country music, Brilliant. and the uh, remix to XFM compilation. Plus, of course, the big movie prize this week. Um, Hellraiser. Hellraiser. If you haven't seen it already, then I assume you <laughs> have never seen a film before, because <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't seen Hellraiser. But obviously, you have to be above 18 to join uh, come to on play in. the competition. Come on, so, um, How long would you want to be? Round four. Is this just for the, just for the show? A couple of hours. Two hours. Did you just get the desk in there. Mm. A live OB. We could check out the futon. We could sing check, it. Check the vault in, right? Yeah. Oh, you've got to sold that by but now. We could have someone it? come round and buy it live on air. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It's great. Uh, great what's, uh, how, did, how did Graceland start? Because that was <laughs> that, well, that was his normal house, and then he took <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> Right, anyway, Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, go on. I, I give a cryptic clue. Yeah. And <laughs> and a letter, and it makes up a band. He right? never said the word cryptic a few months ago. I love it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel it's like our own little Eliza Doolittle. Yes. <laughs> right, even Richard will like this one. Mm hmm. Um, here we go then. First one. There's I three of them. Go on. And you email in. If this doesn't turn Dicky round, nothing will. This right. is an email only competition. Email only. Um, right, here's the first one. Uh, initial is B, so it's B. a band starting with B. Okay. And the cryptic clue is, I don't like them birds, uh, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. I don't like them birds, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. Next one. Right, the next one. Uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> is that a cryptic clue or is that just <laughs> is that just a is thought, that just general that, point? Is that that's, yeah? That's the cryptic clue. Okay. And the initials there are P D. Okay. And uh the last one. Uh that Oh got that one, that's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, quickly. Oh, <laughs> oh god. And the last one is uh <laughs> That bloke who does. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> He's making me laugh. Come on, Carl. Be professional. Right, on. right, the last one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, it's making me laugh. Oh, come on, I'll come and read them then. No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Come on, Carl. Right, here we go. They don't do this on <laughs> Blockbusters on TV, do they? No, come right. on. That bloke who does sport on telly. <laughs> 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 He's got a little kid, right? Uh, initials DC. <laughs> What? Right. Is that, was I'm that the clue? I'm completely confused by that. Was that the clue? Yeah, that bloke who does sport on telly. Yeah. He's got a little kid. Initials DC. Okay, is that a band? 
Um, what well, is? Uh, it's oh, well, I'm a not cheese. Tell you. I'm this not is not a well known <laughs> sandwich. Is it? What is it? Is it well, band or not? Right, so just quickly recap. That's okay. It's, 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 it's a come D. on, Carl. Right, come on. Quick, quick recap. The first one is B. I don't think them birds should be around in this area. Right, that's B. Right. <laughs> Second one, he doesn't like women yet. He's got a few kids. It's a bit weird. That's P D. And the final one, that bloke who does sport on the telly, he's got a little kid. Right. D C. All right, and uh, it's Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to enter for uh, Hellraiser. Oh, I tell you what, continue to do a little theme here of like some old stuff people haven't heard of. If you're under thirty, you've probably never heard of this band. It's also a new thing I want to introduce. Uh, it's uh, it's um, Show Up Camfield. Camfield right. talks the talk. He doesn't walk the walk. He doesn't play some rock classics on his show because he's scared. I'm going to play the tracks that Camfield's too scared to play. Right. This is Kansas and Carry On Your Wayward Son. All right, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, right. Um, the the uh, the results of, um, we Rock Busters. We got a winner for the first time. Yes, uh, we have. We've, we've done, done this loads. feature for- We've got loads of winners. No, we haven't. We've done the, this feature for three weeks. This is the first time I've, um, I've managed to sort of- What? Well, let's go through them then. They're what have they got the wrong? The first one. The right, first one. What the was the first, first one? one. Well, well, hang on. Let's just, let's what? just, let's do them in reverse order for a second. Okay. So what's, what's the last one? The last one, the clue was, that bloke does, uh, does sport on the telly and, and he's got a little kid. What's that? That's Destiny's Child. Des, who does ITV Sport, oh, that's got a tiny child, right? No, that's, they, that's fine, yeah, they got that. that. Destiny's Child. What's the, what, what's the, what's the middle one? Right, the middle one. Child. Right. Child. The child. The second one was, yeah. uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that, that's a bit weird. Yeah. Right? That was PD, that was Puff Daddy. That is offensive. Go on, that, It's not Puff Daddy, it's Puff Daddy. And he's not even called that anymore, he's called P Diddy. Well. Okay, yeah, fair enough. But they got that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and if, so if I'm being tight, these lot are as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, tight means it means something in Manchester. Go on. Right. And the first, the first one that they, they're having problems with, I don't think them birds should be uh, allowed in this They've area. They've got it. Boyzone. Boy it's not, it's not Boyzone. It's, what's the clue again? I don't think them birds should be allowed in this area. That is perfect. A boy zone. No birds. No women. No women, yeah, birds, right? A boy zone. Sorry, Carl. If that isn't the answer, their clue is better than yours. That is brilliant. What was yours? Boy zone, it works perfectly. What's your answer then? Bangles. <laughs> what? I have no idea what that means. Like seagulls. So you, you don't want them in this area, so you're banning them. Bangles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! Well, give it to Boyzone, because Boyzone's better. That is supposed to be loud as area, it's a Boyzone. I boy think zone. we should have a rollover. <laughs> Carl <laughs> beat them. Carl beat them. You have to use his logic, surely. But theirs works. You can't do what am I thinking. No, that's not what I'm thinking. It perfectly, it works perfectly. I think you've got to give it to the, the ones that got the, the Boyzone. Well, how about, right, because they didn't actually get into my, my head. That I'm well, thinking, heaven right? forbid. How about we just keep back the David Attenborough, and they can have, I'll chuck in the L Razor. Right? <laughs> okay. And, and, uh, <laughs> Blondie album and the Madness Yeah, okay. One. Pick a winner at random. Pick Steve. a winner, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Paul Sloman, who got those answers, and he also says, P.S. Carl, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'll give that to Paul, and, uh, good luck to him. <laughs> right, well. He's got a crazy night, uh, tonight. If we can rush these over to him, he's got uh, a cracking, yeah, uh, Saturday yeah. night. Well, well, if I'm a moron, I might get your address wrong when I send them to you. Ooh! Oh, yeah. Coming yeah. right back at you, Paul. Yes. <laughs> Right. Do you want to play a song? Is this oh, the oh, annoyed because wow, they need to get wild. band goals. A song from uh, a song for the ladies. I think we seem to have missed this a lot of weeks, but so uh, this sure. is. I've been wanting to play it's this. Not like us to for forget things. In that. This <laughs> is a band at uh, Frente who kind of came and went, and oh, no yeah. one was particularly interested. But they did this do this lovely acoustic version of the New Order tune, Bizarre Love Triangle, oh, right. and this just shows you how incredible the melodies and the and the words and everything are. Brilliant. I'm uh, New Order. Just uh, play this. Good night. Bye bye. Is this the end week? Do you reckon Richard Anderson will be back next week? Yeah, Richard Anderson will not miss this show. Excellent. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. Emily from New York has asked, uh, Carl this. Carl, if you were on a, a, a sinking ship or you were in a, a burning building and you were with, uh, myself and Ricky, but you could only save one of us, I don't know why that's the case, but you can only save one of us, yeah. who would you save? Would it Is be it, Ricky or would it be me? I think it's a two-man dinghy. Right, okay. Possibly. And we're, we're trapped and he knows that if he stays there to get both our legs out from under this thing... <laughs> the girder. Yeah, he falls. dies, so he's got, so he's, he's got room, he's got time to save one. It's obviously me. Um, it's hard to say, isn't it, at this point. 
What, because Steve's, because Steve's in the room, you mean? Well, <laughs> no, just, just because we, we don't know what, what the situation is. Okay, well, let's say we're on a we're on a sinking ship, all right? So you're going to have to rescue one of us, drag us into the dinghy. It's, it's going under. You know, you know, in thirty seconds, okay, this ship's going to go under and drag you down, and you're going to die, right? Uh, and our legs are trapped, and you've got enough time to untangle one set of legs. <laughs> Whose legs do you untangle? Now, just because my legs are long, does not necessarily mean it's more complicated. No, it's exactly the same amount of time. Just have to make a choice. Terrible, a terrible choice that Steve would would not, um, you know, hate you for. Well, no, listen, this is going to be long. He's going to drown in thirty seconds. Well, we'll get him. <laughs> so, bear in mind this, Carl. You are going to be stuck in a dinghy with Ricky Gervais, and who knows how long that's going to take. Yeah. Think of all the head squeezing that's going to be going on, the comments, the winder. And do you honestly think that he's going to, if there's any provisions, that he's going to split them evenly with you? <laughs> I mean, he's going to have drunk all the water, and it's only going to be about half an hour in. The food's going to be gone. Look at his gut. Look how much, you know, of the, of the food he's going to have to eat, the baked beans that you've got on board. Come or it's on. me. You know how generous I am. I'm always sort of oh, helping you Oh, there we out. go. Carl, he's, I think he's uh, put the nail in his own coffin there. You know how generous I am, Carl. Let's talk about that, Carl. Come on. Think about that one. Yeah, I mean, have, have you forgot about that, Steve? <laughs> what? <laughs> the time, the time when... We went for a coffee, and we had to have a bit of a heated debate about the 50 pence change. <laughs> yeah, you owed me 50p, oh, and you it. decided you didn't want to give it to me because it was only 50p. And my point was, it's not a question of 50p, it's the fact that it's not your decision to decide not to give it to me. If I wanted to be generous, that's my decision. But you can't go, oh, it's only 50p, well, Steve. It's my decision. It was but you just, you just given him a free keg of beer. Yeah. And uh, no, no, but yes, but that was that did not come to you, and you didn't pay for the free keg of beer. It was a promotional thing that was sent to you. Doesn't, it's the same thing as the way I gave Suzanne my leaving present from my last job. A lot of people may not be aware of this if they haven't heard us talking about it before. Yes, but you had a gift from your work as you were leaving after how many years of service, yeah. which you then gave straight to your girlfriend without telling her that it had been received from uh, people at work. Doesn't matter. She wanted a camera. It's the same thing as you. You wanted that lager that I got for free. It hasn't yeah. cost you anything. It doesn't matter where I got it from. So you now decide, because you've given me a free lager, that you can now say, oh, actually, I'm not, uh, you know, in the future, I'll just take your money, Steve, on a whim. Well, uh, listen, top just... argument you're rocking the dinghy. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> have some of my cheese. <laughs> you imagine if he would, do you imagine he would ever say that? Do you imagine him ever, ever offering you any of his cheese? Are you going to save, Carl, mate? I, I don't want to say. Well, think about it and... I might do a sort of a... A for and against or something, and then sort of so the conclusion is okay. All right. Well, I've been waiting for this for a week. Um, it's a regular feature now. When uh, we read from Carl's diary, Carl decided to keep a diary. He's gone through with it. I could see it there. It's massive. It's a huge desk diary that he has to carry around uh, with him, and uh, he uh, is the pages are getting full up. You're you're really keeping to this. Yeah. Right, this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses. They hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> a cow, a chicken, some fish. An octopus is an odd-looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? It's just some kid. Uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like a kid with like a blue jumper on, and he's. It's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box. It's really awful, sort of sugary. And sort what of. happened is, it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever. And the weird thing was. Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture of in the <laughs> fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit mm. again. Mm. Carry on. Wednesday. Saw a homeless bloke. I'm surprised that no companies have thought about sponsoring the homeless. Something like a clothing company. Give them some clothes that have an advert on the back. Everyone's a winner. Good idea. Not bad, is it? 
got on the tube to Camden, read in a free newspaper that hedgehogs could be gone by 2025. I think I've seen more dead hedgehogs than the live ones anyway, so I don't think I'll miss them. <laughs> Went round to Ricky's house and had a game of pool. It should have been nice and relaxing, but Jane gave me some cake, and Ricky said I can't play pool if my hands are all sticky from there, cake. It was the sugar, it was, and it wasn't that either. After he'd finished it, they weren't just sticky, he was licking his fingers, sucking his fingers off, and then was going to pick up ball cues and touch things, and I was thinking, go and wash your hands after licking your hands. You're not a cat. This turned into an argument when I said I didn't want to wash my hands. Why didn't he? Disgusting. He goes for a piss all the time without washing his hands and then squeezes my head. I know I prefer to have lemon cake crumbs on my head than knob juice. I was going to do a crossword, but I'm tired and have learned enough today. What have you learned? Well, the stuff about hedgehogs and that. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Was on my way to my mates and I got on a train. Got close to a station but realised I needed a wee. Was about to go in a cubicle when a blind man with a dog who was bumbling his way through the walkway came around. I said, are you after the toilet? He said, yeah. I said, it's on your right. I shouldn't have let him go first as he took ages and it would be my stop soon. The dog waited outside the cubicle. I was going to stroke it but then I remembered someone telling me that you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Why, why not? Because something to do with... Uh, the owner should be the only one who, who sort of deals with that dog, and you shouldn't. F sort well, you shouldn't stroke it because you'll cover it in fucking lemon cake. <laughs> no, but, but just because you know, if you if you stroke it and that, it it might like like me and want to go off with me, and he'll come out and be lost and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> A few people have sent this in, including Paul the Party Animal Parker. For some reason, we've just assumed he's in school. I don't think there's any actual proof of that. But do I, you reckon, think I reckon he left in June, and he's doing sort of bits and pieces, but he's still not a party animal. Do you think, I mean, do you think he can hold down a job? Is he just partying so hard that... He can hold down a job, um, he often arrives late. Sure. And the, and the boss who's in over will go, Parker, you're late again. He goes, yeah, talk to the hand. Yeah. I think that he's the sort of guy that he can, you know, he'll just happily say, listen, I can, I survive on four hours sleep. Yeah. Sometimes I go to work, I've not slept at all. But I think he comes in with his, uh, uh, uh headphones blaring, right, on a, on a skateboard, yeah. and the bloke goes up to him, the old bloke, right, the old fuddy duddy bloke, goes, you, you stupid idiot, you can't wear there, he goes, he goes, chill out, man, and in two minutes, he's got him dancing. <laughs> oh, I know what he's like. Yeah, he is just like, he just can't resist it, because he's yeah. just, he's, he's just a fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, Paul uh, and a few other people have sent in this piece of information they've discovered um, from one of the more respected news networks. Um, the headline is this, female kidney turns lumberjack onto housework. Right. Now, a Croatian lumberjack apparently has claimed that he started enjoying housework and knitting after he was given a female kidney. He claims he's going to sue his local health authority because he says he's become a laughing stock. Um, he used to enjoy heavy drinking sessions and things. Uh, the kidney transplant saved his life, but they never warned me about the side effects. I've developed a strange passion for female jobs, like ironing, sewing, washing dishes, sorting clothes in wardrobes, and even knitting. Well, if he likes it, what's the problem? It's nonsense. Well, it's nonsense. Hold on, though. What makes me laugh is he's become a laughing stock. So what do you do when you become a laughing stock? Tell the newspapers. <laughs> well, yeah. Tell the newspapers about it, because then that would keep it completely under wraps. Then. But it's the sort of medical nonsense that Carl would normally come out with. Absolutely. That, the, the, you know, you take on the personality of the person who gave you their blood. Exactly. It's like those old sto horror stories, you know, you get given a murderer's hand. Yeah. A bigger ankle one. But, but there can be certain medical things that would change the way you think and would change you as a person. Say, like, how they can do um, face transplants now. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I don't quite understand how this face transplants work because do you get a choice of who, who you have? If if you have something done to your face and you go, you know, it's burnt or whatever, or something happens to you and you need well, a people, face transplant. Well, if you change, if you totally changed your appearance, then you would eventually change because of how people reacted to you. Yeah, but I, so I mean, if you gave yourself the head of an elephant, soon you wouldn't you wouldn't be yourself. Because I wouldn't of the, have it. I wouldn't have that. That's what I'm saying. If they had a catalogue. Yeah. And they said, here's some faces you can have, pick which one you want. Yeah. Would you be looked upon badly if you go, do you know what? I don't really like the look of any of them. Can I just wait for a better face? Or at this moment in time, have you just got to take what's on offer? Carl, there's no one looking through catalogues at faces they might be able to have. In no, the they face do now because of the face transplant thing. But who are these people putting their face up for? Uh, they wait till someone. Yeah, I know, but at some point. Well, I tell you what, I would not have a face transplant if I haven't seen the face before I'm going to have it. You... <laughs> you asked the... 
I want to see what I'm having. Because I could end up with anything. You mentioned elephant's head. What, do you know what I mean? Whose head are they going to use? Is it the latest thing that's died? Oh, well, this got run over before. Yeah, I'll stick this on your head. <laughs> where did this come from? Where are these mind? Where, where are these faces queuing up to be popped on a skull? Where do you think they have got time to, to put well, all these... Maybe this is why it won't catch on. I don't know. <laughs> this is extraordinary. You've created in your own head the existence of this pamphlet, and now you're defending it, even though we don't know it even exists. And you're this skull on a on a hospital bed, going, "I'm not having that. I don't like the look of him. He looks a bit shifty. Oh, I don't like that." Oh, no. Can I ask this now? Let's say you, we were both, we passed away sadly in something terribly tragic. Um, the nation's it mourned. You know, it's, it's terrible. It's like one of the great national disasters. But you. At the same time, you survived the accident, okay, but your face is hideously disfigured. You can take either Ricky's face or mine to have. I'm surprised you're asking this, though, Steve. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just, it doesn't seem like any of them is, like, a great option. Oh, thanks. And this is what I'm saying about the catalogue. If, th if those two were on offer, I might go, do you know what? Pop in again tomorrow. Bring in another book. book. <laughs> Beatles. Revolution. Mm -hmm. Was that clear? Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. We got to speed this up because we're, we know. It's funny because our first link when we had to go at like the the library and the the playlist when we played the record, Carl went. You usually do it at the end when you've run out of stuff. Yes. What's so, left of yeah. So we started with what's usually our worst bit of material. So I think we've got to <laughs> do, turn this show round. Right. Uh, Carl has been holding this together to be honest. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's Carl's. Beautiful naivety and uh, can I say it, Carl, in the nicest way, stupidity <laughs> yes. that are keeping the listeners. I, I wouldn't class it as stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's I'm only joking. Stuff. I'm only joking, mate. Of course you're not stupid. Everyone knows you're not stupid. You're sincere, and and that and that can sometimes be, you know, it's frowned upon in this cynical world. Would uh, you say you've learnt stuff from me in the past few weeks? Definitely, That's definitely, true. definitely, yeah. definitely. Rather like a scientist learns from. A, like a injecting mice. Yeah. No, but I've learnt from you about ants and stuff. I, th I think every week, as weeks go go on, I feel like we're uh, learning from each other. I'm learning more now than I did when I was at school. And can I just clarify? Yeah. You you weren't raised as an experiment, and you've escaped from a laboratory. <laughs> you are. You had regular upbringing in Manchester, and that. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't go to school much because me mum and dad had a caravan. <laughs> right. And <laughs> no need, is there? No need when you've got that sort of fun at home. Yeah. I used to just go away for weeks. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, honestly. Where'd you used to go? Port Maddock. But <laughs> 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 and, um, okay, so you didn't go to school much? No, I, d I did, but not as much as everyone else. No. Yeah. How many holidays were your parents having? Oh, what, what, what was their income that they could... No, well, my dad used to work nights, and uh, he used to travel back, because to Manchester <laughs> from Wales, it wasn't that far. And Manchester do, to Wales? He used to do four on and four off, so <laughs> me and my mum were, like, loving it. But what, what's, what, what, Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port Maddock. Just down the road from Port Merion, where they filmed The Prisoner. Right. Oh, so, so that, that's cleared up for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah location-wise. So what did you do then? You, you were in this little two-birth caravan on the back of a, a Cortina estate. Right. Well, what was it? What was the car? I want the, uh, what was Granada, it? Granada. Ford Granada. Ford Granada. What are we talking? 1980? Yeah, 82, 83, 84, 85. Okay. And you in, in the car, down there, down there, <laughs> park up. Yeah. What was it? What, what was Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port, Port Maddock. Maddock. I remember Ruth. It's just, oh, yeah. Uh, it's just holiday camp. Yeah. And at an arcade and a beach. I was, I was loving it. Yeah. But, um, so, so of the 52 weeks of the year, let's assume, I don't know how many weeks you take off normally for holidays anyway, let's just say, I don't know, you go to school 45 weeks of the year maybe? Generally, most kids? No. Nah. Less. A bit less than that. 42. How many weeks would you say you actually spent in school? Well, how many weeks do you have off for summer? Well, we just we'll work that out. That's about what we six off for summer, about four, three for Easter, about three for Christmas. Put it this way, I'm surprised I'm not Welsh, to be honest. Right. Because I was there more than I was in Manchester. Did they not? Did the school authority not come and check you no, out? No, they didn't. Didn't get Manchester, I suppose they didn't care, did they? Not really. Yeah. They're lucky you yeah. turned up at all. What did you just turn up for the last day when you could take in your best toy? <laughs> what, did you know that when you could take in any I game? Just, just play with everyone else's. Why, why, you know, I break my stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, Ooh, well, this point. answers a lot. This does answer a lot. The fact that you spent most of your time on the beach as a kid. Uh, teachers were no good at my school. We were right. talking about it yesterday. About so you were that. teaching them a lesson by going <laughs> off in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. And uh, did you go to university? No. 
No, no, no. Did you go to sixth form or college? No. When, when did you leave school? When I was about fifteen. Right. What, you just went on holiday and didn't come back? <laughs> <laughs> I just got a job early, didn't I? Cause I Where was it? Port Maddock? Getting there. No, I was a printer. BM print, print in Trafford Park. Well, that's great. That's a little interview yeah, there. Yeah, a little uh, ne story. Next, I'll be interviewing Steve Merchant. What are we playing next? Bit of elbow. Oh, I, oh, this is fantastic. This is elbow. Elbow, asleep in the back. I, I think that is absolutely beautiful. I think elbow are my favourite new group. We've sang their praises many times and they I... never phoned to thank us. Should they? Yes. Do they? Annoying. Really? Annoying. No, they're, they're doing a good job there. I wonder if they found their lyrics. Because mm -hmm. I also wanted to write a song from them, didn't I? They didn't, they didn't take me up on that either, Steve. I'm not sure I'm so keen on them, though. <laughs> Carl, can yeah. I have a Jaffa cake? Because I've just found a lump. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you don't mean me, do you? No, no, no. no Alright, no. good. Thanks, um, Steve. Now, we interviewed Carl there. We, I think we've learnt a little bit more about Carl there. You did, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to interview Steve now, um, Carl, because I used to be... You're concentrating. Mm. Don't put it all in at once. Carl, chew. Chew before you swallow. Careful. Um... Alright. Um... I used to suffer with that a lot. What? Not chewing. The amount of times I nearly died as a kid. <coughs> what? Forgetting to chew? Choking. Sure. Mint Imperials. Mm. My mum, my mum stopped her. <laughs> 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 Drinking them with water. <laughs> she have to hide them. Oh. <laughs> he's coming out of his shell, isn't he? He's happy Saturday. He's, he's miserable all week and he's happy Saturday, isn't he? Oh, look at him. <laughs> it's like we get in weekends. Yeah, yeah. And he's just happy because we sort of spoil him, don't we? And he has Jaffa <laughs> cakes and everything. We let him and on he has the radio. And live with his stepmom again, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> oh, no. The ones who listen. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Your girlfriend does, doesn't she? I imagine she's been away for ages. I know. I imagine she just switches off after a while. But you know, you know, we, you know, we love you, don't you? you know, we're excited. We talk about you in the week, and we, you know, we think you're great. So don't just think we're using you as cheap a... comedy material. <laughs> I hate you to think that, Carl. <laughs> right, no, I'm gonna interview Steve, you know, because I used to be a chat show host. Well, I am a chat show host. <laughs> well... Well, did you see me at Ricky Gervais? No. <laughs> I worked on it and I didn't watch it. <laughs> no one watched true, it. That's true, that's terrible. No one watched, no one watched it. it. What do you think, Carl? I loved it. See? Are you thinking of Parkinson? And I didn't know Ricky then, so I'm being fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna interview Steve Merchant now. Okay. Live on our XFM 104.9. We should say that more often. Yes. Ricky people, Gervais. Because they might tune and I think they've got a hospital radio <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Okay, um, Steve Merchant. <laughs> Great to be here. Thank Hi. You. Now, um, uh, you're a very tall man, yes. if I might say. You're six foot seven, aren't you? Yes. Was that a bit of a problem at school? Uh, well, yeah, a few few jokes here and there. Yeah, yeah. gentle rhythm, but not yeah. really too problematic. What's the weather like up there? Well, exactly. <laughs> Skinny, all that sort yeah. of thing. Oh, you're lanky. Yeah. Oh, dear. And, uh, that, but, yeah. uh, uh, what about the glasses? Well, I wear glasses, but again, they wouldn't really be a problem, you know. They didn't call you four eyes, really. They didn't call you four eyes, freaky lank no, thing. No, they didn't call no. you freak pot. Freaky the freakish. All right, I'm gimp. Not sure, I'm, four eyes gimp. Oh, well, I'm not sure. I'm just that's... saying, they didn't do that. As an interview, I'm not sure that's the best approach. Okay, okay. And then you I'm left school. His. You left school. Yeah. You went to university. Mm. There, were you called freaky, no, freak eyed, four eyed git? Are you sure? Never been called it. Were you called freaky, lanky, four eyed, stupid hair, um, boggle eyed, freak face? Fish face? Is your trash show coming back? <laughs> is this what you I never watched you, is this what you said to people like, I mean you had some big names on there didn't you, Tony Hart, yeah. that bloke off Ground Force. <laughs> <laughs> well the problem was they'd either heard of me or they hadn't. Either way, <laughs> either they didn't way wanna, it was a problem. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a problem. Who would you say was the biggest name you heard? Uh, they're all dead now. <laughs> okay. Um, probably the youngest one, uh, survived. I think Penny Smith is still with us. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, biggest name? You had Savile. Jimmy you? Savile. You had Daniels, Paul. Yeah, Paul Daniels, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and, but which was the biggest name would you say that you had on the show from the 1970s? <laughs> Peter Purvis. Peter Purvis, of course. <laughs> he was yeah. a joy. No, yeah. but, um... So that's just... But it's not coming back though, that show, we're not... It, 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 no, not, not, not in that form. They, the Channel 4 wants to see some changes. What sort of changes? Ratings. <laughs> right. Now I'm gonna play a lovely track. Thanks, Steve Merchant. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm gonna play a love story by Elvis Costello. I think one of his first hits, maybe even be his first hit back, back in the 70s. Um, this is, uh, Red Shoes. Zinger meets Spray, apparently. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of him. New. Sounds good. It's spelt Spry, though, but Carl reckons it's Spray. Song 2, a cover of, uh, Blur's Song 2. Yes. You wouldn't recognise it, In would the you? dub version? No. In a, an old school reggae dub style. Nice. Lee. Big em up. Yeah. All that. Oh, we know all that. Mm. We do, we do, all we the know. wording. Yeah. Oh, we know, we know all that, yeah. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, that was quite interesting.
I quite like that. Yeah, that's not, not bad. Filled up three minutes. Before that, I was still red shoes. Lovely. What a great song. Debut, was it? Debut single? I think so. I might, I, I, it's the first one I remember of his, but, you we'll know. We'll probably I mean, give Elvis a call, won't we, and chat about it? Yeah. He's a yeah. pal now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the old celebrity. Yes. Life. You, um, what, cos uh, you told me something else about your celebrity world that I thought might be of interest to the listeners. I don't know if you're happy to mention it. What? Your, uh, forthcoming TV appearance? Can't oh, yeah. Interested. Oh, yeah. What I've been it, invited. Please? I don't usually do these things. Yeah. But I, th I, I, I sort of quite like the show. I've watched it for a while. So I'm in Room 101. Have you seen this, Carl? Do you know that show? Mm. You don't <laughs> like it? No. But, but is it still Nick Hancock as well? No. Who is it? Paul Merton. God, is he still around? I've uh, seen him for ages. He's probably going to be a great pal of mine come Tuesday. No, sir. I mean, <laughs> that, that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> no. Have you, have you got all the channels tuned in right on your <laughs> Paul Merton's a huge star, he's on all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, is he heck? Yeah, he's on there, have I got news for you and all the rest of it? Yeah. What's the rest of it? Well anyway, look, <laughs> Room 101 <laughs> is the show. Room 101. Uh, is the yeah. show where you put in the things you hate into yeah. this imaginary room. And I thought I'd do it because it's for a laugh, because you know, they let you speak and it seems like a bit of fun. What so are you going to put in there? Oh, I did, well, well, ruin it, won't I, for all the listeners? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Switch off now if you don't want to hear what Ricky Gervais <laughs> is going to put in Room 101. I don't know, just things that irritate me. Like, I don't know, um, uh, I'm putting in noisy people, people who make unnecessary noise, for one thing. Like right. That. Right. Can I just stop you there for what, just one second? You know I know what, what you're going to say. No, 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 no. I, I just think, oh, I was just thinking, I just wonder if there's a little case there of the pot calling <laughs> the kettle black. Because you are the most annoying man ever in the history of all things. I mean, I've met a lot of people in my life, I like to think. Even everyone. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh. I think anyone I went to school with who was possibly, I mean, an evil man would throw things at people when, the, you know, the teachers just throw stuff at them all the way yeah. the lesson, throw things at the back of your head. Yeah. Even he was not ir as irritating as you are. Really? Just, just the fact that you're just crunching up a plastic spoon now. Whoa, what's talk, good is, is that? It's, it's annoying. Not... Yeah, I know, but oh, it's just, you're so irritating. You're always making the little noises, <laughs> just little sounds all the time. <laughs> we, were, we were working yesterday. We were working yesterday, right? And I was typing this, and he had an elastic band between his teeth, <laughs> right? I don't know how he got. You know, how he, he just seems to end up with an elastic band between his teeth, right? And he was flicking it, so it was making a noise, boom, 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 boom. What were you saying? You were just going, the rain on Spain falls <laughs> mainly on the plane. The rain, the rain in Spain, Spain stays mainly on, on the plane. plane. Just kept doing that, right? Repetitively. Yeah. I eventually, I said, what are you doing? What are you up to? He went, no, sorry. Tried to wrap the elastic band round his face, right? It flipped up, hit him in the nose. <laughs> right, he screamed, because that hurt, obviously, it came quite tight. And he said to me, he said, if I can flip this elastic band and hit your glasses, <laughs> right, not, not, not your face, but if I can hit your glasses, can I flip the elastic band at you? <laughs> I went, well, how am I going to find out if you can do it? You might hear my face. Uh, he went, well, why don't you cover up the skin on your face, yeah. your nose and everything, with uh, some paper. Which he did! Yeah, just to keep you happy. Yeah. And then he flicks it at me. So I grabbed it, flicks it at him. He ran off screaming, swearing at me. <laughs> don't fight at me! I was saying, don't be so childish. Retaliation is childish. I did it first, it's so... pathetic. Endlessly. Just this kind of... No, but you know, no, you agree with me on the people who just, like, I can't stand noisy eaters, people who go... No, no, like I, that. no and, I do uh, agree with that. And, and people eating crisps, as I said before, people eating crisps in cinemas. In, well, uh, anyone who's making noise in the cinema. It's oh, I know. Are they, they must be mental. They've gone to see a film, there's people they don't know there, everyone's paid eight quid... And they're and crunching and away. Oh, leaving their phones on! Why did you do your wristing? <laughs> crush. Uh, a a what? Crush. Had a crash. You had a crash? Yeah. That sounds like a story we've not explored. Not much to it. I just went on a free, uh, sort of rally day. Huh? Uh, got in this car. I'd been working all night, right, so I wasn't the best condition to be whizzing around a track <laughs> in a car. Sure. Uh, like a Formula One type car. Yeah. Uh, spun out of control, hit some mud, smashed it all in, uh, wrote it off, and I didn't realise I'd done a load of damage until... Well, you landed on your head, but you were fine. <laughs> yeah. Who's the winner? Mike Godlin. <laughs> <the prisoner. laughs> Bad time from the Jayhawks on XFM 104.9. Steve Motion, Ricky Gervais, Carl. We're having a good Denver. time. We are indeed. All right. Yeah. Carl, what you got lined up for us now? Um, right, well, you've got a choice. Nelly dead? You can have a bit of educating. Yeah, let's have educating. Come on. Educating, uh, Ricky. Can we just clarify what this is? I think a lot of new listeners perhaps don't, aren't familiar with this. It's when Carl looks on the internet and finds a weird story about, um, you know, the, the double, double knob, um, fun, and tells me about it, and it's usually not true. <laughs> okay. If it is true, I know it already. <laughs> Go on then, Carl. Um, 
They aren't really weird stuff, it's just stuff that's gone on. That's yeah. interested me, that's all it's yeah. about, and I don't care about it. I should just confirm that we've had a number of emails that say the baby born without a knob and then having one transplanted from a baby that luckily enough had two knobs yeah. is apparently true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, listen, yeah. listen, so, uh, I, I don't question that you that. could be born with a deformity and get someone's, you know, fingers, knobs, uh, what I'm saying is, it didn't happen with a doctor goes, I'll leave with it. I, I don't believe it, that baby's got two knobs. <laughs> exactly. What a coincidence. <laughs> I bet that little bit of information isn't in there, is it? Sure. That he went out the door, I'm gonna get a coffee, came back, uh, oh yeah, hold on, look, here's an extra knob, I found an extra knob. <laughs> uh, it, well, we put that knob on there. Perfect. <laughs> right, well you've gone, you've, uh, you've opted for the headline, it nearly died. Right? Yeah. It's about this elephant. Yeah. Um, eight years old. Yeah. In Africa. Yeah. Right. It's had quite a good life and that. Yeah. Um, but then what happens is, I don't know what it's been eating, but, um, <laughs> his teeth fall out. Yeah, that's what the, out of most elephants die that because they grind them down, the, the teeth until they can't chew anymore and they- most yeah. elephants of old- uh, dying of old age with an elephant is the fact that you haven't got teeth anymore. Hmm. Well it's had a good innings, it was 80. Yeah. Right? Um, so anyway, They so, just the food up and feed it to it and it lived quite happily? No, what they did was, the village got together, said, oh, it's the food for that's it. sad, isn't it? Um, made it some- False, false teeth. teeth. Made it some teeth. Out of wood. Wooden teeth for this elephant, that's 80. <laughs> what do you think of that? I don't know. I don't know if it's true, I don't know I mean. No, it is, forget that, you've been proved wrong once, it is true. What do you think about that? Oh, but, but it, it, Carl, it's like saying, yeah, me auntie Nora saw a ghost, what do you think about that? There's no comment, I can't comment on it. Would you have gone to the trouble, is what I'm saying? To build an elephant to It's tea. 80, it's 80. Yeah. With all the problems. Africa's got and that, and they're messing about making tea for an elephant. What problems have Africa got? Well, there's not enough food to go around, so if an elephant's dead, that's a bit more food left. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why? Yeah, but you're assuming this is in the middle of a village where there was famine and starvation. It might have been. It, it might have been South Africa, Kenya. No. You don't know. It's not all. It's not all Ethiopia. Or... If it was a busy city. People in the village wouldn't have time to be messing about with making tea and that, would they? It was a little village. <laughs> a little village. Yeah. And a local elephant. The local elephant, like a local post office, I'll meet you by the elephant. No, to be fair, Rick, I think I saw Bob Geldof on TV saying, please, people, stop making elephants' teeth. Uh, they are eating all the food, we're sending it over there. F the number, where's the teeth? <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know, it's possible. I mean, teeth. it's possible. It's possible that they've made this elephant some, some, uh, some dentures. It is possible. Wouldn't yeah. it have been easier to just pulp it? Uh, exactly. I'd I'd thought, it up, serve it some soup or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you're making its teeth, you know, it's really. So I'd, I'd have thought it's a, you know, I wouldn't have thought it would work for very long, and I wouldn't have thought the elephant uh, would understand that it was teeth. So I, I wouldn't have been able to thought that the villagers could do it. I mean, top veterinary surgeons could have done some, uh, but I think they made it all goodwill. But I don't want to thought it worked, so they probably end up dying or pulping it, like I suggested. But you know, thanks very much. Play a record. No, uh, but didn't you say something about wooden teeth? Someone you know. I'd Wooden teeth. Mm. I don't know, I think that was possibly my grandparents. They had wooden teeth. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was wooden. I think the palate was wood and then the teeth were as you would normally yeah, it's like so, from the 16th century though, isn't well, it? Well, it was, it was the 1940s. They used to hammer them in without anaesthetic. Really? Yeah. Just to put into the roots that wouldn't, oh. God. That's, that's rubbish time, isn't it? To live. And, 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 and other people's teeth, other dead people's teeth, you could replace it, just that, just bang it in for a while. Oh. Oh, God. Unbelievable. Oh, dear. Play a record, Carl. <laughs> if you've had your teeth, if you've had teeth hammered into your gums, placebo, English summer rain on XFM 104.9. Right, okay, you got the final educating Ricky, Carl? Uh, Get a load of this court case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened was, right, uh, Allegedly. The fella's in court for something that he shouldn't have done, right? Yeah. You've got all the detail then, at your fingertips. And the jury says, uh, he's guilty, right? And the judge went, what, he's not guilty, off you go then, right? He misheard it. <laughs> um, yeah. they couldn't do anything about it, cause once, once the judge has sort of said, you're not guilty, off you go, off you go, you can go home. And the jury were like, what, what, are, you, hey, uh, what are you doing? They said he's, he's guilty. And I was like, what do you think of the Thorns albums? 
I'm quite a big fan, Rick. Yeah, I like that sort of alt country sound. I think. I it's, know. Uh, I like the combination you made. That was that's what I think. really good. The Jayhawks. <laughs> thanks for that one. There was the Angian one, wasn't there? There was the Angian one that happened. Are you still there? Um. Have you, what, what bands have you got been checking out recently? Any new things? Oh, just to explore all kinds of stuff. Obviously, you know, I like dipping back into the old stuff. I've tell you, I've been appreciating a lot recently, Rick. Billy Bragg. Oh, brilliant, yeah. yeah great guy, great guy. Isn't, isn't he playing, isn't he playing He's playing in March, yeah, you might want to try and You heard about the, the, the Angin one when, the, when the fellow was- Sorry, mate, go, go on. When the fellow was Ong. Well, uh, uh, he, he was Ong and, uh- Ong? Was, so it was Ong? He was Ong by a rope. So, isn't that- No, no, I think it was- wasn't he, uh, a Chinese- Emperor and the main thing, wasn't he young? Yeah. Sorry, was sorry, he was young. Some fellow who'd done something they they hung him. Oh, it's not a word anymore. He was young. Well, don't be doing that again because you said squoze wasn't a word, and then I showed you a menu today that someone sent, and it said fresh orange. Yeah, squoze. Inadvertent commas, and next to it was the word colour spelled C O L O R. So presumably on the American menu. Right, in which case, there's loads of American words that we don't use, or it's just a badly typed piece of work. Anyway, there was a bloke that was on. He was on and that, uh, but he, he didn't die. On and that, he was definitely a Chinese. <laughs> yeah, on and yeah. that, yeah. I remember him now, yeah. He didn't die, and they said, oh, just hang on a minute whilst we change the rope and that, and he stood there waiting, changed yeah. the rope. They, uh, tried to, you know, do it again, and, uh, didn't work. It didn't work, right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. um, they got another rope, right? No. Didn't work. And, uh, and then they, they mm. had to let him go, because it's like a, there's a well-known saying or something from, from this thing. Yeah. Do what? You, have you seen, um, have you, do you like, uh, Oh My Car Is On by, um, no. Tim Burgess' single? I don't know that right, I'm actually That's brilliant. Can we play a bit later? No. Yeah, we can play a bit. Let's play a record now, and we'll, um, we'll, um, talk more of it later. Yeah. Hey, can you, Cole, can you, um, would you shut up? <laughs> oh my car is on. Tim Burgess, brilliant. XFM 104.9. Right. Well, uh, we're running out of time here. Yeah. We had Carl in a little film, but I think we've really got time for monkey news, you know? Yeah. What are you thinking, Carl? Yeah, if you want to do that. Yeah, let's do monkey news. Alright. Play uh, the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Uh, right, there's this monkey, right? Oh, yeah. I think his name was number six or number seven or something, right, in this, in this lab, right? Yeah. And, uh, anyway, it's in there, <laughs> uh, with, like, you know, the rabbits and little mice and stuff like that. And, uh... The, the rabbit smoking. The nurse, right, the nurse, not, well, not the nurse, the, the, the woman who works in the lab, what would you call her? The nurse? Depends. What, what turns out her job was, if she was a lab assistant, you call her a lab assistant. Right. I mean, they probably call her by her name. Alright, lab assistant, right. Kirsty. So, uh, so she's... I think it's Ker probably Kirsty. Right, Kirsty Morris. Well, she's in there, right? Yeah. And she doesn't work with many people and that, she's mainly on her own with, you know, just putting lipstick on rabbits and stuff like that, right? She even fancies it? So, uh... <laughs> she even fancies it? She's putting on lipstick, she even fancies it? She's got hairy legs? He gets, he gets pally, right, yeah. with, with this woman. Yeah. Because... You know, it, 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 it gets to a point when she sees him every day. It's the way he tries to string out like it's a narrative love story. <laughs> let, let. A the chip put his hand out and grabbed her, and then you're thinking that he made a move on her. So, right, come on, he's allowed out, he's allowed out. Oh, it's not a story, is it? He's allowed out of the cage and what have you. Yeah. you know, so, um, he's wandering about, and as time goes on, he's watching what she's doing more and more. Yeah. Right? So, he, he notices, like, the code on the door, right? <laughs> right. She, whatever, two, four, seven or whatever. Yeah. He goes, right, I've clocked that, I've got yeah. that, I'll remember that, right? Mm. And then he goes, right, there's a lot of lipstick and that knocking about, a lot of makeup. Right, okay. No, no, no. there's no, no way. Finish. No. Because, so, Steve, you know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen. So he's there. It's ridiculous. And he's going, well, if it's there, you know what I mean? So, so, while she's messing about with the rabbit, he gets there, he's in front of the mirror, putting a little bit of lippy on. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> No! I it's gone too far! No, it's gone too fast, Steve! Your mic's off, Rick. He's facing right. the story. So Turn mine off as well. It's, gone it's looking pretty good. I didn't mention the mascara! It's looking alright, right? So it knows the code on the door, 247, right? So when she's sort of messing about with the rabbit, right? He goes, right, right? So it knows the code on the door, 247, right? So when she's sort of messing about with the rabbit, right? He goes, right, here's my chance. He's looking good. Two, four, seven. Out the door. Your man's there. He's like, all right, Kirsty. Right. No, talk, talk. 
Shit! I've got three from Cream Burst. Pretty much the last track. It's Nick Cohen's, I imagine, on XFM 104. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I've got nothing to say after that ridiculous, ridiculous story. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's worse than the bank robbery to me. Yeah. That he clocks out. And, and the bloke on the desk. All right, Kirsty. Oh, you're two foot shorter <laughs> and hairy. She was not a anyway. <laughs> she wasn't a looker anyway. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, play record and say cheerio. We'll see you next week. Oh, for the last time. Oh, Everett. Oh, I'd love to end with Everett. See you later. It's brilliant. Going out on a bang. <laughs> I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming in for Carl. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee, that question's for Carl. Yeah, okay, no, <laughs> fair enough, that works. Okay. Um, this is from Jim and Bob in Manchester. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh, insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but that's, yeah, that's broad well, to anything. Animal, well, no, animal, any creature. The, the insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. I'm just thinking about Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um, I'd, I'd probably go for the tortoise. Okay. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. just because... Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot. You know what I mean? Through wars and stuff. Well, if you get an old one, if you get like an old one, that's about. Yeah. Most of them have lived in a box in a garden for fifty-two years. No, you, but you, but you get some that have been about, and even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, have they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some one, of them have. Well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But um, they've broadened their horizons a bit more than you. They could probably teach you a thing or two. Yeah. And I'll what just, would you hope to learn from them? Just, just history. <laughs> right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. Other emails. We've had a lot of questions about time travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good, as it? It's like a place you go on holiday. And you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in... Going back to places. What, and all do, that. what what do you understand the question as? Uh, do do you, do you think they're asking? Would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back? You are that child again. You're in the body. You are the child. Or you've got your adult um, head and experiences. Well, on, you know, you, you Rick, can... I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, let's be did. honest. But now that you've flagged I them up, I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Too big for foot. the chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, okay. Well, choose then... an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on. I think let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again? How would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever, but then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff, because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book, is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What, what about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could, you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like, uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does at the ghost of Christmas past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yeah, you're not, not changing. You're just observing. Anything. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you question. What. It, this is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. Do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I nearly died once in a, on a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's absurd. About? You're now saying you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <laughs> and we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch something. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> 
I don't think you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I... mind can't All fathom right, something unless it's, like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, safe this one good moment when I was about six that I loved. Mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You could go back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. Migrant workers in South China are wearing adult diapers on packed trains heading home for the New Year holiday because they've got no access to the toilet. Many supermarkets in this particular part of China have reported a 50% increase in sales of adult nappies for the train trips. Now, what do you make of that, Carl? You're on a long, long train journey. Three hours, four hours. You know there's no toilet. You know you're going to need to go. Pop on a... Why isn't there any toilets? They just aren't on the, the trains. And they're a really long journey. Yeah. How long? Hours. Well, very long in China. It's a big country. I, I wouldn't... I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to hold it in or something. Just like, uh, I mean, when I, when I was a young kid, I don't know how young you are when you wear a nappy and that, but um, I remember that I didn't like it, doing it in a pair of pants like that, a pair <laughs> of nappies and that. And I used to have to, uh, even when I was too small to sort of get up on the toilet and that, because you'd fall in. Um, <laughs> my mum knew that I didn't like nappies and that. I used to just go in in the corner, just near the kitchen, in this thing that, like a like a litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go there, and uh, I'd do <laughs> me thing. And uh, you know, my mum used to say, "Oh, he's, he's going there. Don't look at him and that," because it put me off. You know, like cats don't like being watched when they do it. <laughs> when they go in their litter tray in the kitchen. No, they don't. They don't like it. Look, I tested it what again. are you just like a little feral kid just running around and going to the litter tray, covering it up, and then running up the curtain and eating a, a sweet at the top of the pelmet? No, but no, but nobody <laughs> likes being watched, and that's what I'm saying. If you're sat on a train and you're knocking one out and that, and everyone's looking at you, it's, I, don't, I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> Well, it has caught on. Has they're caught all doing it. They're just, they're just, they're just sitting there. They're doing, you know, they're reading the paper, doing Sudoku, <laughs> and 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 they're looking round when they're going. They're thinking, oh, no one knows I'm going. And everyone's thinking that, and everyone's going. I mean, what, what, what are we getting to? You know what I mean? What, what's going on in the world that like, this is happening? I know. I mean, people have always had to travel for ages. <laughs> I, d I, d I just don't. I don't understand why there isn't a toilet on it. We're going backwards. <laughs> We're going backwards, aren't we? Why isn't there a toilet on it? <laughs> well, maybe there is, but maybe people are thinking the queue is going to take forever. If you've got 125 million people, yeah, but not back. everybody wants to go at once. I mean, I know Chinese and all that are like at the forefront of everything that goes on in the world, inventing stuff first, but this isn't one of the best <laughs> that they've come up with. What have they yeah. invented then, the Chinese? Just loads of stuff, haven't they? Yeah, well, loads of stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you seem quite educated on the subject, but... Um, they did them cat mop things that I told you about. Brilliant. Um, I mean, this was could... where you put mops on the feet of cats, was that right? Yeah. And they wander about the house, clean up and that, wash the floor for you, whilst you're pottering about. Um, <laughs> they've done, like, hats with umbrellas on them, they've done... They've done... I mean, they've, they've been known for, like, coming up with stuff first. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was gunpowder, but, yeah, Cats and Mops is good as well. <laughs> well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down, yeah! <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just, well, yeah, just annoyed of, about sort something? Of. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <sighs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep.
Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. Oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? I gave that a go. Um, about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that, so I said, oh, I'll come to have a dance, and like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Right, so which of these you choosing? Uh, uh, I'll have the, uh, the, is that important? What, you want, you want to do it now? I was just okay, going to yeah, 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 on, 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 on now, yeah, come on. All it's right. Christmas Eve, you open one, come on. Uh, you know I don't like anteaters. Why? Okay, so I should just point out to people that as far as Carl is convinced, the stories that he's about to relate are absolutely 100% true. Yeah. You be the judge of whether he's seen them on the internet, of course they're true. Go on. And he is, yeah. Why don't you like them? I've told you before, I just don't, sort of. It annoys me that an animal's named after what it eats. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need Yeah, that. but it didn't choose it, did it? Yeah, but if there's nothing else that it can be called, it's like, oh, what's it do? I don't know. What's it eating? <laughs> It's eating ants, right, let's call it an anteater. What, it's not, what, not good enough. But why are you annoyed at it, though, for someone else calling it being lazy? Because it obviously doesn't do anything else. Do you know what I mean? But what, what do you want to do? The Chartered Surveyor? Well, whatever, just the proper name. What's the proper name? Well, I'm just saying... But tell me an animal that's a proper name to you. A beaver. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> why is that a proper name? <laughs> It doesn't matter anyway, that's, that, I don't understand what they're right, about. You, right? you and Anthony have got issues. <laughs> you know, right? Okay, I don't, sometimes I genuinely don't understand what his thought processes are. Yeah. Go on, right, okay, and Anthony, you don't like Anthony, it's because they just eat ants and that's what they're named that's after, go on. Right. Um, <laughs> do you know that <laughs> an anteater yeah. can, uh, stick its tongue in and out 160 <laughs> times in a minute? No, didn't know that. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's rubbish. Thanks. No, but do you think that's good? Because I, I don't know what, what, what do you mean? So I call Norris McWhirter? Yeah. What do you mean do I think that's good? What, compared to what? You see, I, I, I read it and thought, so what? So it's interesting. Well, we think so what as well. So, so you still put it down as something interesting to tell me? <laughs> no, but it's the fact that that is mentally amazing. I Who's did claiming it's amazing? I did 148 last night in a minute, right? <laughs> Oh, well, hold on. There's my nipple. How many could you do if you uh, if the, it meant you had to touch my nipple at the end? <laughs> Ten thousand pounds. Then baby bear, XFM one hundred four point nine. We do talk twaddle. Oh, God. I mean, it, I don't know why we haven't got complaint. We haven't got any complaints, have we? We've no had, listeners. We've had one. No one listening. 
No, it must be that, because Kilroy, he, he's probably got a big show, and he's, he's all over the place, yeah. Paul, you know. He's, mind you, he, uh, you know, I'd be annoyed if he'd have said that about me. Yeah. But he's got to be careful who he annoys, because he would end up having to move him with Salmon Rushdie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Is Salmon, he'd, uh, is he still on the run? No. No, he's out. I've, I've, I've seen him twice. Yeah. I think he's out all the time now. I bet his flat's a pigsty. Sure. It was not neat when he was living with 400 CIA people yeah, and yeah, a couple yeah. of... Yeah. You, uh, remember he went in to hide in, I, I think it was mid-80s, I can't remember exactly. Yeah, that's right. He went into hiding, he was in there, he was hiding, basically, surrounded by security guards, confined to his flat for about ten years or something. I'd have thought so, yeah. Have you ever seen a picture of his missus? <laughs> yeah, are you annoyed? Well, I mean, man alive, she's like a sort of, I think she's like a former Miss India or something, stunning. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen a picture of him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might be a great man and a talented writer and an intellectual fella, but, Jesus. Do something know. with the beard. Well, it's, well, yeah, but he's busy, isn't he? What? He's busy writing well, and stuff. Who did he pull her? When he was just basically in there? In his flat? I don't know. Internet? <laughs> Possibly. Just, just <laughs> got to know him and then, uh, she kept saying, send a picture. He goes, no, no I'm not sending a picture, come round. Yeah. Read some of the books, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. She goes, well, I, yeah, now I'm in love with you. Let's have yeah. a look. All right, well, I'm in love with you now, so. Yeah. You know, he's going, got me own place. <laughs> got me own place, yeah. I've got, I got a few staff. Yeah, there's a few other people hanging around. Exactly. Don't, don't worry about you it. Know. I mean a lot. I'll tell you something else that'll annoy you. Yeah. Stephen Hawking, not only married, but dumped her for his, uh, nurse. Extraordinary, isn't it? So he's pulling birds left, right and centre. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's true that I, you know, I mean, not so much now, but years ago I was not the ladies' man. But you I are now. Really. You weren't sort of so I was just you, weren't, exactly you weren't the James Bond type that you've, uh, I wasn't the James Bond of TV comedy. I remember, I remember I Carl, when he, you first met him about three years ago, what did you think? Just a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! And that's coming from him. I know. Yeah. But I'll tell you what used to really annoy me, you're talking of, do you remember there was that story, I think it was a world record breaking attempt, there was a bloke, I think it was up in a car park, in a pub car park, oh, in sort of Leeds or something. No, right? Mansfield. It Mansfield. was a car park in Mansfield, and he broke the record for being buried alive. Being buried alive. I mean, and he was literally in a casket. Like, in, not David Blaine, out in the lovely yeah. sunshine with loads of Jonathan Ross waving to you. Yeah. No, none of that. Paul McCartney calling you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, he was buried alive, in the dark, with just a tube. Yeah. For communication. I think he was buried about, he's buried like 10 feet underground. He, yeah. There's a tube which they, people would communicate and send and stuff And put down water down and, and, and I remember reading the story, I, kept, I was interested in it, I remember reading it, and there was one element of the story. You would think it was a cheap holiday. Well, <laughs> you're, not, you're not gonna pay those prices. 400 quid, hope seasons, you're having a laugh. That's nothing. <laughs> Mansfield Car Park. And, uh, there was another one. It said in the, in the news report, it said that while he was down in the ground, he began and ended a relationship with a woman. While he was down there, some fan who was a fan of what he was doing, he started communicating with her through the tube. They, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but they began a relationship and it ended. And I have to say, I remember thinking, you know, it, when you read that there's a man, how did it end? Well, Why I don't did you think that this isn't working? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's twice you've stood me up. Yeah. Well, I'm, I can't get out, can I? But I remember thinking at the time, you know, I, I was going to say I was not the sort of the ladies' man that I am now. I remember at the time reading it and thinking, there's a bloke, you know, he's pulling women. Ten feet underground <laughs> through a tube. Through a tube. I'm, I'm, I'm out and about. Yeah. With some of the most expensive hair products <laughs> on the market. <laughs> I've got to sit down and ask myself some very serious questions. Oh dear. Extraordinary. I don't know if he did the if he did the um the the, the world record attempt. I don't know if he broke it. I don't know how that happened. But uh, good luck to him. I don't what, know do, what, what do you mean a hole though? Like a, like what? The, the, a proper thing or is he moving about? How big is no, it? No, it was just that. I think it was just buried alive in a casket. I don't know, just down there, probably down on his back maybe, just waiting for little bits of but, water. But could he get out if he wanted to? Well yeah, he could say, can you get me out? He couldn't just leave and then come back. There was people- So someone's there then? Uh, no, they buried him and said, <laughs> well, we better go back in a couple of weeks, see how he's doing. What do you mean someone's there? Of course there's someone there. Norris McWhirter for one, I'd imagine, going, three days, <laughs> just a few more to go. And what, why- Is it Norris or- part? Who's- who's alive? Russell or Norris? Uh, I think it's Norris. Right, yeah. Thinking of, yeah. What's yeah, that? It annoys me a bit all this sort of, you know, getting in a hole and in a box and all that and people going, oh, that's- that's good. I mean, if he was doing something when he was down there, making something or whatever, you'd go, that's- that's quite clever, but I don't understand all the fuss about- I don't know, people are just making a fuss about things that aren't that clever these days, it's just- you know I, what I mean? I don't reckon he beat Anne Frank's record. No, I think she's got the record. 
I know, and she did something, she wrote a book. She so, you must be, you must think that she's pretty good then. Yeah, but at least she did something. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I mean. There's some fuss, um, about a woman who's going up Everest on a bike. Right. <laughs> Someone's walked it. That's harder than going on a bike. <laughs> no, it's not. Of course it is. Of course it's not. Of course it is. Not okay, uphill. Than riding about on a bike's better than walking everywhere. Yeah, but not uphill. Well... No? Don't agree with me. Mm. Why do people get off their bike and walk it up a hill? They don't always ask you people... No, but why Why do they? When people yeah, are going up a hill saying. on a bike but they get off just and push saying, the bike... Just saying. No, what, what, why is that? It doesn't matter. Because it's... Do you think it's because it's harder? They go, I'll tell you what, this would be a lot easier on the bike, but I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm on a bit of a challenge. I'll get off and walk up this hill. Then, you do be... Go along then. Clap for her and that. You know what I mean? When someone's doing a London Marathon in a car, you can go and clap them because that's just the same as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's not hard. Play record. So Alive, Ryan Adams on XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, for the last time. Well, you might do some other stuff later. So oh yeah, I mean, yeah, stuff. for for a little while at least. Well, we won't be around for, yeah, foreseeable future. Yeah. Better things to do, bigger fish to fry. Oh, well, you've got your music show that you'll do, that's surely really good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. the other radio stations are more interesting. Just, yeah. I think we've just got enough energy there for the last 35 minutes. Yeah. We've given them a lot, Steve. We've, we've given them a lot. We've come in here, week in, week out, every Saturday. Never late. We've always given them, you know, 30%. Every, every really <laughs> great <laughs> that we've got, oh, 30% yeah. of energy. Right. Come up to Christmas. Some people forget the true meaning of Christmas. I just think it's drinking and giving presents. But obviously, it comes from the story of the, the nativity. Very briefly, what is the story of Christmas as you as you remember? This baby Jesus was born. So. Hmm. Okay. Let's let's. Can we expand on that a little? Um. Let's start the night before. What happened on Christmas Eve? She was, um, Mary was pregnant. Right. She's wandering about, um, you know, probably knowing it was due. Was she knocking about with the three fellas at that point? No. <laughs> no. Three fellas being... The wise men. No. She wasn't with them. No. Who was she with? I honestly don't know. What was her husband called? Her husband was... I don't know. I wasn't that interested in, in Ari. Jesus right. was born. Right, okay. Um, and Mary and Joseph, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They travelled, didn't they? On a donkey? Yeah. What happened? She's pregnant. Yeah, we've done that. And then she's like, I'm gonna have this kid in a bit, sort somewhere out. Right. He says, she we're going to struggle. She came from Salford. It's Christmas oh. Eve. Right. Um, no. And they stayed at a... They no, stayed no, at no, a, no. It wasn't Christmas Eve, was it? All right, then it's just a normal day. Yeah. And they stayed... I mean, they couldn't, find, it, they couldn't find anywhere. Right. So they stayed in a stable. Right. She had the kid on December 25th. Um, that's it. Then w what happened? That's it. Really? No, it was the three fellas she was knocking about with at the beginning. The wise thought. men. Right. And uh, there was a star involved, they followed a star. Um, you see, you're making me look like a divvy, but it wasn't an important lesson at school. I wasn't, I'm not a Catholic or anything, I'm nothing. I'm sort of, my mum even said, she said, don't tell anyone that you're not anything. She said, because it's something about witches. When I was a kid. <laughs> When you're a kid, you're at risk of being taken away People by... People think he's a character. People think this is scripted. No. Imagine if I bothered writing this. But it's not important. You, you, it's, it's so not important, this story. What did your mum say about witches? No, she just said, don't go around telling people you're not christened or anything. Right. Um, I did a bit of... I did a Sunday school thing. Um, called Crusaders. Right. Joined that, but I just went on like the Friday when they had Sabutio and table football, and then they came knocking on the Sunday saying, "Come on, you've got to come with us." Right. And I went, and it was rubbish. There was no Sabutio. There's an old fella reading out a smelly Bible, really old books, and I hated it. I said, "I'm not going on a Sunday again." So I used to just go on the Friday, and um, <laughs> yeah, mm. that 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 is religion for me. 
There you go. I didn't need it. I don't need an old story. Final thoughts. What does Christmas mean to you then, Carl? If you don't like old stories, what does Christmas mean to you? Just look, look down and tell people what they should be thinking of this Christmas. What does it mean to you? Um, it's hassle, isn't it, Christmas? Um, Got to buy presents. Uh, the meal's all right, the food's all right. It's the best, isn't it? If the roast dinner is the, uh, you know, the king of meals, surely the Christmas roast is the king of roasts. Yeah. Um, Christmas. I could do without it. If someone said, we're getting rid of it, I'd go, all right. I don't like all the build-up. I don't like that bit in between Christmas and New Year when nothing's happening. That's a dead week. Nothing goes on. People are still off for Christmas. Christmas has happened. Get back to work. You can get nothing done. Everything comes to a standstill. Why do you like Christmas? Uh, I like being allowed to drink gin and tonic at 10am while watching Noah Ledman's Give Little Sick Kids Presents. Well, that's what I mean. That's what it's about. It's not about, you're saying to me, telling me the story of baby Jesus, you haven't got a clue yourself. It's not about that, it's about, like you say, eating chocolates. Same as Easter is for fat people with chocolate. <laughs> I love Easter, no you don't, you like eggs, you like chocolate, you fat little... Do you know what I mean? So, we don't need it. Maybe back then, when you were, you know, wise men knocking about a desert, they needed something to look forward to. They probably didn't live that long. I don't think they were looking forward to Easter though, were they? No, but they listen. But, but Jesus you, certainly wasn't you had looking nothing. forward to Easter. Back then, when you watch Scrooge, yeah. everyone's looking forward to it. Tiny Tim, go and get a chicken. <laughs> now, these days, have a chicken when you want. Anyone can afford it. So it, doesn't, it hasn't got the same values. <coughs> Tiny Tim, go and get a chicken. Oh. Uh, happy <laughs> Christmas. Brilliant. All right. <coughs> I think Carl... It, it, it sees, sees things um, very different to the rest of us. He's a true artist. He sees the world differently. He, he does investigate. He does do what science does. He says why, how, without prejudice as well. And I think that's what's nice. And that can be provocative, but you've Wait, got to realise... Sorry, I've got to stop you, mate, because the little earpiece has come off in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't get that out. I can't get that out. He's terrified. He's terrifying people. <laughs> Alright, don't panic. Oh. Calm down, oh. calm no, down. Sorry, sorry. So, can you hear us, or is it just, is it still in there, or is it? It's, it's stuck in there. But can you hear us? Is can we get any... some tweezers? I can right. hear it. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay, right. This happened once, he went to the shops, and he, he, with it, and the, <laughs> he had an earbud sticking out, and he didn't know till he got home and looked in the mirror, he'd been shopping with an <laughs> earbud. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so there's the science. How does this man function, for Christ's sake? That's the sign. You got it. It's all right. We're okay. Uh, for Carl, uh, just to follow up on that, uh, I mean, I know you, these guys, like, they're your mates and stuff, but don't you get sick of them calling you a moron? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think of yourself as a moron? It does me head in. But... No, and I think pe when people watch the programme, they'll realise that I'm not a div. Um, they'll, they'll see themselves in me, I think. Most normal people who, you know, aren't travellers and go to foreign places and stuff, it, it is a shock to the system. Um, mm. And I think, I think they'll see themselves in me. But it is, it does get on my nerves with, you know, they're always annoying me. And, <laughs> I know people always sort of say, oh, it must be great being mates with Ricky. But it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what it's like. It's like when, um, when you get a dog and it seems like a good idea at the time, doesn't it? You go, oh, it'd be great to have a dog around the house. And then you realise it's a pain in the arse and it's shitting everywhere. But everyone's going, oh, what a cute dog. The people who come round love that dog, but they don't know what it's like, the ins and outs of having that dog. And that's what it's like having him as a mate. So um, he was kidnapped. Um, without realising, uh, two men appeared, put a bag over his head and dragged him into the back of a van. That was a highlight That's for you, wasn't it? it? Yeah, and he, he thought it was real. And it's one of the funniest two minutes of television I've ever been involved in. <laughs> he was honestly terrified. Thoughts, Carl? I, I, was, I was properly terrified. Um, I was talking about it today, I, I was aware that I had a, 
a heart, do you know like when you get stressed out, your heart beats harder than it normally does, I could feel it in my head. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sort of an adrenaline junkie, I'm not the sort of person who likes danger, I don't do bungee jumping, uh, skateboarding, what else? You don't do anything. <laughs> no, I, 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 don't, I don't need that sort of danger in my life, so to suddenly be sort of being battered and a bag over the head, chucked in the back of a van and that, I think it's probably the most the scariest I've ever been. Your, your day isn't an average day. What you do isn't an average day. You don't do anything normal. It annoys you when you call me and I'm at home doing DIY or whatever, but that is a normal life. Right. And I, I think, I don't think you live in the real world, really. Because that's not my job. Plumbing and tiling and grouting and I called him once and he had his hand down a drain just covered in shit and pubic hair. He was loving it. Okay, why am I, why am I gonna go, ooh, I've got any drains blocked, right? I earn more than a drain cleaner. So why would I do it myself when I can hire a drain cleaner? He'd, he's embarrassed by doing this. I love him, I love his attitude, he's great. I can't believe we found this man who is never gonna be touched and ruined by fame, right? It's but, not even about that. Well, I don't understand why you're happy to hand over a load of money when it's something you can do yourself. It doesn't matter how much you earn. Because I'm, I'm out, busy, I'm off. busy, I'm doing this. You're not this. busy all the time. What I've seen I... you, you leave the office with him at half three, <laughs> but you'd still get someone in to clear the shit out of your Carl, brains. because we're intense, we work for three hours, and when, we're geniuses. They said it, they said it earlier. We're geni- they said that. We're geniuses. Einstein right. didn't put his hand down bogs. Can I just <laughs> ask? The person who asked the question, I couldn't hear your name because there's a lot of noise and delay and everything. Do you put your hand down the drain and clear your own shit out or do you pay for someone to do it? <laughs> I know the answer. What was the answer? She, she calls her managers or her, the maintenance people. She does not do it. Manager? Apartment manager. Like her building manager, building not manager. the bloke who's manager. her boss at work. <laughs> That's the science right here. How does it function? How has it lived for 38 years? We don't know. Let's ask science. For Carl, uh, Carl, if they're gonna see you as sort of a lovable moron, um, how would you describe Stephen and Ricky? Mm. Uh, and are you the real brains of this operation? Or? Um. I've always described Steve as weird. That hasn't changed in the seven years I've known you. What? Um, Why is he weird? It's just when, when I first met you, the, the look of you, there's no point, you know that, I've told you time and time again, it was just a shock. The height, <laughs> it didn't help because you're next to something that's smaller than the norm anyway. <laughs> so you two came in, it was a shock. Um, I've got used to it now. If I don't see you for a few weeks now and again, I sort of go, bloody hell. <laughs> but I've got used to it, but I'd say, Strange is, is, the, is the description for Steve. With Ricky, I, I kind of think, uh, like an iron lung, <laughs> that, that I sort of need him, but I wish I didn't. <laughs> Ricky, Carl, Steve, thank you so much for being here today. Carl you Pilkington, on? good afternoon. Alright, what's, what's going on? You alright, mate? Yeah, yeah. I used to start, you know, I'm grouting. Up a ladder, phone keeps ringing, eight, eight missed calls. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, it must be important, someone died or something. But well, I don't know. The fella saying, come on the radio. I don't understand. I've on the radio all week to plug the DVD, which is out now, in early abroad. Nobody was interested. <laughs> Suddenly you're on, you say call him up, but everyone's got to start panicking, getting me on the air. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still grouting? You've been grouting all week. I mean, it must be, are you doing a shoddy job or are you doing going over things? I don't understand. They're little small tiles, aren't they? It takes ages. But, Carl... You no, know, you've never done it in your life. No, I you? don't. No, because my time is, I get paid more than a tiler, so it would be mad for me to spend yeah. my time tiling. I wouldn't be saving That's money, right. I'd be losing money. <laughs> so right, you well, earn more than a tiler. Well, so, no, I don't. I, not, not at the moment. Nothing's, nothing's happening, is it? Nothing's rolling in at the moment. Your DVDs are? No work is coming in. Your DVDs at number five in the charts. Yeah, but, hey, Richard, you don't see that money for ages, mate. <sighs> Honestly. 
Nothing happens. He's so annoyed. He was annoyed, right? We've just got an animation on in uh, uh, America, Canada, um, uh, Scandinavia, Australia, right? Channel Four, right? Being a uh, second series being made. Yeah. All those. Yeah. He's Amen. going. He's going. When are we getting paid? When are we getting paid? He, he thinks it's going to come every week in a little brown envelope with gum on it. No, it doesn't. I don't, it... I don't know how long I'm going to be around for. And anything else, like you say, if I was a tiler, I'd do the tiling and then the person would pay me. Right. But in this line of work, everyone's always oh, quite ready yet. The money's in a pot. Where's the pot? Where's the money? <laughs> it just annoys me because someone right. could buy it Carl, who's, who's Carl, buying this off. Carl, and I... that was, a, that was a, a metaphor. There's no real pot. When they said, oh, it's got to go in the pot, they meant... All those DVDs, they go in there and they feel what the profit is, and then we get a profit share. Most people don't get a profit share. You have walked into this job under the wing of me and Steve Merchant. You should be so lucky. You've had the easiest ride of anyone in entertainment ever in the history of the world. No, it's not good, though. Everyone keeps going, oh, you must be a millionaire. No, I'm not, because the money's split. So many hands are out. Every <laughs> job I do, Ricky and Steve weren't away with me when I was abroad, yet they get a big bib of it. They've got their hand out. Their agents have got their hands out. <laughs> I am not a millionaire, so let's get that out there. I'm skint at the moment. No money's coming in. I've just been on the phone then. The reason I didn't answer one of the eight calls that I've just had is because I was on the phone to the electric people, giving them a meter reading. They all want paying on time. I can't, they, they, I can't just tell them, oh, the money's in the pot. The tax man. The money's in the pot. You can have it when I get the pot. I don't know when I'm getting paid. That's how it works. I'm sick of it. <sighs> Good, well, thanks very much, Carl. Yeah, thank so, you, Carl. Carl, what, what room are you grouting? Just in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen, right, OK. But what yeah. are you... Is it all, all tiled? It must be like being well, inside a bath. No, there's one wall that there was tiles up. I pulled some off. The wall underneath was damaged, so I thought, right, I, I best not pull them all off. But what I'll do, I'll get my Dremel out. I'll take you out what? all the... You grout, what? The, you the what? The Dremel. The Dremel. It's like a tool that you use for getting the grout out. Right. Take out all the grout... Put new grout in, they look as good as new. Thanks, Anyway, Carl. time for the news. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the format of five lines. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Bye-bye. Carl, we're often accused of bullying you. This is a, a recurring thing, isn't it, that we bully you? But both of us, and, Carl, and Ricky in particular, is always concerned about your well-being, um, particularly in Alaska, if you recall. You are not going to be eaten by a polar bear, but... When you had your medical, I found out that you didn't let them test your prostate, did you? No. No. But that's, that's... Why not? In the UK alone, more people die every year from prostate cancer than being savaged by a polar bear. It's a bit of a weird time to bring it up when I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's one of the biggest killers, right? And, and that's just a simple test. So a doctor pops his finger up your anus and he goes, yep, you're all clear. And that's you relax for another year. I, I, I don't understand why you're suddenly caring about this now. I've got little battery left on this phone. I'm wearing the battery out. If right. something happens, I'm dead. Right. He's my best mate. Sue me. I'm worried about him. Yeah, yeah. No, but why isn't there ever anything about how's your blood pressure? Or how are your feet? You, you're in the cold. Are you warm enough? You, no, because it was none of that. It was, yes, I know. why don't you get a finger up your ass? Because often there are no symptoms. Well, I don't want it done. I know you don't, but it's good for you. So, um, can we... Bring the doctor out, please. Right, well, this is a waste of time, then. This is Frank. Um, it's Carl. Hi, Frank. How's it going? Yeah. You all right? Good, Good to see you. Is the uh, consultant urologist at um, St Bart's? Yeah, St that... Bart's. Yeah. yeah. The thing about uh, prostate cancer is you can be perfectly well and yet still have uh, prostate cancer. And one of the ways that we can detect if that may be a problem is a rectal examination. The thing with them um, just uh, feeling... I don't want a finger up the arse, no, though. Wait, you keep wait. going on about this. Right. I've told you time and time again. I mean, I presume That's... there's a lot of ill people knocking around that Frank should be looking at. Instead, he's here debating with you two whether he's going to shove his finger up the arse. How long will it take if you did it now? If you went... No, wait, how long will it... 15 seconds. 15, 15 seconds. That's a long time, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. What are you looking for? <laughs> What we're looking for, okay, it's two things we're looking for. One is the size of the prostate gland. <laughs> Number two, it's the consistency of it. In other words, what it, what it feels like. It's a, it's a quick, simple thing to do. Carl, can I tell you what's going to happen? It's going to be about ten seconds. He's going to say, you're all clear. You're going to say, what was the fuss about? And you know you haven't got prostate cancer. But not, not today. There's no better time. Cause maybe, it be... maybe it's that you and I and the cameras and that are making it a bit intense. Oh, we've maybe got if a private they went room. privately to another room. We've got a private room. 
top. Right, you wait here then. You stay here. I don't want to stay wait, wait here. Frank, do you want to follow Carl? Can you um, show Frank and Carl to a private room? Thanks. You may as well check his testicles while you're there. <laughs> So what's, what's the, what's the rules here, what's, I mean, I know it's an important thing to have done. Mm, yeah. But it's just the way they go about it. Mm. I've been travelling around the world in dangerous places, they've never cared about me before, mm. yet today they keep going on about having this done. Men are embarrassed about these things, you know, we're not used to these things. But for the sake of something that really is very quick and, and painless, we're talking about potentially saving a life. And before you know it, it's done and it's over. I know, but it's just I don't. It's, <laughs> it's day in, day out. That's what you do, seriously, every day. Yeah. Every day of my working life, that's what I do. And are you going to move up and do, get to do something better, or is this your future now? Just <laughs> sticking your finger it's, up a pile of arse. It's part of my. It's just part of the job, you know. A lot of time I spend in, in operating. <laughs> a lot of time I spend in clinics. So how many people are you doing a day? Ten to twenty, maybe. And which? finger is it? Is it a big one or a little one? It's the index finger. Why is that? Why not just a little? Because the, the prostate lies a little bit, a little bit in. So you get your hand, you couldn't, you, you just couldn't do that with your little finger. So you're going round the corner, you've got to go in and round. So you've got to go in and then a sl <coughs> slight, slight twist. It's, it's the thought is worse than actual delivery, let's, let's put it that way. It's the thought of it. All right. And okay. I, I, let's, yeah, let's do it then. Let's do it. Do you wear gloves? Oh, that's right. Yes. Do you know Richard Blackwood? Yes, the uh, comedian, yes. Yeah, he had, he had a, a colonic on telly, yeah. never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's far worse. So, rest your hood, you know. Then, what you need to do is you need to bend your knees up. Yeah. If you want to pop that arm over there. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some lubricating gel. I'll we'll just. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is. I'm, if I may, I'm just going to pop, yeah. pop, pop your cars down. Bend your knees up a bit more. Come towards me a bit more. So you're yeah, just going to marvellous, OK? Take a deep breath. Deep breath. And out, OK? And relax, breathe normally. I'm just going to pop a finger in there, OK? Deep breath, well done. Jesus, well done. that's high up. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right, that's surely enough, isn't it? Right, you're touching a lung. Well done. Oh. Well done. <laughs> The prostate's fine. Have Whee! Well done. Woo! Well done, oh God! Well done. Brilliant. I don't think it's the sort of thing people pay us. Guy a subscription for, to be honest. <laughs> In HD. Well done. Cheers for that, then, Frank. Now you are a doctor, are you? <laughs> yeah. I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming in for Carl. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee, that question's for Carl. Yeah, okay, no, fair enough, that works. Okay. Um, this is from Jim and Bob in Manchester. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh, insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but that's, yeah, that's broad well, animal, to anything. Animal, well, no, animal, any creature. Uh, insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. I'm just thinking about, yeah. there's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um, I'd, I'd probably go for the tortoise. Okay. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. No, yeah. just because... Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot. You know what I mean? Through wars and stuff. Well, if you get an old one, if you get like an old one, that's about... Yeah. Most of them have lived in a box, in a garden, for 52 years. No, you, but, you, but you get some that have been about, and even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, have they? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Some well, of them have, well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But have they broadened their horizons a bit more than you? They could probably teach you a thing or two, yeah. And I'll what just, would you hope to learn from them? Just, just history. <laughs> right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. <laughs> Other emails. We've had a lot of questions about time travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? 
what's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good as it. It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in going back to places. What, do, like. what, what do you understand the question is? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back, you are that child again, you're in the body, you are the child, or you've got your adult um, head and experiences... Well, on, you know, you, you Rick, I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, let's be did. honest. But now that you've flagged them I up. I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but Too big for foot. the chairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, okay. Well, Choose then... an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on. Know. I think let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again? How would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever, but then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff, because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book? Is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What What about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could you could have a look at something and just sort of look like uh, you like know what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does the Ghost of Christmas Past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're oh. asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yes, you're not, not no, changing. You're just observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you question. What. It, this is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I nearly died once in a, on a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's talking absurd. About? You're now saying. You're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <laughs> and we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch them. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I know that you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I, mind can't fathom right, well, something unless it's, like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, say if there's one good moment when I was about six that I loved, mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You Just could go say, back and come back yeah, again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. Migrant workers in South China are wearing adult diapers on packed trains heading home for the New Year holiday because they've got no access to the toilet. Many supermarkets in this particular part of China have reported a 50% increase in sales of adult nappies for the train trips. Now, what do you make of that, Carl? You're on a long, long train journey. Three hours, four hours. You know there's no toilet. You know you're going to need to go pop on a... Why isn't there any toilets? They just aren't on the, the trains. And they're a really long journey. Yeah. How long? Hours. Well, very long in China. It's a big country. I, w I wouldn't... I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't... I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to hold it in or something. Just like, uh I mean, when I, when I was a young kid, I don't know how young you are when you wear a nappy and that, but um I remember that I didn't like it, doing it in a pair of pants, like that, a pair of <laughs> nappies and that. And I used to have to, uh, even when I was too small to sort of get up on the toilet and that, because you'd fall in. Um, my mum knew that I didn't like nappies and that. I used to just go in, in the corner, just near the kitchen, in this thing that, like a, like a litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go there, and uh, I'd do my <laughs> thing. And, uh, you know, my mum used to say, oh, he's, he's going there, don't look at him and that, because it put me off. You know, like cats don't like being watched when they do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> when they go in their little tray in the kitchen. No, they don't. They don't like it. I've tested it. Why are you just like a little feral kid, just running around and going to the litter tray, covering it up, and then running up the curtain and eating a, a sweet at the top of the pelmet? No, but no, nobody <laughs> likes being watched, and that's what I'm saying. If you're sat on a train and you're knocking one out and that, and everyone's looking at you, it's. I don't. I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has caught on. Has it they're all doing it. They're just, they're just, they're just sitting there. They're doing, you know, they're reading the paper, doing Sudoku, <laughs> and 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 they're looking round when they're going. They're thinking, oh, no one knows I'm going. And everyone's thinking that, and everyone's going. I mean, what, what, what are we getting to? You know what I mean? What, what's going on in the world that this is happening? I <laughs> know. I mean, people have always had to travel for ages. <laughs> I, d I, d I just don't, I don't understand why there isn't a toilet on it. We're going backwards. <laughs> We're going backwards. Aren't we? <laughs> Why isn't there a toilet on it? <laughs> well, maybe there is, but maybe people are thinking the queue is going to take forever. If you've got 125 million people, yeah, going but not back. everybody wants to go at once. I mean, I know Chinese and all that are like at the forefront of everything that goes on in the world, inventing stuff first. But this isn't one of the best <laughs> that they've come up with. What have they yeah. invented then? The Chinese just loads used... of stuff, haven't they? Yeah, well, loads of stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You seem quite educated on the subject, but um, they did them cat mop things that I told you about. Brilliant. Um, I mean, this was where you put mops on the feet of cats. Was that right? Yeah. And they wander about the house, clean up, and that wash the floor for you whilst you're pottering about. Um, <laughs> they've done like hats with umbrellas on them. They've done. They've done. I mean, they've, they've, they're known for like. Coming up with stuff first. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was gunpowder, but yeah, cats and mops is good as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down, yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just, well, yeah, just annoyed of, about something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. And Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket, all right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? D gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place. The toilet rolls and that, so I said, oh, I'll come to have a dance, and like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Next. Oh, oh, 
what a, a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God.